Hello everyone and welcome to Isolation Stream 17, I do believe. Steve and I are here, he's coming around. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Uh, Steven's coming around, we're here with the Skeleton Crew. We've been streaming every day since Isolation and we have had a great time. There's been a lot of great people hanging out on chat. I see some familiar names now that we've had almost three, three or four weeks in a row of this. Um, we, today we're going to be playing a little game called Sky Tear. It's so cool. We talked about it last week on the podcast. We sent an email today uh, to all of our customers, but this is a game we're really excited about. It's made by a company called PVP Geeks out of, uh, or at least Ricardo and Giacomo are from Italy originally, and this is a game that ended up in our stack uh, a couple months back. We, we get sent games from time to time, and this one really stuck out. Just to give you guys some context, I, I didn't realize I had it here, but this is the core box of the game. It's called Sky Terror. It's essentially, you know, the goal here is to bring the MOBA style of uh, computer game to the tabletop, and... Uh, it actually does it. <laughs> it. Unlike a lot of things that say that they're going to do that, it actually does it. it there's a nexus, there's towers, there's minions slash creeps. The whole thing is is actually a MOBA, actually a MOBA-inspired game. Yeah, so the, the box looks good. Uh, we opened it up, it had a little art book. I don't know if you have the art book here or not, but... Uh, was just ultimately awesome too. It, it's somewhere around here, but it, it was really impressed. It was obvious that that they the company making this really cared. So we reached out to PVP Geeks, and that's when we met uh, Giacomo and Ricardo, who impressed us even further. Just very much, it was clear this game was a passion for them, and it was it was intended to be their life's work, and they they deeply care about it to the next level. Uh, we we streamed it a, a month or two back with kind of uh, you know our, our first first playthroughs. We were really impressed, obviously, enough to reach out to them. And as we talked, I uh, started realizing that there were some interesting ways for us to work together and help build the community and achieve similar things. So we're really excited to be featuring this one on the channel. I mean, is there anything else to add? Well, it's worth noting. So this is the first time we, we've been looking at this for a little while, but this is actually an exclusive subscription to the U.S. So the only way to, I say, pre-order in air quotes, because a subscription isn't really a pre-order, as you guys uh, know, but it's the only way to get future products guaranteed in the States. Um, and so one of the reasons that that is good is that that prevents the kind of deep discount warehouse stuff from happening, which PVP Geeks was very concerned about, trying to figure out where and how to distribute this product in the US. Uh, and so we're like, well, we've got this subscription and you won't suffer those sa the same slings and arrows of, of that avenue if you want to do that. They said, yes, uh, here we are talking about the game. We're going to do some content. We're going to dive deep into this one. We haven't gotten a good deep dive into the like fundamentals of a game in a while. So this is one of those exciting moments whenever you're first starting out with a game that you get to really go on that exploratory journey and figure out what's going on here. So it's got a lot of things working for it and just a very impressive offering uh, across the board. Yeah, and I think that's one of the their name, obviously, is PVP Geeks is the name of the company. Which is player v player, and you know they're very much uh, committed to making sure that this experience is happening across tables, and so they're very committed to local communities, and that's something we talked about a little more on the podcast. But it's super important and valuable for these kind of living community-driven games, and a lot of times for these smaller, newer publishers, that's a hard thing for them to do because you have to operate at scale and you have to basically build community at the same time that you're reaching retailers and marketing the game. At the same time, you're actually making a, a product and trying to make it good. So uh, we're really excited to be able to feature this game and work with them and hopefully make a lot of people aware of it that otherwise may have missed it. Because I think uh, what really struck me and what hit me, and this is what took it all the way up to an 11, as they say, uh, is that we had played the initial game, we had reached out, but then that weekend after the, the first time we'd streamed it, I started actually, I went on their website, and another really good sign was that they had a really good deck builder built on their website. It's a good website. Yeah, yeah, and it was clear they cared on their website again. But I started building decks, and that's ultimately in this deep dive something <laughs> I really, I'm so excited for Steven to get to that experience. Um, because once I started wrapping my mind around how different the deck building was for this game, is when I got really excited. Because I've played card games for 20 plus years, and I've learned a lot about how to build a deck and how to be efficient in a game and how to achieve what you're after. But that singular moment of trying to build a deck made me recognize this is a card game first. It is a card game with miniatures, not the other way around. Um, and it's pre-assembled models, which uh, I have ranted many times before about how much I don't like assembly they models. They look good. So Very they look good. good. They don't require paint, uh, but obviously they are, they are for painting if people want to do that. But then secondarily, it was this recognition that like everything I had learned about deck building in 20 plus years 
was really not as relevant when I was building a deck for this game as it was in most cases, right? So, like, I, I haven't played too many cooperative card games, as an example. But even with Marvel Champions, which came out last year, a lot of the fundamental things I understand about how to build a deck, how, how many cards, you know, do you do the 40 cards or the 50 card maximum? Yeah. Like, what's the math behind it? What are the odds of seeing cards that you Units want? Units of value. Um, is, is the same. Whereas in this game, it's, it's almost flipped entirely on its head. And so I'm really excited to get to that phase. So I, what we're going to do is we're going to play through a very basic game um, so that everyone watching who is maybe unfamiliar can understand how this game functions. And then we're going to dive in just like we would dive into any game, but we're just going to be doing it on camera. So we're streaming today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. We have copies of all the expansions out, including the upcoming Outsiders expansion, which I'm super excited about. First to dive thing into. shipping through our subscription to to the US. So if you want that, hop on that and you'll stay up to date forever. Yeah. That's great. Um, and we're gonna be go doing the full gamut, right? So we each we're each gonna have a starter, we're gonna be diving through the expansions and updating our decks and talking about what what we're deciding to do and why we're valuing certain cards and including certain cards and showing off the full the full game. And it could be all wrong. And it could be. I assume but. there's going to be people watching that know way more than us <laughs> about the game. But it, it's, I think this process, we, we played the first week of streams, we did Arkham. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time we had actually shown more than just the actual playing of the game on the stream. And the response was actually really incredible. So I think there's a lot of people out there who that, that learning process is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. Where you have to play not knowing, really, and you have to build a deck not really knowing what is the right call. And for a lot of people, that gets them in this like state of paralysis. So hopefully this is helpful for people like that uh, who c can see us learning as well. Because a lot of times we, we just present the end result. Yeah, we'll be doing a lot of, a lot of learning here. So let me, let me run you through the basics of the game, kind of understanding how it functions, particularly how it actually uh, functions as a MOBA-style game. You should know the back of this map, too. I'm going to zoom on this in just a second. There's a three-lane map as well. So it can really become the uh, MOBA experience that you would expect if you played those kinds of games on the computer. So let's dive in here real quick. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown here. Also, look at this board. Beautiful board's beautiful. And it's a, bo it's a nice board. It's a nice board. Um, everything here is high quality. The components are great. Everything about this game was very impressive. Uh, so you start out with your four heroes here. You can see mine. I, you place them next to your nexus. And there's also going to be towers. So we can just represent those. I'm not going to be picky about doing the right number. There's going to be towers on the board corresponding to you know where your towers would be, as you'd expect. And then we're also going to have the, the little marker here. And I'm not paying attention to those numbers right now, but that's kind of the order of resolution. And what's going to happen, your, your heroes are going to move around this board. And they're going to be doing things. And you've got your little minions here. And they're faction, faction-based minions. So your minions will be rolling around here as well. <clears throat> and as the game progresses, if you push your minions successfully, this marker is going to continue to move towards the opponent's towers. And once it finally reaches the opponent's tower, then anything that you would succeed at, a damage done, etc., at this point starts removing tokens from their tower line. So let's say you, you remove all those tokens. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this will continue moving, and then it'll get to the Nexus, where there will also be towers here. And if you push all the way through, destroy the Nexus, you win the game. So that's the, that's the most basic win condition. It's not the most likely win condition, because you also have what's called objective cards. Um, so let's pull off like Right Breach, for instance. These are the ways that you typically score points in the game. You have basically a number of random objectives. There's going to be three of them that drop at the start of the game. And by achieving those objectives, you also are going to win in a, I guess, non-default way. So that's the most common way to win is to achieve the objectives on the board. But there's always the win condition of destroying your opponent's nexus. And so what I want to do is... I want to play a game of Sky Terror. I'm really excited about this, <laughs> where we don't actually have the secondary objectives. So we'll take all these secondary objectives. You can see there's a lot of them. Some of them, like double kill, defeat two enemy heroes within the duration of a single activation. You've also got something like tactician, win the lead of a control token six times. So these are going to speed the game up, and they're going to make it a lot quicker and give you some different tactics that uh, you'll have to adapt to like a changing win condition. But for the beginning, if we do a standard game where we're just going to destroy each other's nexus, that's going to give us a ton of time 
to actually dive into the game, to see all the mechanics, to work through all of our rules issues, and to actually see this play out like the the MOBAs and the DOTAs that I expect that I played when I was uh, a little bit younger, not too much younger. By the way, I think that alt win condition, it, the way they've executed that's really cool because not only do you have the three different win conditions every time, mm -hmm. but I think having a standard win condition built in where it's like even if none of these things are true, it prevents you from having lists that is particularly good at certain win conditions. Yeah. Yeah, so Which sometimes like it'll flip and you'll be like, oh, I need to, I need to bring some heroes that can do some, some work. So, Zach, tell me about on the deck building side of this, this <clears throat> can you walk us through how a normal game would start? I believe we'd have six heroes, is that right? Yeah, so in a standard environment, whatever that would look like, you would basically have six heroes. And then what would happen is that you would end up using four of them. And depending on the format and the tournament and whatnot, I, I believe it's your opponent can pick one that you can't play. And then you have to pick four of the remaining five. And so in deck building, this is what makes it so interesting. You not only have the heroes, um, so like I'm going to bring up uh, Sakoshi, S-A-K-O-S-H-I. Um, and you'll see on his card in the top middle, he's got these two rune icons. It's the green and the red one. And his card border is red. And so I get the factions correct, or the elements. Kurumo is the red faction, and then the green one is Talot. And so what this means is that he can use red and green cards. And there's various cards that are going to go in your deck. Uh, as an example, one's called Crawling Darkness. And you'll see this is green, and it's got that matching rune icon that was on Sakoshi. Uh, and then for a red example, we have like Blazing Edge. And you'll see the, the same rune icon that matches Sakoshi. So each hero, when, during your deck building process, you're going to pair eight cards with the hero. So it'll kind of look like this. Like I've got my, my heroes and my eight cards underneath. Yep. And then so like if at the start of the game, I'm looking over and I'm, I'm looking at Steven's heroes and I recognize, man, you know, let me uh, read this guy's name real quick. Haberat. Uh, it's like those elements are maybe not my favorite to see, given what I'm wanting to play. I also don't like his ability. And like he's, he's a tough match for me. So I ban that outright. He can't use that hero or that <laughs> hero <laughs> stack <laughs> of cards. So then he gets to pick four of his remaining five uh, champions and then the, the cards that come along with them. But what you have to understand is that your deck is not just a singular deck entity that's the same every time, right? It changes based on your heroes. So when you have a lineup of six characters, you have to actually build their stack of eight cards in a way that no matter who your opponent bans, you can put four characters together and have the deck that you want. Yeah. And it's not, it's not just let me pick my 30 cards up front and, and decide what I want to play. But that's when you start realizing, because like initially I started and I found the character that I thought was the coolest. And I, I don't remember offhand who that was. I think it was one from an expansion. And I was like, all right, let me pick the eight cards that are best for this character. <laughs> and I did that. And then I was like, all right, now I need to pick what characters would be good with this character. <laughs> so I did character number two. And I picked the eight cards that are best for that. By character three, I'm like, oh, because you can only have so many cards in all of your stacks. You can't have... You know, I think it's three copies of any one card can go uh, in the stacks. And every character also has a signature, like, ultimate card. That's right. You've uh, got to have your ulti. Yeah, so, like, My Kingdom is one of those ultimate cards. And you'll see it's got the icon uh, in the top middle that matches Kotlik, who is one of the, ch the heroes that I'll be using. C-O-T-L-I-C? Yep. And he is, uh, that ultimate goes in their deck, and you'll, we'll explain the stats and stuff, but the plus three and the three icons on the left is really good, plus the ability is really good on the, the card itself, um, but each hero basically has one of those. So all that said, what you also start realizing is typically, like if I was building for a game like this, I would find the hero I like the most, I would build a list around them, I would build a supporting cast around them, but then Steven and I could sit down and he's tired of seeing <laughs> my Sakashi, right? Like he, he's just tired of seeing that, that miniature and he can just say, nope, you're not using that one. Yeah. Um, and if my whole strategy is built around him and my best cards are all in his deck, that's a problem. So it forces you into a scenario where you have to be adaptable. You can't just rely on a single miniature or a single model in your list. And also, if you're, I, I like it because it, it's one thing to allow your opponent to basically dictate what you can and can't play. But the ability to not ever have to play against that one model you hate the most mm -hmm. uh, is so good. Like the number of times that I, I remember back in when we were kids, we played Mage Knight. And I had a friend, Will, who played against me. And he had this one model that was just like unbelievably good and like really good against the kind of thing I, I like to do. And so the ability to just be like, hey, against me at least, that model's not going to hit the table. Uh, would have been really nice, and it would have led to a lot less frustrating situations, at least for me. 
Um, but yeah, that's, that's the basics of it. And I, I think the we have the starter decks assembled out of the starter. So in this first game, we're going to only be using the contents of a single starter. And then as we go, we'll each have our own starter with our own expansions and whatnot to kind of show you what full full on decks look like. Yeah, this is a cool thing too. The you, it's one of these games where you know the the format that you want to play in can be basically whatever you want. So like we we often play with the the kind of banning style format, and that kind of comes from KeyForge and and, and almost from uh, some of the Dota games themselves. But there's a number of formats here in the back of the rule book too. So you can check that out and then you can add or swap or change anything that you want about it and have a great time with it. Uh, so let's start it out. Some questions coming through real quick relating yeah. to what I just said. So uh, Volantro asking, do you, all your heroes need to be from the same faction? Definitely not. So if you look at Sakashi, he can use red and green. And this is part of where the synergy comes in. Um, and then you look at Kotlik, and he also can use red and green. And so they can have cards in their deck, right? that match those colors, but also when you have a stack of, of the eight cards going together, they can both play cards from each other's deck, basically, right? So you want to have a little bit of overlap, um, but I think in a typical scenario, it's going to be that you'll probably have one or two models from each each color, and then you'll, you'll lean one color across uh, various characters. So you definitely don't need to do that. Um, and then let me, there was another really good one. So someone asking five characters and one gets banned, it's six down to five, but then you pick four of the five. Uh, and then Jinx asking if your heroes die, are they out of the game for good? No, they are not. Uh, they come back on the next turn, basically. Uh, that's the best way to think about it. So just like in your standard MOBAs, you get knocked out, timer goes up. Once it comes around, they'll respawn back at the uh, at the Nexus. Uh, and then last one before we dive in, Miller Time. I like that, that screen name. He says, how many colors are there? So there's four. Um, there's a red, fiery, lava uh, faction. There's a green earth uh, faction. There's a watery, icy faction. And then there's like an air slash uh, desert, really desert faction. faction. Yeah. All right, you want to set this thing up? Let's just run it from the top. Yeah, let's hit it. Um, and if you're watching and you're very familiar with this game, feel free to be comfortable to shout out if we ever miss something or do something that's not quite right. That's been tremendously helpful over the past couple of weeks with the, the chat being super active. So here's what we've got. We've got setting up your first game. So the first thing we would do is flip three random victory cards face up on the board. So we're going to skip that step because we're just going to go with the old school kill a nexus. Again, that's going to be a much longer game. It's going to give us plenty of time to resolve things, to see all the heroes work in all of their beautiful ways. And I think it's just going to be more fun to, uh, to learn in that way. Then we determine the first player. Zach, would you like to be one AP or two AP? One. Two, I'll be the first player. And I get the Sky Tier Flux card, or the Sky Tier Flux card. So this is a reaction, and it says the next non-ultimate power card you play costs one less mana. So you can basically get an immediate reduce one of the cards by one mana. That's the benefit you get from, or I guess the, yeah, the benefit you get from going first, because it's kind of like a weakness to have to go first. Also, Lou out on Facebook asking, where's the chat? I'm confused. I thought I was on it. So that we're streaming to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, and most of the chat right now is coming through YouTube. OK, face it. Place up on my side of the board. I've got it. It's here. You guys can't see it. We're zoomed in on the hexes, but it's up here on the board. <laughs> so I'll just keep that with me. Uh, then we've got set the mana counter to 1. So place the Skytree token in the first row of the mana and turn counter. So there's one. So every turn, you're going to get an equal number of mana to whatever turn that it is. Uh, so at the start of the game, you get one mana. Second turn, you get two mana. Third turn, you get three mana, and so on. So as the game goes on, your heroes naturally are going to be able to do bigger and crazier things, uh, which is exactly how it's going to uh, supposed to function. Then we draft factions. Uh, and then uh, we've already done all of that. Pick a faction, take two related heroes, prepare them. This is to start with just our right out of the core set. So we've already got our heroes. I've got these four. Uh, I'm, I'm choosing the blue and yellow. And then Zach's doing red and green. We just split it up like that because we like those colors. I, and the elements and whatnot. I saw someone on chat asking how many heroes come in the core game. So the core set itself comes with eight, which are the eight we're going to be playing in this game. It also comes with 16 minions, uh, four copies of each of four different minions. 
All right, then we form our deck of power cards. So I'm going to take all of the cards underneath here, and I'm going to shuffle all of them up. That's going to form my deck. Now, there's a really cool, so they, the PvP gigs have released these little sleeve stickers that are super handy so that you can sleeve up your cards and then put the little stickers on the bottom corner and then whenever you're at the end of the game, you can separate them easily out into their uh, requisite symbols. That was something I ran into very quickly. Yeah. Someone asking if uh, this was previously on Kickstarter, which it was, uh, but if there was a bunch of exclusive content they could no longer get, that's not the case. Uh, the only thing that was uh, released in a limited fashion in Kickstarter was the Outsiders expansion that's going to be coming out soon uh, at full retail, which that'll be the first thing being served through our subscription, and I think that's going to hit May 8th. And so if you're signed up uh, about two weeks before that, you would be in line for the subscription to get that automatically. Okay, two decks of power cards have been formed. So then the first player is going to draw six cards from the top of this deck. I'm going to do that now. One, I, do two, I get six? Three, four, five, six. Second draws five from there. So I get one extra card and I get the Sky Tier Flux. The discount. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Woo, a lot of icons going on here. Tom Malucci in the house. Tom, hey, Tom. What's up? I hope you're doing well, my friend. Remember that Star Wars game against Zack at Worlds? <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> I sure do, too. It was great. Uh, he actually didn't play against me. I got well, knocked he, out by David the round before. That's right. I but just, he did get that map and, and hold it over me. Uh, Tom asking if this game's already released. It is already released. You can get this on the Sky Tear website. Um, the, they're the, going to be the ones exclusively serving that. But uh, in you can the learn States, more. at least. Yeah. Uh, and then Trollsaft on uh, Twitch, is the estimate playing time like a real MOBA 20 to 60? I think that's very correct. They say 45 minutes on the box. The one that we're about to do is going to take longer than that because we've skipped the victory cards, which speed the game up. Uh, but yeah, it, it was pretty spot on. Even when we were learning, it was a pretty quick, pretty quick game. Okay, so now we place two, build four towers. Each player places three, and we've got these little actual sculpts here. Yeah. So that's beautiful. They have these uh, little tower sculpts. Is it five in each of these squares? Three. Really? Oh, uh, you know, you're right. Five. Three tower tokens, two twos, and one one. So five total. Uh, but they have these on their website as well. And we have these little, it's cool. They sent us some some of these little little things. The little clips on the bit, bottom of the base. So Steven's models are marked with a white base, and mine have the black. These do not come in the core game. There's yes. five towers for everybody. So we'll see what happens. Uh, then we build two control tokens. Randomly we place the control tokens one and two on the hexes marked with the control token icons. We've already done that. That's fine. It's as random as I need it to be. <laughs> Rally the minion. Each player places two minions miniatures on each lane as shown in the setup picture. So two minions. I like my guys with the little Raiden hats. If they can go on the control token, they must. And one minion per hex per side or per faction. So you and I can both have one in. Okay. Do we have the right the right factions? Yeah, I yeah. think so. And then let's go ahead and then we do one more and we can put it in any. It suggests that we put it outside, so we'll just do that. Yeah. Outside. It's like, like the so. furthest away from the starting heroes. Yeah. I'll just do all my little Raiden hat guys. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. I love these little dudes. I don't know. I want some wolves in here. Look at these little minions. This is so cool. My little molten lava guys will come out later. I love the theme. I love seeing those little wolf guys. All right, rally the minions. All minions share the same characteristics so long as they are from the factions chosen by the player. Place the remaining minions on their friendly nexus. So we can do that right here. It's a tear like a rip, Zero, asking in the name. So God Tear is a, a similar vibe of a game that came out uh, last year at some point that we also played on stream. And it's not Sky Tear, it's Sky Tear. Uh, so then we summon the Outsider, boom. So that's a card and a big mini there. If you guys are familiar with Dota, um, Roshan was what I knew this as, big rock golem that you could slay in the middle of the game to get points. Um, this functions a little bit differently, but the spirit of it is the same. If you take some time to control the, the big thing, it will work out in your favor. So that's one way you can do it. 
So we've summoned the Outsider, and now the Outsider's expansion brings in a lot of different Outsiders, new Outsiders, and they have different effects. So that's also going to be one interesting thing to consider whenever new we, fold we start a game, tear. right? Yeah. All right, Zach, that's it. All right, let's put do your, it. Put your minions here so I can feel like you're summoning them. Yeah. It makes me excited. Uh, and I'm going to uh, play fast and learn fast, you know what I mean? That's right. The old Zuckerberg of gaming. There will be mistakes, <laughs> and it will be good. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we learn. It's where I'm most comfortable in a game. All right, so here we go. I'm going to turn it to the heroes phase. Here's what's going to happen. So a hero is going to activate. We, we put our, I guess I should think about how I want these. That's what I was saying. I didn't even think. Heroes. Um, also, so I'm going to, uh, you mind if I just walk down a hero real quick to Please give do, people yeah. some reference? So yeah. we're going to pull Sakashi back up, the lava tamer. Um, so you'll notice a handful of things on Sakashi. First, I mentioned it earlier, but we have the runes up top. So these are the cards that he can play. He can play green and red cards, and luckily, my whole deck is made of green and red cards, so he well, can use isn't them all. that interesting? Uh, but along the bottom of his card, you'll see a couple of hand, uh, stats, and it's really cool. They did something very smart. On the back of these cards, I don't think you'll be able to see it on the card we pull up. They have a simplified version of the card that uh, is essentially, there it is, uh, that doesn't have the text and the abilities. And we played a game like that on our original stream, but today we're going to be going full tilt. But uh, you'll notice along the bottom, so he has a three with a, like a bow and arrow next to it, meaning it's ranged, um, and then two cards. So a couple things that this is worth noting. Everything in this game that I've seen so far references range as three. Yeah. So the three is actually the attack stat. Yeah. But move is three spaces. If it's within line of sight, it's within three spaces. Rain, like shooting something, it's within three spaces. Controlling the, the control points, within three spaces. Every, everything about it, it's, it's such a great little decision where it's like <laughs> there's just another thing that I... A lot of games would want to have a range stat. Yep. And a character would be more ranged than other characters. Um, but that little detail cuts out so much noise around the game, so I just want to shout out to that. The second thing is the way an attack would work, if he does his three attack... Um, normally, you would flip the top card of your deck over, Maybe. and this card is clear mind. And so, on the top right of the the, corn, of the card, you'll see plus two. So it would actually add that to the attack. But Sakashi has the three with two cards next to it. So you actually get to flip the top two, and this one is crippling precision. Uh, and then you get to choose which one of these to add. So they're both a two in this case. So his attack would actually be for a total of five. Um, the so that's the randomizing element, basically. So we, we just played the Star Wars trading card game. Random element in that game is the dice, right? So you never quite know how much damage you're going to do because there's a random number associated. Uh, you see this in miniatures games, of course. Are they going to hit? Are they not? In, God, in, in Sky Terror, the random element is the top right of the card. So I find that pretty interesting in deck building as well because you're prioritizing, do I want to flip more bonuses whenever I go to flip cards? Or do I want maybe some lower bonus cards that have bigger effects? And so it's another element that you have to consider when you're building your deck. Totally. And just for a little more context as well, like if Crippling Precision is still on the screen, um, the icons in the top left represent how much that card costs to play when you're actually playing it and not adding it to an attack like this. Um, and so that's relevant because Steve was mentioning every turn, every hero basically gets a number of res resources equal to the round counter. So the first round is going to be one. What up, Terry Fuller? Good to see you. All right, so I'm the first player, so I get to take the first action, huh? That's what you mean? <laughs> That's what that I, means? The, so I referenced Akashi. The reason I was doing that, I remember, is we need to set our health. So they, oh, have, right a, they have a bar yeah. along the bottom, and we have these little uh, chips. They, the game itself comes with cardboard versions, um, which I'll put here, which look great. Uh, but they also sent us some of these, like, almost poker chip yeah, uh, those vibe nice things. Even. So I'm going to use that because they're kind of shiny and they look awesome. Uh, but essentially, Sakashi, as an example, has 15 health, so I'm going to put his little chip on the 15 health marker. Kotlik here has 18 health. Uh, Tlakali, T-L-A-K-A-L-I, has uh, 16 health. And then Yami has 18 health as well, so I'll just stack hers here. Nice, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. One, two, three. I got it. Okay, cool. Then we go to the minions phase. Yeah, that makes sense. So we got the hero's phase and the minion's phase, and then uh, we do it all over again. Yep, and we'll take turns all activating heroes. Yep. Where so did your heroes go? Oh, activate, they're there. Yeah, they're right here. Activate all heroes, and then resolve everything on the board, and then do it again. Rinse and repeat. I'm, I'm going to put one faction on the right, one faction on the left. I feel like that's 
normal. I auto. did the same thing. I, I did both of my fire. I'm going to say fire benders. I, I recently you know, watched Air the opposite. Avatar uh, over here and my Earth over here. I think it depends on the the faction. I'm just going to give them a chance to work together and see if it actually can be done. <laughs> okay, so first off, I think let's do that. I think this is right. So let's start off with um, let's start off with Goldbjarn. G U L B J A R N, Wild Sovereign. So has the ability Feral Majesty has plus one skirmish damage for each friendly shape shifted hero within three hexes, counting uh, himself. And then the Earth Sign Rage ability. Skirmish actions do not hit a chosen hero. Instead, they hit all enemy heroes in an AoE in front of me. So when I'm in bear mode, I can get uh, some, some slashy damage, basically. And you'll notice, like, next to that ability, it has that little rune icon. Mm -hmm. And that means that you have to have taken the worship action, which, uh, do you want to run down the actions that are... So when a hero goes, you get three actions. Yeah, so we've got a, a hero action card here, and each one of these is a little bit different based on the faction that they belong to. So I'm going to run down the blue hero action card. That's what I'm currently activating. So I can move, which is move up to three hexes. So one, two, three, one, two, three. This white line around the border of this middle section is going to block line of sight. So I'm kind of either inside the bubble or outside the bubble. Uh, and this is where the outsider is going to live and do its thing. And then this is kind of where our towers and our lanes are. So you kind of got to choose where you want to where you want to go. Uh, you can move between these two just fine. You just can't move, shoot through them or draw line of sight through them. So you can move up to three hexes, and heroes and outsiders block movement, but minions do not. So you can move through minions as you like. You just can't land on them. Skirmish action is performing two effects, or three effects in any order. So you move a hex, move a hex, and then deal zero plus the top card of your deck in damage. So in this case, if I flip the top card, it would be zero plus whatever that card showed. So a lot of times it's one damage, sometimes it's two. If you're really lucky, it's three damage. And that can only be done to a uh, champion. It can't be done to a minion. That's correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, move one hex. So you could deal damage, move, move. You could move, deal damage, move. So it's a nice little kind of skirmish action. Makes sense that it's called that. Then you have the attack, where you damage target enemy hero or minion. So target is within three and not hidden from your line of sight. And we'll get to that, I'm sure, as we go. Then we will have the lead action where you put a face down power card either from your hand or randomly from the top of your deck. And then that number is going to contribute to their control whenever we go to the minions phase. So that's basically like saying I'm spending my time helping the minions advance the, uh, to the, the enemy tower and do some damage. And then you have the warship action. And that's the final of the fifth five actions available. For the blue faction, that means I can apply a shape-shifted token to a friendly hero within three hexes. So I can target a friendly blue hero, apply a shape-shifted token to it. That's either myself or uh, another hero within three. And then while it has that token, it is shape-shifted. And so any of the icons on the card that have that blue icon next to it are only active whenever I am shape-shifted. And one of the cool parts of the game is that each, uh, each aspect essentially has a unique worship action. So like the, the fire, lava tamers, uh, they mark their enemies with ash. And mm -hmm. then by being marked, they become easier to see or easy to find or easier to damage and whatnot. So uh, that's one of the things that it's a simple way of making every faction different without mm -hmm. it being like structurally different. They're all worshiping, uh, but they're just doing it to their own individual uh, gods and whatnot. It's so true. Okay, so let's go with old Golbjarn. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a worship action for my first action. So I'm going to target in a hero within three that is of my faction. I'm going to target uh, Korjof here, C-O-R-J-O-F, and give a shapeshifted token. And I'm just going to put it right next to him so that I remember that that's the case. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, I allowed him to turn into a raven. He's got that nice bird cloak, so he's now in raven form. Then I've got two actions left. I can take a move, I can take a skirmish. I can't attack anything because there's nothing within three that I would uh, want to attack. I have, if you pull up a uh, gold Bjarn's card here, it's a three damage melee attack. There's a little sword in the bottom left corner. You can see that that means it's melee. Uh, so I'm gonna have to be next to something in order to attack it. And I'm gonna see if I can get there. So first action there, one, two, three. I can get close, but I can't get next to a minion. 
So I'm probably going to play it cool, and I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to sit here in the pocket, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to take my last action to control, or what's called lead. So I'm going to take the top card of my deck, and I'm going to put it underneath my card. And now that's going to be a bonus whenever I'm going to try to control this middle space. So I basically said, I'm just going to hang out here and try to basically control Roshan uh, and see what you do, Zach. And it's over to you. OK, so I'm going to go with someone. Thank you so much, Travis Schneider. That is an awesome comment on Facebook. I uh, just saw your announcement email and listened to your cast on Friday. I must say I'm excited to see the direction you all are going. Lots of amazing games get overlooked from smaller publishers, so I'm happy to see you going in this direction. Exactly. That's exactly what we're here to do. That's awesome. That's great. You don't to get know. to look at the lead card. I didn't know that. Well, now we know. Well, now I know. This is how we learn. All right. Let's be smart about this, don't you think? I don't know. I don't think I'm in that phase yet. Well, smart enough, I guess. Mmm, <laughs> that seems good. I haven't even looked at my hand. Is the... I'm just looking at the... Okay. All right, all Oops. right. Let's go... One, two, three. Movement's three. It's not quite enough, you know? Yeah, it's exactly. It's it's on purpose, not quite enough. Yeah, I assume that's the case. And then do you remember, Zach, did we draw up to our hand size at the end of this? So minions phase, after that, I've got it here. Discard all power cards from hero cards. So anything that we've cast that turn will get discarded. Then we draw two new cards. Discard cards until we're below seven cards. So we're always at six uh, or less. And then we ready everything and increase the mana counter. Nice. Go ahead. Uh, Thomas asked a question. He said he pre-ordered the outside expansion from another online retailer a couple months ago. Are they going to be able to still fulfill the order now that you're the exclusive online retailer? I think so. As far as I know, so. uh, previous uh, orders should be honored and whatnot, but this is going to apply starting today with future orders and also uh, future releases. So you should still be good, but uh, yeah, you should be good. Jay Rutley, can you move Skirmish Attack? Yes, you can. You can do three actions. You cannot do the same action. Miller time asking, uh, can I take the same action twice? Joe Hussein, he just attempted to order using the coupon code we sent earlier to our customers for Sky Terror. Happened to decline, attempted it again. Uh, I would just contact PVP, and they'll probably be able to get you squared away. Yeah, they'll get you. Um, all right, so... Yeah, um, Diego, you're right. But you're not on the edge unless you're over the edge, right? Or, I've been living my life by or that. Or is that right? <laughs> I don't remember how it goes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with Kotlik. Um, first thing he's going to do is think about his life. James, I don't know the answer to most of those questions, James, on YouTube, uh, James Salyers. But I think they look great. Uh, what is the material type? Is anyone out there uh, sky tear wise Do you guys uh, know? So they're pre-assembled. There yes. are some mold lines, but they're very few. Like on the outsider, I noticed along the front edge of his little lip here, he's got a little line. Mm -hmm. um, a but, mold line. but it's actually really impressive uh, how, and there's some along the sides. The smaller there's miniatures. There's no gaps, is there? I don't see any gaps in these. I don't see any gaps. Very. Like, uh, most of them are single cast, if I was guessing, yeah. I, I see like the common like small mold line down the side of the leg on this, this main character, um, but very little. Uh, the material is like a, a hard plastic. I, I don't know the exact material. If someone from PvP is watching, they'll probably be able to answer that for you. I know that's really, there's a lot of distinctions that I'm not familiar with for miniatures. Plastic, PVC, cast, resin, etc. Thomas, that's awesome. He was the one asking about the pre-order online. He says, uh, cool, thanks. He's going to subscribe after this next release. Very cool. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm going to go with Kotlik, learning time. Um, let's move one, two, three. And then he's going to skirmish. So he's going to move, move, and he can't attack because there's nothing next to him to attack. But now I'm next to your minions. Mm -hmm. uh, so watch out. Then he's going to attack one of your minions. So we're going to get to see the first attack here. Uh, and his attack is a three melee, so he has to be next to whatever he's attacking. And I get to flip the top card and add to it. So I flipped Crippling Precision. It's a plus two. I hit for five on the minion. Minions are only worth zero or one health, so they're going to go away. Gone. 
and then I exhaust Kotlik. Cleared out a minion, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sky Terror saying, uh, Sky Terror saying, it's hard plastic, not resin, but still quite detailed. Excellent. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, see, I see. We understand the stack a lot better than we did too previously. Zach, <laughs> Zach did some real work on that. Yeah, you get it. You get it now. Yeah, yeah it's wake. Yeah. It's the way the stack. I, I hope we get a cool one that resolves here. Um, there's just a ton of nuance that's happening there. My, I played against my friend Eric Wainwright, and he showed me. He's a great person at tabletop, and he was he was doing things that I had previously not recognized as an opportunity. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Jason asking, if someone missed out on the Kickstarter, is there a way to jump in late? Absolutely. So the SkyTear website has all the stuff that's previously been released available. Uh, free shipping on orders over 100. And uh, there's a core set and four expansions out. The Outsiders expansion is coming out uh, early May. But otherwise, you can get everything else through their website already. And you can sign up for a subscription to get the Outsiders if that's something you want. Okay, let's go with uh, Korjoff here. Sizix uh, says he just placed an order for the Sky Terror. That's awesome. Glad you're jumping in. Uh, I forgot about the code. Any way to apply it after the fact? Just contact them, and they should be able to help you out. Okay, let's go with Korjoff. So we'll start here. I do have uh, this is C O R J O F Korjoff. He's so cool. Uh, Sentinel says friendly shapeshifted heroes within three hexes get plus one skirmish damage. So he is within three hexes of himself. So that's something to keep in mind. And I get plus one attack and become melee, and when I activate, I apply fast. So I become this insane bird person, which I very much love it. Uh, so I'm going to move, I'm going to declare my move, and when I activate, I apply fast to him. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep answering questions while you're rolling. Yeah, go ahead. Jason says, is Sky Terror something I can order through Covenant, or best to order straight from PvP? So anything that's previously released, order directly from them. Uh, you'll find it on their shop, and then uh, to get new releases uh, automatically moving forward, you can hit a subscription on our website. Okay, so first action, I get to move. Because I have the fast condition, I move an additional two hexes. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That Hello works there. Me. You got plus speed because you're in eagle mode? I'm in eagle mode, yeah. Or hawk mode or whatever. We're getting, we're getting into this immediately, eh? Yeah, we are getting into it. And then I'm going to take my second action is going to be a skirmish action. So I'll declare an attack here first, uh, or a little skirmish attack here first. So a zero plus one. And that's going to be plus one. Now I also get plus one damage because I'm in Sentinel shapeshifted. So that's two damage to your hero. OK, and if we look at Kotlik's stat card, uh, you'll notice a little one shield on the bottom. That's his armor. So he reduces damage received from every attack by that amount. So he's going to receive one less damage. He's going to move from 18 down to 17. Boom. And then the next question is, do I want to go ahead and attack, or do I want to attack one of these minions? I think I should keep keep rocking till the party stops here. Deep Divide says no extra damage for skirmish. No. Oh. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, yeah, it says friendly shapeshifted heroes within three X's get plus one skirmish damage. Oh. That's the Sentinel ability. So then it would definitely apply to skirmish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> now, Shape of the Clod gives me plus one attack, and I become melee. So I'm going to go ahead and launch. Well, let me do the skirmish damage here and then move, move. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do a three damage ranged attack on old Kotlik. Is that his name? Yep. Okay, so Kotlik, I've got three plus a card, and I have the little uh, bow and arrow on Korjoff's card here on the bottom left. So that can be a target, and that means within three. And you'll see that some of these hexes have little eyeballs that are slashed through. If Zach was standing in one of these hexes, I would not be able to target him. That would be out of line of sight. Hiding in the forest. Also, if he was over here on the other side of this white line, I would not be able to target him unless I'm within the middle section. So because he's here, minions don't block line of sight or anything weird like that. Where were you? I put you in the wrong place. Are you right there? I think you're right there, yeah. Uh, I was, you're right I there. was next to both, I moved both parties. Two. So here's three plus one flip, and I'm at plus one damage. So four plus a, a flip is plus three, takes seven. Wow. And I have one armor, right? Yep. So six. 
Oh, quarter off his melee. Sorry, I won't move. I forgot. I become a, a melee bird. Oh, nice. So take take seven minus one, so six damage. Okay. Down to eleven health. Also, someone was asking how multiplayer works. That's another thing that is one of my favorite things about this game. You can you can play two to eight players. And I played my first two v one a month or two back, and like, it was great. I love the idea of four, four versus four on this. It's so Everybody good. Everybody controlling their one hero. Really good. And you can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no armor. That's right. Is he a mage? No, I don't think he is. Is he? Yeah, he has the little symbol. So that's something that I have missed before. So the top left, look at Korjoff's card in the top left. Okay. So that little fireball, fire looking thing, I believe that's right. Uh, means he's a mage, and mages have a special rule where armor does not apply to so their attacks. Attack and your skirmish? I think skirmish as well. Let me look it up. People probably know in the chat, too. That's I remember it's one of those that's in, like, the the super... Mm, mana... Often overlooked. Mages ignore armor not just with attack, but also with skirmish actions. Nice. Power cards, skills, right. and any other effects. Down to nine. Nice. Brutal. Me melee... Caster, this is incredible. Okay. Over to you. So you moved, attacked, and skirmished. Move, skirmish, attack, yeah. All right. Well, my turn to party, you know what I mean? All it right. is your turn to party. Let's, as much as I want to, not do what I was about to do. <laughs> I got punched, and it's like, ah, revenge. Um, and then I believe, I think they lose that token when they exhaust, that shapeshift token, mm, I'm not mistaken. I think that makes sense. Because when you give them the shapeshift token, you can exhaust them immediately to not make them lose that token at the end of that exhaustion. Yeah. Um, let's go with Sakashi. He's going to... Uh, skirmish? Yeah, because it's removed when here is exhaust, so that's going to be removed now. Cool. He's going to skirmish here. Nicely into the little forest. Oh, just a little uh, two skirmish. Then he's going to attack. So he's got a three attack at range, and he's going to attack your minion here on the main point. And if we look, he's one, two, three spaces away, so he works. So I'll flip the top. Well, actually, technically, we've been skipping some stuff. So he goes to attack. What technically happens is that attack action starts a stack. stack. Yeah. So that attack is the first thing in the stack. Then you technically get the opportunity now to play cards if you want. Each hero, each round gets the number of resources equal to the round counter. So right now it's one. Um, and one of the cool things is when you play a card, you actually put it on the hero so that you can see how many resources they spent this round, which is a nice little, little uh, design. Okay, and you can only play, like, I'm looking at Gold Yarns, about the only character I have that would be within three. But usually cards say target, and I can't see you outside of this white line. You're in the bubble. So uh, I don't think I got anything that I would want to play there. All right, cool. So I also, you, I did the action, so you would get the first chance to play reaction into the stack. You pass, I pass, so then we skip to the actual attack. It's a three, I flip the top two cards, plus one or plus three. Doesn't much matter. I'll use the plus three and hit that minion for six. All right. Minion gone. And then for my next trick. So skirmish ranged against the minion and one final action. I'm going to commit a card. Uh, and so to, not, what's it? Lead. A lead, right? That's what that's called? Yeah, a lead is where you put one either from hand or randomly right. from the top. So of I'm going to lead with a card from my hand under Sakashi and he will exhaust. So that card is going to contribute its icons when we're deciding who controls this point. Very cool. Uh, so good. Steve Dove, love it. On YouTube, I missed your first SkyTier videos, but watched after the podcast and got hooked. Your email was the tipping point. Order to start in a couple of expansions and sign up for the sub. Thanks, guys. That's Steve, awesome. that is great. Thank you so well, much. Well, and honestly, like I, I want to mention this while he's here. The other great part of this and a huge just reason behind what we're doing here is this company, PvP, is run by some great people, and like every order going to them, and that's why you can buy all the stuff directly from them, uh, is it, it's so important to them and their ability to continue doing this, and obviously with all the crazy corona stuff going I on. I mean, Italy got hit hard, too. They're yeah. both in, in Italy, so 
Um, so uh, every purchase is a big deal for them. So thank you so much for supporting them. And, and then obviously with the sub us as well. We really appreciate it. Uh, Jim's saying he just got the email regarding this and wondered if the discount code would work in the UK and Europe. Absolutely. Go on their website. It'll work. Does it they, work? They have global distribution and shipping and ability to do that. Uh, so that'll definitely work. Unless they correct us in the chat because see SkyTer is officially in the chat here. Okay. Let's see. The next one. Mm -mm -mm. I don't want to. This is where going second is so interesting, or going first is so interesting. Don't forget your discount either. Yeah, I know. I don't really have any. I don't really have anything that I'm super into playing right now. One of the uh, usually by turn two and three is when you get to the cards. You start that getting are the getting, goods. Yeah, and by turn two or three, it's really cool because like in a lot of miniatures games, the first turn is like run up. And like, don't do anything. Yeah, you were um, here. It's already happened. So you're immediately kind of interacting. But then what's going to happen is next turn we're going to be way closer, and we're going to be able to four bigger cards. So the clash really starts happening. Okay, how do I get there? This is the question. How do I get there? Um, maybe I will go ahead and. Skyter confirming. I'm correct. That's all I really needed to say. Just kidding. Uh, they do ship uh, worldwide. Hmm. This this game goes deep. It does. It's very like, obvious. The, the balance immediately, right? Because like I was basically tempted after you came and punched me. I was like, oh, I'm going to bring my champion up here and punch you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but if I bring it up, now you know where I'm committing. Mm -hmm. Like I can still bring these heroes to the middle or not. Or go left, but like the moment I put a second hero over here is obvious, right? And I don't want to give you that second. information. That's yet. why giving going first, you get the the flex card and the extra card for sure. You just got to balance it. And these melee heroes too. That, that's the that's the key. Deep Divide uh, saying, I just wish we had Team Covenant plugging Sky here in the UK. Technically, we are. Uh, we're worldwide. We've been streaming and asking people where they're watching from, and it's been amazing. Um, so I'm going to take that opportunity to segue into that <laughs> segment of today's stream. Uh, I'd love to know where everyone's watching from and where they're at, because it's amazing how big this community is and ultimately how small it is. But the, it's, it's been incredible every time I see where people are watching from. So check in. Tell us where you're watching at. OK. I like your little move. I like your little move over here. This one? Just, yeah. Well, snipe you a, just snipe a guy a and, and then stay team. in the little forest. And That's not bad. That's not a bad <laughs> move there. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Albuquerque, New Mexico, Spain, UK, Portland, Oregon, 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 Portland, Oregon, uh, Belgium, Calgary, Alberta, Colorado, New York, Virginia. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. We got Canada and Europe and Scotland, which is also Europe. Uh, Ohio. I mean, we've got Ohio in the house. All right, let's go with uh, Akuti here, aka Sweden and Brazil. It still blows my mind. Like this is crazy. London, England. All right, so I'm going to start by playing, and I'm going to. You guys can kind of see her card here. I'm going to place it up here. I, I guess I need to set my health up there too, so you can see this. So the first thing I'm going to do. Oh, no, that'll take an action. That's what that symbol means. Ah! I'm not going to do it. Ryan from Stillwater, what's up? I'm that's Steven's alma mater. That's right. I'm going to do your little move here. So I'm going to start with a cootie. I'm going to do a, uh, a skirmish action. They, One, two. It sounds like a cootie. Like cooties? A cootie. Then... Mm, nice little play here. We'll skip the attack. <laughs> then we'll do an actual attack. So it's going to do two plus one on one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that here. Plus zero, so two damage to your minion. Clear that boy off the table. And then, let's see if Technically I Technically, I would have an opportunity to do something about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Do you want to try something? You can't target no, I'm good. or anything. I have and, a card that could be relevant, but I'm saving And the lead card can be any card in your hand, right? It yep. doesn't have to match. Anything you want. OK. So then we'll lead here. So basically, what you're telling me is that's a blue card with three icons on it. It's likely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yep. Those are, yeah. Call it a day. Okay. Mm, yeah. Oh, no, I don't. But it's such a good card. Yeah. 
That is the... Let's go here. That's a cool, right? It's like yeah. the cards that can lead the best also are the ones you want to save for later. But also, we're, we're two turns away from the, the turn where you could play a three-coster. It's so. about to happen. It's about to happen. All right, mine? Mm-hmm. Now we got to make choices, don't we? I think <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to go with Yami. First thing, she's going to do a skirmish. So she's going to go... Psh, psh. And then she gets to do the zero attack on the bear. Bear has one armor. Let's flip and see what we get. Plus two with quick shot. So three damage? Uh, uh, it's two, right? Well, Skirmish. three damage minus one. That's what I mean. No, it's normally two. Oh, zero Skirmish plus is zero, two, yeah, so yeah. then it's minus one. So it's so one. So I just take one. Your little characters so, are over there. So let's one. put... Let's actually get this set correctly. Look at these. These are James nice. Sawyer says, my garage, broken arrow. Go Pokes. Manchester, UK. Huntsville, Alabama. That's awesome. I saw Tom also 18. saying there's more than one person in here from Rhode Island in the chat. What? what? It's like half of Rhode Island. <laughs> um, it's like one of the few states we can make fun of for its size. <laughs> there's those two. Compared to Oklahoma. I'm sure that never happens to Rhode Islanders. Uh, then we go 18 here. And what up, Mark? 16 here. Okay, so I take one damage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, then, these are way more pleasing than the cardboard. Yeah, things. right? It's just like they got a little nice little like shimmer to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then my second action with Yami is going to be an attack. So she's got a two melee attack with a one card. So I'm just going to flip. Okay, so I attack. You got anything you want to do? Yeah, let's look at this. Let's play, actually play the game here. Uh, I have no response to that. Now. Okay. Uh, I will also pass. So here we go. Flipping. Plus one, so I'm hitting you for three total. Three minus one armor is two, so I'll take two to the bear. Gold yarn. Then, for my next trick... Yeah, two from Ohio, too. Nice. What's up, Ohio? I'm going to do something fancy. You know what? No, I'm not. An action card? I'm not. Do you Let's dare? Are you going to lead in there? Don't you take a Rochambeau from me. Oh, I don't get to see that lead card either. I'm <laughs> flying blind here. <laughs> I'm going to place a lead card from my hand under Yami. I also really like that balance. So, like, the lead cards, if you use your hand too quickly, we only get a couple card, two cards a turn, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm committing some cards here, but I also understand the tempo advantage to, to an early victory. Um, but, like, that's a cool balance because a lot of times the cards early on that are really good to commit are going to be really good late in the game. So you're tempted to use them now. I'm already tempted. But if we get to that third round and you have three or four three-cost cards to drop on me, that's going to be a momentum swing unlike anything you've ever seen. Tom is asking, is there a stream schedule for the week? So this week is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, is Sky Terror. Thursday, we're doing Star Wars Epic Duels, the board game, which mm -hmm. I'm really excited to, to dive into. And then Friday, we are playing Arkham Horror, the living card game. And it's 1 p.m. CST every day. I don't know if there is a hand limit. Hmm. But you can only draw two cards a turn, so it would be pretty hard to get a much bigger hand size than probably seven or eight. All right, let's look at this. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah, and if you missed it earlier, so our plan with Sky Tear this week is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to be starting here with a single starter and we're going to start adding expansions after this, which I'm super excited about, because I think deck building is one of the, the key components of how just insanely awesome this game is. All right. Well, you know, I'm, I'm down. Let's, let's see what happens here. I'm going to do something I would normally not do. Hmm? Um, let's do the final uh, Habarat here. Hand limit is apparently six, by the way. Yeah. It says below seven in the rule book. So that <laughs> makes sense. Two ways of saying the same thing. Let's go one, two, three. Oh, uh, he's going for the middle. Skirmish, one, two. Let's do one damage or zero damage plus a flip here. Plus two. And this is on Yami. Yami. She's got one armor, so I'll take two damage. Any, uh, does that start a stack as well? I don't know what the skirmish does. Uh, the skirmish action would start a stack okay. before you do any of the three things, which I'm not going to do anything. And then lastly, let's do 
a normal attack action. So it's going to be four, and I'm going to flip two cards and choose one. Well, that worked out. Take the plus one. So do five damage off the basic attack. I guess you have an option to respond to that if you want. <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Do, does my armor count here? Yeah. So Not a mage. Five minus one, four? Take four. Down to 12 health on Yami. Uh, where is it at? Uh, where? Let me find it. Someone asking. Where'd it go? It disappeared on me. What do you need? Oh, uh, Champion Red, you have to build a deck. I mentioned that. Yeah, we'll be covering deck building after this, but essentially you build a deck of eight cards for every hero. You have six. Your opponent bans one of those before the game. You choose four of the five remaining, and their eight cards go together to form your deck. Very different. Mine? All you. All right, well, I guess I have to go with my final hero. So you committed to the middle there. I did. I have to decide how in this I am. Prime uh, ganking territory. Mm-hmm. Let's go. I'm going to go with Tlakali. We're going to move three. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to attack. No. <laughs> ah, that's hard to say, really. I'm, yeah, I'm going to attack. Let's do it. Uh, so I've got a two attack. Kay. I'll start the attack. Do you have any reactions? I do not. Okay. Or you'll pass for the first. I'll opinion. pass. I'll yeah. also pass. So it's a two with one card, so I'll flip. And it's a plus one, so three coming at you. Three with zero health. One, two, three, down to 11. Or down, zero armor. Okay. Then I'm going to initiate a skirmish action. And you get a chance to react to that. No reaction. Okay. I also not have a reaction. So the first thing I'll do is attack with a zero, zero plus the top. plus a card. Plus one? Plus one. I'll take one because I have zero armor. Then I get to move twice. So we're going to move one. And then that will be it. I moved, attacked, and skirmished. Okay. Okay. So then... Everything's exhausted. Yep. Let's go to the minion phase. For each control token in the lanes, determine the winner. Winner damages minions and towers. Winner advances the control tokens, and then both players spawn the minions. For each control token in the domes, determine the winner, if any, and then winner activates the outsider. So... Each friendly hero and minion who has line of sight at the control token provides plus one control, determining the base control value. So we'll start with the one labeled number one here. This is our control token. I have one minion and one hero that have it target, so within three and in line of sight. You have two minions and one hero, right? Yep. So you're at three and I'm at two when we start. Then we reveal each lead card that is currently uh, in that lane. I don't have any lead cards in that lane. I also don't have any lead cards. Okay. So select one of the cards to increase the base control value by the mana cost of the lead card. So you only ever resolve one lead card, even if you have two heroes there both having a lead card. That's worth noting. Okay, and then we go to winner applying the damage. So distribute the damage to enemy minions first. So your three to my two yep. means you win by one. So you can distribute one damage starting with the minions. So you have one minion. Whee! One minion is gone. Then if there are no enemy minions left, apply the remaining damage to an enemy tower or nexus within three of the control token. There is no within three. We're currently four away from my towers. When a player does one or more damage to an enemy tower or nexus, you will draw one power card. So as you move this up and start taking my towers out, you'll get more cards. When these towers are reduced to zero, they're destroyed. When the first tower belonging to a player is destroyed, place five tower tokens on that player's nexus. And then from now on, that player's nexus can be damaged. And if you destroy the nexus, you immediately win. And that's the mode that we're playing currently. Uh, then we do the control token, advance it. So advance the control token a number of hexes equal to the difference between our control values. So, so it's one. You'll get to move it one towards me. And does my guy go with it? Yeah, and you'll move it directly <laughs> toward the closest enemy tower token, stopping it as soon as it's adjacent to one. You ignore blocking elements while moving it. You can end your movement in the same hex as other miniatures, but it cannot enter domes. Okay. For any reason. That makes sense. After you've moved it, the players reposition their existing minions on this lane starting from the winner. You have to start in the control token and then adjacent to it in whatever uh, way you want. 
Uh, they can be repositioned or spawn as close as possible to the control token and with line of sight to it. Okay. If a friendly minion can share a hex with one enemy minion, cannot be placed inside of domes. So I place one on the hex, and then I'm basically placing the other one as far away from your nearest hero as possible. So I'm going to put him on this opposite. Makes place. a lot of sense. Then the winner spawns two of their minions, and then the loser spawns two of their minions. So you can go ahead and spawn your minions here. All right. And they have to be adjacent to this thing, right? Yeah. So I already have one on the space and one next, so I'll put one again on the furthest one away from you, and then I'll put one here because it's close to my champion. All right, and then I've got to put one on, and then I can put one close by. Let's put it here. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's, let's do that. Okay, so we've each spawned two minions. So now Zach has four minions to my two minions. And that's a, that's how the game works. That's why it actually feels like a MOBA. So there's creeps happening here. There's they're spawning and and you and can't just ignore forward. them. You can't they, just ignore they them. They be real. That's right. Okay, and then uh, we do that all for the second. Okay. So we've got a two here. So we we'll resolve that control token. I've got one minion with line of sight. I've got one hero within three uh, in line of sight. So that's two for me. How about you? I'm in the same boat, and I have a control card as well. I think you I do, do too. too. So let's resolve those. So two to two, and I have a three here. I also have a three. All right. So, so we are gridlock. Push. So nothing happens, and then we'll spawn two minions where we need to spawn them. And what happens when I run out of minions? Yeah, good luck. I don't know. <laughs> Never seen it. I, I only have one left. I know what happens. You're done. No more minions. No more minions. Um, let's go one. People asking if this is uh, much different than God tier. Yes. Very different. Very different game. I recommend either watching this video from the start or going to our stream we did for Sky Terror a couple months back or God, watching anything. Yeah. Uh, and then we streamed God Tier as well. And there, to me, God Tier is a miniatures game. Um, and it's not really a MOBA, so to speak. Whereas Sky it's Terror not. It's not. is a MOBA that is a card driven game first that has the miniatures representing the MOBA. But it is more of a card game than it is a miniatures game. All right, then the winner, then we go to the outsider. So place, uh, look at the control token here in the dome. Okay. I've got one hero, two hero that have line of sight to it. I've also got two heroes. All right, and then any control cards? Man, you're flying blind on this one too. I've got a two. And I had a three. All right, you got it. Thankfully. So then I get the outsider. Zach wins control. So winner activates the outsider. Place it following the placement rule written on its card. So if we pull up the outsider here, you okay. can see what you're supposed to do with it. And it says place the outsider anywhere across the stone's perimeter. The outsider cannot move. So it has to have at least one of its three. It's got like three hexes on the bottom of it. Inside the dome and one outside. And I get to place that where I would like. And you can't move through this thing. Uh, so you can create some fun scenarios for your friends. Just wall it off, basically. It's not outside the perimeter. I know. I'm just you're playing the like shape game from when you're a kid. It's like, does it fit or doesn't it fit? Hmm. And then you'll take three actions with the outsider: move, skirmish, attack, or using any of the skills. All right. So I'm gonna actually place him over here. Okay. Rah, he looks awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I get to use three things. So if, if you see his card up, he's got a three range attack. 20 health and 2 armor, If uh, one of the win conditions is actually defeating him. So when he's out, you can basically dogpile on him, and if you can take him off the board, you win the game. Um, but he's got Divine Conduit. Target friendly hero takes a worship action. That could be good. He's got Shockwave, deals 0 piercing damage, to, that means it ignores armor, to target hero and push them 2 hexes. Also could be good. And he has Instill Energy, draw 1 power card. So I get to do 2 of these, right? You get to do 3 actions. So you control him like a normal hero. Oh, and, and you also have move, attack. attack, skirmish. You can do all the normal yeah, things. But he can't move, though. That's one of the, the stipulations in his little card. So let's do a few things. First, we'll just do a normal attack. So it's a three plus top card of my deck. Um, and that's going to start an action window. Yeah. You have uh, anything you want to do? No reactions. All right. So three plus three is going to be hitting six on old Eagle Man. One, two, three, four, five, six. Woo Watch out. And then the second action I'm going to do is the Shockwave. So it's a zero attack plus a card. Uh, and I'll do it to that hero. And then I get to push him two. So it's a one. Done. And then I'll push him two. So we're going to push him over here. 
make you do some work to get him back in the game, protect my minions. You can see which <laughs> side of the board I'm really attacking mm -hmm. here. Uh, then as my third action, I will just draw a card. Wait, we get to draw two cards, right? We'll get two in a minute. Yeah, you can't draw for unless you, he, has he, that he, has a, card. he has a draw. Okay, card. yeah, you can do that. But I wanted to make sure because I'm going to be at four and then draw two, and I would be yeah, fine. Yeah, okay. Six, yeah. So instill energy is the last thing you do there on yep. the outsider card. And then I will put him over there, and he's going to actually stay on the board, and you can't go through him or shoot through him and that kind of stuff. So he, the positioning of that's also important. So he blocks line aside. Is that what his card says? Yeah. Cannot move target friendly. I don't think he blocks. Unless I think. Is there something that. that said that? The chat will catch us before we even find it in the rules. You want to? I'm looking. Want to race? I'm gonna look because all the outsiders are different. I don't know if they officially block line of sight or. Sky Terror says it doesn't block line of sight. Actually. Yeah. You're right. The game really treats line of sight as a pretty sacred thing. It's like it's always there unless you're in a hex with eyeballs. Aaron Clark saying, I have to admit, I was also confused uh, and thought this was God tier at first. This seems significantly more approachable. I think that's... It, it, it is. It hits the balance where it is simultaneously more approachable, but also in the way it has depth in the deck building and the way you play, it, it actually somehow feels deeper, or at least more appreciably deeper. I think with God tier, there was so much going on that like I didn't really understand. It reminds me of L five R in that way, mm -hmm. where it's like I know there's a lot here, and if only I could understand it, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but it's just a little hard to grasp. Okay, now we've got uh, now we've got some questions here. Lots of questions. So. What happens next procedurally? Okay, sorry. Uh, discard all <laughs> yeah. power cards. So anything that you've cast this turn would be on your hero card, and it all gets discarded. Draw two new power cards. Discard cards until you're below seven, and then ready everything that's exhausted. Okay. So I'll go one, two, and I will have to discard one down. I like that you were lost in the game right there. Yeah, I was thinking about things. <laughs> Just trying to figure, figure out what to do. Um... All right, I'll discard one here. So I'm at six cards. And then See you, Caesar. Ready all exhausted heroes. So everybody is ready for action. And then we advance the mana slash turn counter, which is up here. You guys can't see it. It's on two. So now everybody has two mana for the turn. Usually that means you can start casting. And uh, now we go to the money here. And are you still first? Yep. Nothing. Nothing changes there. I feel like that in on this turn particularly can be an advantage because like you're going to get the especially with movement abilities or blocking and like that kind of stuff you get that whatever the most critical thing to do on this turn is you know I can't do anything about at least unless I react. Now so many cards in my hand are open by the way because we have two resources. Yeah. So I'm going to try this is a, a gamble. Let me see what the... I like the sound of it. Let me think through the odds here. So let's see here. Four and a f three. Yeah, some cool comments coming. I'm just going to interact while you're thinking about yeah. it. Uh, physics says, I like the way resources continue to escalate as the rounds advance. Pretty neat. I agree. So not only are you closer now that you've moved and basically committed your models to portions of the board, but that escalating power level of everyone gets really cool, and it makes turn three is where it gets real wild because that's where the the big stuff is. Laszlo is saying this game looks great, looks and feels great based on the, your play so far. Yeah, it, it's super approachable, and then you start when you start playing, you realize how bad you are at it, which mm -hmm. means that there's a lot of ways to get better, which I'm excited about. Okay, let's see here. How do we do this in a way that could actually work? Four, seven. I think it's worth a shot here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go big. Give it a shot here. Yeah. Big money, no whammy. So first action, I'm gonna shape shift myself, become a birdo. Second action, I'm gonna cast. Um, wait, this is a reaction. Hold on a second. So like, if you attack. Mm -hmm. You can add it into your queue to hopefully apply to that attack or something. I don't know what it does, but I'm looking at some of my stuff. It's the same boat. Interesting. Okay, hold on a second. You're good. No rush. We're just so, hanging out. So here's the question, though. Could I, I can't declare an attack legally because I am melee. 
This, this is an amazing comment. I love this. Sorry Actually, to, to derail you. Sam says, before I jump in on this, will you guys be making custom tokens? If so, I'm fully committed. It's likely. That's hilarious. It's likely. It honestly depends on the general reaction that we see. Um, because obviously the, the commitment on our end to design a token set and produce it and manufacture it and stock it and stuff is immense. Um, but presuming that there's a good reaction and everything so far, everyone in the comments has been saying this is great. Uh, we'd love to do something like that, so time will tell. Aaron Clark asking, how do you think it plays with three and four players? I played a three-player game and loved it. Absolutely. That, that's another thing that really sealed the deal for me. It works at three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and I would love to play an eight-player game. Although we probably won't stream that one. Okay. So then, my second action, I'm going to apply a or declare a skirmish action, and then mm, this you is have great. the opportunity to great? react if you'd like. I love this. It's so good, <laughs> Stephen. It's so good. Um, now, to target Eva something, it has to be within three, right? Just generically. Yes. And in, in line of sight. Yeah. And you're going with that cat? Yeah. What's the name? Jerobrun? Birdman. Uh, Korjoff. Korjoff. Parker Fredersen, eight players, how does that work? Basically, we do it where one player controls one hero. So it's like you're playing an actual Dota match where you're in charge of your singular hero and you take your turn and do your things. And uh, you can also do really cool like formats with that where you know everybody's sharing the same hand or you could do everybody has a two card hand. Uh, there's a lot of really fun variations that you can do with it. In the, in the rules they give you basically the alt rules for the various scales of players and it was really cool. So like when it was 2v1, basically one player had a full hand and obviously you can play your cards on any of your heroes. But each of my other opponents had two heroes each and their individual hands. But like when it came to card draw they had to pick yeah. Did someone get to draw two? Do they both get to draw one? But it, it also made them a little weaker because it was like they can't play their cards. There's some advantages they get, but they can't play their cards on their friends' heroes. Uh, so, anyways, it, it's it's very interesting. Um, so I get the first reaction. Yeah. Do you know, perchance, what the slow condition does? Yeah. It says move action is decreased by two hexes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That could be useful. Um, let's. I like my odds over here, so I'm going to pass my first pass or play. Okay. Then. And we've got two mana to work with. Boop. So I'll let that skirmish resolve then. All right, hit me with it. Actually, I guess, yeah, okay. So one move, we'll go and do the one damage now. So zero plus one, no armor. So Taking a plus, damage. Plus one for skirmish because I'm shapeshifted. So take two damage to Kotlik. 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 Take one. Two. Ah. <laughs> okay, and then I will declare, I'll go ahead and take my last move here. Whee! I'm on your flank. Then I will declare an attack action. Now is where it gets interesting. Where did you reference that effect earlier? It's on the back of one of these. Or I have one of these. Uh, oh, me too. Your keywords, yeah. Hmm. Well, why not, you know? Yeah. All right, I'm going to do my first reaction. Hit me. So we're going to start a stack. I'm going to play Crawling Darkness. Apply Disarm and Slow to target enemy hero if it resolves. Disarm and Slow. So Disarm, mm -hmm. for those watching at home, attack and skirmish actions deal half of the damage rounded up before armor. Slow, move action is decreased by two hexes, and those stay until you basically use them. All right, I'll do the old Sky Tear Flex. Okay. The next ultimate power card I play costs one less mana. And that's a reaction going into the stack. Yeah. Now, you would need to play the other card first, right? Mm, yeah, I guess so. This, this is where I understand the stack is cool. Dismiss. 
What's it say? Two mana. I have the yellow icon on core draw, so it works. Target a power card on the stack with cost two or less played by target enemy hero. Discard the power card and place it in center's discard pile. I don't like that. So basically cancel your crawling darkness there. I will pass. All right, and then I'll play the Sky Tear Flex. Okay. And then I will pass again. All right. So we'll resolve them top to bottom. Sky Tear Flex. Next card is minus one. All right. Discard that. So then one mana for Dismiss. And that's going to cancel your power card. All right, so it goes away. And then I place this card on Korjoff to show that I've spent two mana for this turn. Fantastic little mechanic, if you guys can see this. Whoa, what is that? Tell me more. Well, you just that's how you show. Oh, yeah, so yeah. once you cast it, that says, okay, I've used two mana for the turn so far, so I can't cast it. Well, technically, again. it was minus one, though, right? Oh, that's true, yeah. So you, it was you might want to put that under your dude. Yeah. So he still has one. Open, open for party. Open for business. Okay. Uh, oh wait, I had, I have more. <gasps> You're gonna add to the stack. Yeah, I want to add to the let's, stack. Let's let bring a stack back. Let me do that yeah. again. Let me get it again. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, once you see the stack firing, I think that's really okay, good. Okay, then there's that, and then you there have you an option. Yep. And then I was wondering why you were using the discount. I could go here to disarm target adjacent enemy hero. Ooh wee. I don't like that. That okay. all makes sense, yeah. So what's that card that you just put on top? So through the eyes. Ooh, look at the art. It hurts. Apply Disarm to target adjacent enemy hero. Okay. Cool so stack. So now we'll resolve the stack. All right, so Disarm target enemy hero. All right, so I get a Disarm token. I'm going to grab this. And this goes on Kotlik. Got it? Then my next card is minus one. Mm-hmm. And what's the name? That was the Sky That was the Sky Tear Flux. Okay. And then target a power card on the stack will cost two or less. That's you, Zach. And that gets discarded, so you're fresh up on mana that you can spend. And so you're disarmed. We canceled your card, and then the attack officially goes through. So it's a four damage attack because Shape of the Clawed. And then we flip up a plus two, so six damage, no armor. <sighs> And he only has seven health, so now he's Just down to one. Just one away. And he's about to get knocked out, which is a, we'll show you that. They did that mechanic really cool. Someone on stream asking how long a game normally takes. So the once you're really just playing, I think it's 30 minutes to an hour at most. And then I am exhausted. We're also not using the uh, alternative win conditions, which is standard to use them, which also speeds up the game. See uh, Volantru. All right, and then it's over to you. All right, well, so this is interesting mm -hmm. because it's like Kotlik only has one health left. But at the same time, for you to get to him, it's like a move and a skirmish. And does this person have ranged? Who's this? Uh, no, that is Habarat. does not have ranged. So your nearest ranged character is here, right? Yep. So for you to actually come over and do it, you could make one, two, three. One, two, three. One. You could get there. One, two. No, you couldn't. You'd have to really do something fancy. Mm -hmm. I'd have to do something fancy. Interesting. Because what I don't want to do is lose that character before they go. You know what I mean? That is right. Yeah, Pastorian, yeah, you don't have to pay for that power card since it was canceled. It goes to the discard pile instead. Skytear on it here, saying, yeah, we kept the games in the 30, 60 minute range. It was top priority for us for organized play. It's, it's so true, right? I mean, any game that takes up more than this much space and also takes more than an hour is so hard to run an event for. It's crazy. One, another reason that we like this game so much. All right. Well, how about we party? Party on. This is where the balance comes in. Because <laughs> it's a balance of, like, do I clear minions or do I damage your main characters? That, it's, it's the Dota question, man. It's great. Because, like, damaging, damaging your characters doesn't really do anything for me. It might sit, sit one of your characters down for a round. Where's the guy with only two health over here? Right here. Mm, he already went. Yep. I see. I'm going to go with him first. Every time, I'm yeah. not a fool. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Although, he's going to be out for the entire next round, so like it doesn't really matter. The timing yeah. on it, it's bad no matter what. Yeah, so basically when a character gets knocked out, their little coin goes to the, the round counter. If they've already activated this round, it goes to the next round counter, and you don't get that back until after the round. So effectively what that means is that if you knock out a hero, they always miss a round. Jason Pitcher's asking when we're getting the figures painted. We might do that on stream. Who knows? You get to see my frustration. <laughs> I set up my dining table as a paint station this weekend and started using it. It was great. That works. I had to have a conversation. It's like, hey, 
We're gonna be isolation for a month more. We're not using our dining table. How do you feel if I just like <laughs> take this over? All right. Well, let me just reference my compendium of cards here. Yeah. If you defeat an enemy here, you do draw two cards. That seems good. It seems like something I'd want to do. Yeah, it's good. Cards are good. Let's. I just don't want you to do bad things to me first. You know. That's the. All right, let's go with Yami. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going with Yami. All right, here's what Yami is going to do. First thing is she's going to skirmish the guy with swords here. Okay. So do you have any reactions to my skirmish? Skirmish. Nope. All right, so I'm going to do the damage first. So it's a zero plus the top card, which is a plus one. Zero armor. So take one. Okay. Then she's going to move. One, two. Then she's going to move, move, and she has a special ability on Yami called Deathly Touch. The first time Yami moves through an enemy minion, each activation deal a damage to it. So she's going to go one, two, three. Okay. And that's going to take away your little wolfie. Consider it gone. Then she's actually going to attack. So skirmish, move, attack, is that your sequence there? Yes. Um, actually, let me back that train. Back it up. No, that's fine. Uh, she'll just attack, uh, who's in my what's? What's his name? Akuti. Uh, so she has no, a two. not the other one. Yeah, Akuti. Yeah, she has a two. Right. Uh, you get the first reaction. Oh, none. Uh, Yami does have a line of sight because she's next to the person. She, I'm not attacking the bear, side note. Yeah. None? I also have none. Okay. Two plus three. Ugh. Hitting for five. Five it is. One, two. Whoop. That was wrong. There was one from original attack, and then one, two, three, four, five. Now, technically, my first attack was against this guy. Oh. The skirmish thing. Because that's where I was standing. Whoop. Whoop. There you go. There we go. <laughs> Double, you move both of them up. <laughs> All right, uh, and that's Yami. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy how simple it is, but also how much is going on. And we don't even have the little alt win conditions, which yeah, change nuts. everything. And I can move through your models, right? I, doesn't isn't that the rule? Is you can generally, or is that just minions? I think you can just move through minions. You can move through minions. Okay. That's how Yami Yami do over there. Okay. But you can't if you're skirmishing because you can't land on them, and they're separate. Yep. All right. Let's see what I've. Uh, Ronnie King. Uh, so basically, when you're in the trees. You can't be seen unless the a model is next to you. Then they can see you. Also, if a friend, if a model, if you have a friendly model next to an enemy in the trees, they are basically acting as your spotter, so all your models can see it as long as they're within three uh, and they have line of sight. So then the other exception would be the the bubble in the middle prevents you from seeing inside or outside of it, depending on where you're at. Okay. Fascinating. I'm excited to be like two days from now <laughs> when I feel like we're both pretty decent at it. Better. It's going to be cool better. to watch it happen. I feel like I'm just struggling to, to do basics right now. Okay, so let's do... Um, let me see if I can actually get through here. Two. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with uh, Haburat. So first action, let's do a skirmish. Okay. So let me make sure that it doesn't matter. Right here, damage is an enemy minion with an attack action. You may move them one hex. So that's actually quite fascinating to you. So let's go skirmish. One, two, 
zero plus a flip here. Okay, uh, and technically we could react beforehand, but I'm not going Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Take two. And this is on? Call me in the morning. Uh, Which doctor? Should be this one, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so one armor, does it count? It does, yeah. Uh, so one damage? One damage, yeah. Boop. Then we'll take a move action. We'll do one, two, three, four. Mm hmm. You have four move? Oh, no, I won't. I was thinking, I was thinking wrong. That's where you were. Hmm. This is oh, did you now. just. <laughs> yeah, I where, was thinking where, where five. I was thinking five. That's fine. That's fine. We'll resolve you it. You were over here? Yeah. I might, have a, I might have a way to do this. For a different adjacent target. Trying to get over Okay, that, that's actually fun. Uh, Van asking the minimum age for this game. His son's 11 and plays in Pro Assault. I think your son would be totally fine. If your son can play in Pro Assault in the sense, um, I have a nephew about the same age and I think he could totally handle this. They also have versions of the characters on the back that don't have their abilities. Um, so at worst, I think he'd be able to handle that. Fantastic. <laughs> um, okay. And then adjacency. Now I wonder, yeah, it would be target. It would have to be a target. Different adjacent target. I'm, I'm appreciating the spotting of this guy at this point. Yeah, it's good. So move one, two, three. Just a brick. Mm hmm And then I'm going to do a hurricane strike. That card looks cool. Yeah, it's a two mana card. Deal two damage to target adjacent enemy. If the caster has moved four or more hexes, repeat the effect on a different adjacent target. So I'm going to basically hit both of these minions and clear out two. Mm. Try to recover that tower a little bit better. i got to think about my life. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you'll do that action. I won't react. All right. Two damage to target enemy, and then repeat it against a different adjacent target. So we'll kill both of these. Oh. You got it. I can't target this one even as adjacent. Oh, yeah, because I'm in the bubble. Because you're in the bubble. The bubble knows all. And now it's down to, we each have two minions there. And now you have two heroes within three, so you're going to kind of force my hand. I'm trying to push that back. Yeah. And also, you know, if you want to move this person, any moves closer to me are, are good. Like, I... Yeah. Put I'm a little it. closer to the firing line. I am <laughs> with it. All right, so mine? Yeah. Let's do it. Party time. I'm going to go with Kotlik. He's the, the, what's Disarm do? Disarm goes to... Uh, half? Half, yeah, half the damage. Is that right? Yeah, that's a bummer. But you Attack only have... Attack and Skirmish deal half rounded up. You only have three left over there. Only three, yeah. Draw those bricks. Yeah, Eric, no sleeves. We're playing right out of the core set. We'll get them. We'll get them sleeved up. Mm hmm. All right. Let's go with Kotlik. My first action. I'm gonna play Blazing Edge. So if you look, Kotlik's green, but he has the red rune, so he can play a rune. Uh, Blazing Edge says this caster gets plus two attack. Ooh. Damage dealt by this cast caster's attack actions has piercing. It just means it goes through armor, even though you don't have it. It's yeah, plus it's two static. It's reduced in half though because of disarm. Oh right, you are disarmed. Yeah. So that's what, that's why I'm doing it. I need to get up to make sure I get enough to you actually take you off the table. Down. So what are you at? Uh, th what's his attack? Uh, three. So it will be a five, but this this is an action unto itself. It's not the attack yet. Right. Um, so the first thing I'm doing is trying to give myself plus two, and you get a chance to react. Yep. I well I've already exhausted out. here, but. I'm already exhausted here, too, with Habra. He's got two mana on him already. Daniel so, asking if time permits, it. will we play a second game? Definitely. So yeah, we'll, we'll play, we're playing the next three days, two days. Yeah. Um, I assume our next step after this will be opening some expansions and deck building and customizing. We'll dive in. And then we'll dive into another game. I have no response to that. Okay, so he just gets plus two attack, and I'm going to put that on Kotlik, so we'll remember. So the only thing that would fail you here is a minus one, if I'm not mistaken, because five, five have rounded up would be uh, three. I remember when we were playing that first time, you we are like, mm -hmm. oh, what's the worst it could? And then bam, it was like minus, minus two. One. It's like, oh <laughs> my goodness. Um, all right, so next thing I want to do is I'm just going to attack you. Yep. So I have a three plus two, which is a five with you piercing. Nothing No fancy. reactions. Uh, what do you I'll, got? I'll flip, and it's a plus one. It's, it's in. So it's six Ooh. divided. So to go to zero, 
and you'll go back over there because you'll respawn. Your little token will go on the next round. Token is going to go up here. You guys can't see it. There's a little track up here. Uh, so I'm technically coming in on round three. Now, normally, normally I put it on round three, but instead I think it's going to go to round four. So because yeah. he's exhausted already. If you're already exhausted. Yeah. So basically you just miss one round. I'll have is, a round without what, my that's, hero. That's working. Um, then I have one action left. I played a card. I exhausted. James um, Parson, yes. There is a shape-shifting bear character called Gulbjarn. <laughs> that is all you need to know. So you can bear on. All right. Um, oh, and this is your little token, I think. Yeah, we'll stream all of the deck building cups in. We'll pull it up on the computer and everything. It's, it's a fun process. And then I'm going to commit a card lead with uh, Kotlik. So I'm going to put one face down, hoping to shore up my control point there. Okay, so there's your two activations. And then the disarm is going to go away. Yeah. Every time you exhaust, your conditions are gone. Jonathan, I'm to H says, love the art and character design. Totally. I, so one of the things, we had the box, but then it came with, they sent us an art book. And that's the first thing I was actually looking through. And it was <laughs> like, I just immediately understood how much was put into it. And I could see the, the blood, sweat, and tears in that book. Uh, and I was very impressed. Okay. <laughs> James says sold. Buying now in response to your bear <laughs> comment. It's a yeah, great Nathan game. Yeah, Nathan Bradley, sorry. You're, I think you will love this game, Nathan. It's, it's a card-driven, it's a deck builder, ultimately. So you get that side of it. Then you've got minis on the table that you can paint, but you don't have to. It's all pre-constructed. Models look great. Uh, and there's four factions, uh, expansions every two to three months. I mean, it's the dream. This is, this is a game that was built for a lot of people in our audience, I would say. If you've been following along for a long time, this is like right up our alley. It's crazy. Sterling's saying playing a power card does not cost an action. So there are power cards that are actually actions. So unless I'm completely misunderstanding how that's written, there's reactions, which have the two arrows, um, like Crawling Darkness. And then there's actually actions, which like Shuruken, Shuruken, oh, I couldn't fit. Shuruken. Storm. <laughs> shuriken. Uh, shuriken. It is literally like. Shuriken, it's, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Shuriken. Shuriken, yeah. That's why I thought Hadouken. <laughs> uh, shuriken Storm. <laughs> That's so funny, actually. <laughs> oh, man. That has the, the singular arrow, which is an action. Okay, now we've got to decide how weird we want to get. James, uh, you, we don't have the core set. We're not planning on having that online. You'll have to get that from PvP directly. Um, and that, that's kind of how it's intended. So they're going to be selling anything that's already been out. And then the only way to get the expansions moving forward is going to be through a subscription uh, or through your local retailer when it actually comes out. So uh, if, you, if you're wanting to pick it up, just hop on over to their site. You can use that code and get, get it on, your, on the way. Okay. How about this move? Hit me with it. Dun, dun, this is such dun, a great dun, game. Dun. I'm so glad we're doing this. It is good. Hmm. When I see that smile, like that look on your face, <laughs> it's real good. I know it's good. Of course, James. Welcome to Sky Tear. I feel like this has got to go. Um, you have one armor. Now, if you knock him out, does that get rid of my card? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's you're, awesome. You're gone. Ah! You're gone. Okay. Um, yeah, but how do you get over there? you got to really do some shenanigans to do that. Let's go with uh, Kuti here. Um, we'll go one, two, three. Mm -hmm. We'll take a skirmish action. Do mm -hmm. you have any response before I start plugging along? No, I'm good. Okay. We'll go one damage here. Yep. And then we'll flip, so zero plus zero. Oh, swoosh attempts. Con consider it blocked. <laughs> and then one move. I will. I do remember your bonuses in your deck are lower. Yeah. You have negatives and a lot of zeros, whereas the, the red and green seem to have more bonuses towards attacking. Uh, but. And then within three, so target one, two, three. So we're going to target you here with an attack. Do you have any reactions to that? It's going to be two plus a card. So unless I get a minus one, one 
That would be a bummer. That I would don't. Be a bummer. <laughs> if this is a minus one, I'm gonna die. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is a minus, minus one. one. <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. Shouldn't have skirmished, I guess. <laughs> oh man, that's, uh, that's a bummer. Horrible. Okay, uh, and that's gonna be my turn. <laughs> oh, that's, hor that's I feel horrible. I feel horrible for you. <laughs> that's gonna turn the tide real hard, real quick. Um, all right, well. All right, so Sterling says, page 10 of the rulebook, often overlooked rules, power cards do not require actions. I wonder if it says, though, that they do. I feel like everybody would have been telling us. Okay. Sam, I, he says he went with Talit and Karumo expansions purely on looks. Not sure if they're opposite or good for deck building. From what I've seen, we have all the expansions here. We're going to be opening them all up. So uh, we'll be diving in and mixing and matching, but it... There's not really bad mixes. It's just a, depends on your flavor. And if you're drawn to particular elements, I've, I've seen it line up with playstyles so far. So the people I've played with basically identified, ah, that's my kind of element. And it was like, oh, water, adaptable, ice, prevention, protection. It all kind of lines up. So it, I won't be surprised if based on looks, you find stuff that you're into. All right, so I think, I think we're right. They, they don't require an action. Doesn't require any action points, but actions, uh, the little arrow, heroes can play these only during their activation. Really? So it doesn't require an action point to do that. That changes everything. Well, now we know. I lost, I lost an action here, but that's fine. Um, hold on, let me see if that would have mattered. So, like, ooh, that 100%. would change things. Like, as an yeah. example, I would have had an extra thing here, so I mm -hmm. probably would have, like, Hit in this corner. Yeah, we'll just we'll just. Well, do you want to start next turn with that rule? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that that's fair. That's a great way of doing that. Bring it on. All right, mine. Yeah, that's gonna make those way better. Yeah, Nathan, it kind of looks similar to God Tier, but it it is not. It it's really a very very different game. It's more the game that I thought God Tier was going to be. If that if that matters, um, a lot faster, a lot more MOBA, um, deck building. Yeah, there's actually lane control, minions, the whole the whole thing. All right, let's go. So you have two here, and you have no cards face down. No cards face down, no. No control cards. That seems good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go with Talakali, T-L-A-K-A. L I the high scarifus scarifer scarifer. <laughs> How would you say that? Scarifer. It might mean sacrificer. Maybe a typo. That would be an epic typo. Yeah. <laughs> scarifer. I was or gonna say. Or no, probably scarifier. So like making scars on people. Scarifier. That, that makes sense. Does that seem reasonable? I, I wanted to say sacrificer, and then I realized it was wrong, and then my I just danced over the word for a second. Hey, dragon soul. Life inside the bubble is good. Very good. Nathan, you had me at deck building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what, it really clicked for me that this was a card game, not a miniatures game. It, it is 90% card game, 10% miniatures game, which is cool. It has a positional elements. Um, all right, so, ah, so many choices. Okay, let's go with Thlakali. First thing we'll do is skirmish. So we're going to boop. Boop, and I'm gonna skirmish that cat. Nothing weird. Ready? Yeah. Plus zero. Take nothing. Nothing. Uh, then I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna use my attack to shoot uh, this wolf. Okay. Any reactions? Nope. Two plus one, so three. You got it. It's gone. Then I'm going to worship. For the first time. Ooh, putting a totem down. Place a pillar in target hex within three hexes. So I gotta put one of these green pillars down. So within three in line of sight. We're gonna go here. And what does that pillar do? So while heroes have line of sight toward a friendly pillar, their skills with the pillar icon are active. The pillar icon here for Talal. Talal. Takali. Takali. Did you even say the L? Talakali. Yeah. During the heroes heroes phase, when a friendly minion adjacent to the pillar would lose HP. She may prevent the loss and lose that much HP instead. Okay. Um, and then she also has Life Force Infusion, which is, I don't even know if it's an action. It says heal a friendly hero adjacent to the removed pillar one. So when you worship, you can remove any number of pillars and trigger this. So like, 
I could remove, uh, you know, pillars and heal a friendly adjacent hero. Nice. One HP for every pillar. The old heal bot. Mm-hmm. Okie dokie. Well, so now it's over to me, huh? Daniel, oh man, I so love this game. It's really great. Strange turn of events here. Hmm. Hmm. Two options, really. Yep, and I've got old Sakashi waiting to mm -hmm. react, depending on what you do. Waiting to react. Playing, playing second fiddle is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's balanced. I think you get that minus one mana, and you get the extra card. Don't mind it. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Okay. You know, we could do this. So let's look within within three hexes. Does that does that always require line of sight? No, that's the question. So I with, think that's within that's the three big hexes benefit. is the not target not target enemy, but just it says. Enemy hero within three hexes. Like, Sakashi has this eagle eye ability. Sakashi has line of sight toward any marked enemy within three hexes. Okay. So that would yeah. make me assume there would be a way to be within three without having line of sight. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. <clears throat> and does he have ranged? Yeah, he's ranged. So you could move, you could drop one minion and control that. You've got that card. That card is my biggest problem. This card? Yeah. yeah. That needed to go. <laughs> the plan has changed. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. And it's pretty hard for you to get all the way over there. Yeah, Bear Man's not exactly the... The speedy guy? He's not exactly lighting the world on fire with that. No. Need old eagle eyes for that. And who's most hurt? Okay, so she is... Maybe it is just, maybe it is just the worship become a bear, and then I'll keep that for next turn. Retro Daniel saying, yeah, I hope there's an online community for this game. I'd love to play, but I'd have to get an hour plus train every time I wanted to. There's an amazing online community. The Sky Terror team has done a great job putting together the T TTS uh, mod for it, Tabletop Simulator. They have an online league slash tournament going on right now. They're very supportive of that. Um, so check that out. I, I think there's a great community waiting for you. Hmm. But I don't want to give you that outsider either. That outsider is disgusting. Yep. I kind of have to choose one or the other, don't I? That is the thing I'm forcing here. I'm forcing it. But, like, my positioning means that. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> Our positioning. Has what up, David? Created says, this. <laughs> this is actually amazing. It says, Morning, gents. Sunday gaming? Question mark. Lucky us. I don't know if you know this or not, but it's Monday. Uh, <laughs> it I could be Sunday somewhere, I guess. Isolation's Is getting to us. I don't think so. 12 hour, uh, no, maybe not. What is but slow? Is that minus well. two? You can only move one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, check this out. Sky, Sky Tier is running a 40 plus person online tournament right now, mm. streaming, streaming on Fridays. Very cool. It's beautiful. All right, why don't we do it like this then? I think I'm just gonna have to give that one to you. Oh no. Jay Scotty, uh, really appreciate the comment. Says we're, we've been his favorite thing to watch during the quarantine. He says, thanks. Our pleasure. Thanks for being here and thanks for interacting. Hmm. It's so weird. I love it. It's the hardest thing. Okay, so if we do that, and then we do that, and then we do that. Retro Daniel, there is also a Discord. I'm sure the Sky, the Sky Tear team who's commenting on here can hook you up with a link. <laughs> Danny, um, this is a humbling comment, actually. He says, Team Covenant greater than Tiger King. <laughs> All of us from Oklahoma, but I'm glad you're digging it. <laughs> Okay. All right. We can get here. We can get here. Also, are you excited for the wickedly cool turn three we're about to get? Yeah, this is going to be a wild turn three. Um, 
let's just do a little skirmish pop, and then I'm gonna try to stay shape shifted. I think for the going like, into the next turn. Yeah. So skirmish attack move is actually reasonable as well. Ah, there's good options everywhere, man. Like he says, kudos to you, Zach, and spelled Zach in the best way I've ever seen. Z-A-K-K. -K. And what are you, who's your, your Yami? 18, ugh, she's down to 12. Yep. One armor. I love her model, the sweeping, uh, like, cloth of her dress is awesome. This guy's got ranged. Yep, he's got those throwing Two, stars. Three. Okay, so you would have to, you would have to waste a move to kill a minion. That's okay. I'm not worried about it. You will be. So let's do a skirmish. Lanky says, you have said not good in social situations, but you host this show, Eel. Let's go skirmish. So one, two. And I'm gonna do zero plus a card to Sakashi there. Four or zero. Swooshed it. <laughs> We're learning the strength of your deck. <laughs> yeah, it's not swooshing. in that. Uh, then we'll do an attack against Sakashi. Okay. It's just gonna be three plus a card. Minus one, so two damage. Okay. Zero armor. Zero armor, he's taking it. And then we're going to lead. And pass it over to you. <laughs> All right, my final activation. Last one. So now I get to choose. Uh, Danny, I'm entry point, the course at 70 bucks. That's what we have here. Uh, Comes with eight heroes, 16 minions, the board, double sided board, uh, all the stat cards, enough to build at least two decks going into to play. Uh, so it's really everything you need to get started. And the expansions are 35. Yep. And if you're in the US, our subscription is the best way to get those moving forward. And then if you want the old stuff, uh, PvP Geeks, their website, they distribute ship to the US. And all over the world, too. All over the world. $99 or more, I think, is free shipping. Yep. And uh, you can get some good deals there. All right. I'm going to... You put a card under that bear? I did. <laughs> you put a card under that bear? <laughs> <laughs> Sentences I wasn't sure I would ever <laughs> echo. <laughs> um, Link, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, Rise of Red Skull. That campaign expansion is going to be good. I can't wait for that. Let's go... Sakashi, skirmish. He's going to bounce and... Uh, wait, do you have any reactions to my skirmish? Oh, you know I don't. Great. Bounce, bounce, and we're going to skirmish the bear. Minus one. Plus two, taking a damage. One damage. Then we're going to shoot, because uh, he's got range, one of your minions that's now within line of sight. Do you mm -hmm. have any reactions? Nope. Three plus two. I'll choose the two, make it a five. Which one is it? This guy or this uh, guy? Let's go that guy. Ding! And then I have one action left, so this is a big decision, because I could either commit a card and really try to vanquish you there, mm -hmm. or I can move to the middle. That's the choice. Get the outsider, uh, and that's what I'm going to do. One, two, three. Yeah, I like that uh, choice. Let's actually go here. I think that's right. Uh, which allows me to basically really, I'm already kind of slightly winning here, mm -hmm. and so I'm really going to push my advantage on this side of the table. All right, into the phase. So let's go to calculating the control. Okay. So we'll start with one here. I've got two heroes that can see it. You've got two heroes that can see it. You've got two minions. I've got one. So you're four to three. And then any cards that matter. All right, I'll flip. I had Rampant Hatred, which is a yeah. three icon <laughs> test. Needed to knock that hero out. Yeah, very to much so. So I win by four. Seven to three, yep. So you take it on your minions first. So one there so minions are gone and then you'll move the control token four times or i think actually hold on you'll do damage we'll yeah. do damage to the because it's within three point. of within the three. towers it's actually exactly three because i knocked it one last round thankfully just one one moment okay and then distribute the damage to minions and then if there are no minions left apply the remaining to an enemy tower within three so then three from the tower yep 
and then you can move it up to four spaces. I think you have to move it but four. But then the moment that it hits, which will be here. Mm -hmm. It'll stop. And I'm going to put my pillar up on it. And then it'll stay there for the rest of the game, because the nexus is always within three. So you advance the control token. Hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. I so, thought it still moved. Mm -mm, I don't think so. Like, you can knock it away. I can knock it back, but I, it won't move past this uh, boundary. I don't think. It, I, well, I thought it could get, like, right here. That's what I'm saying. Really? Yeah, I, I don't believe so. Hmm. Let's look. Um, must be moved towards the closest enemy tower. Stops as soon as it's adjacent to one. So as long as it's adjacent to a tower, it won't move. But I thought once the tower is destroyed. After the control token is moved, the player may reposition their existing minions on this lane. Um, I don't see anything there. And you damage the tower, so you draw a power card. Great. No matter the amount of damage dealt. And then, yeah, is it going to keep moving? That's what we need from you, chat. Is it going to keep moving towards the Nexus or not. I remember somebody saying uh, that it didn't. Deep Divin says it'll move when the tower goes. OK. You create the Nexus and can emit towards it. OK, good. Thank you. That's what we needed. And do you check movement before or after you damage a tower? Because like technically, next round, if I did three more, would I do the two first and then move it? Or you would apply it... the damage, and then you advance the control token. Cool. Yeah. OK, so that's all done. And then we each get two minions there. So Melkor, really appreciate that. I was excited to get that the news about Power Rangers sub. He's been getting weekly Power Rangers packages from us now. Last week he ordered the core set. This week nice. he's getting Wave 1. <laughs> and then next week he's expecting the expansions. So that's awesome. Really appreciate you being a subscriber. OK, so two guys here, and then you get two minions. You can put them anywhere adjacent so to this the is, tower. By the way, this is why the number on which side we're resolving first matters, because I have to place two minions. You, you get infinite minions. Really? According to Skytear, yeah. So you can proxy him or whatever. Good to if know. You have too many. If, if Idris had a core set, we would have a ton of minions. Yeah. Um, so I already have one there and there. We'll put one here. I can go crack mine open too if we need to. Currently fine. Okay, so minions are placed. I have him facing towards me so I know that it's the bad guys. And then we go to number two where you have two minions, I have two minions, you have one hero, I have one hero, so three to three. I have a control card of three. Woo I don't. All right, so we're three up. So remove two minions, and then any additional damage I would do within three of the control token. I'm not within three to your tower. It doesn't do three damage to the minions? Is it yeah, it does. Yeah, it does three. Yeah, I had three there. Oh, did you have three? Yeah, Hold I had on. three. So three, I did that wrong then. Three, four to my six, seven. So you're ahead so by three. So that is three. Okay, yeah, yeah. we did that you right. You knock right. them all out. There you go. And then we go to activating. So we'll move this three. One, two, three. And then we reposition any minions. And then we each spawn two. And do we start with me or you? I think the winner spawns first, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Motoraj says, what are the contents in an expansion? So every expansion so far that I've seen comes with Four, uh, the initial four expansions came with four Starting heroes and winner. four minions. And then, winner spawns. and then the outside expansion coming out May 8th, I believe, just comes with four new heroes slash champions. Okay, here we go. There's my two minions. The, so the winner spawns first, and then you get to spawn two there. One's got to go on. And You're then, ahead of me. Yeah, we've got a right side push versus a left side push. You see a lot of action happening here. Some just secret action happening over here. <laughs> All right. And Dragon sold lots of deck customization. That's what really sold me on it. We'll begin to that after this game. Then we go to the outsider. You're going to win that one. So you've got one hero with a uh, target in the middle. And then you can take three actions of the outsider. And all normal actions exist. And then also your, uh, your standard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I like this idea. Okay. So then I get three actions. Um, he's got a range three attack. So the first thing he's going to do, can you see? He can't see. Can't see that. Now, can see that. Can't One, see two, that. three. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, no, Tor, Tor, you're right. Yeah, that I knew I did it wrong. So five, so this was one plus three is four plus one minion is five. And then you had three minions and one hero is four. So you'd only you lose one 
minion, so you can put two back. Oh. Let's just do that again. So you'll do, you'd have one minion gone, and then you had one, I think, here. You're technically still here, right? Yeah, we can do it like that if you want. Just, just run around through the math on it. Yeah, so do your, put your third minion there, wherever that was. So then three for the card, one for the hero, one for my minion is five. And then you've got three plus one is four. So I lose by one. So lose one minion, and then we'll move the objective space one. And then we have to snap our stuff back. Yeah. And then we each get two more. And then we'll spawn two, yeah. All right, so, and then, yeah. Okay. Starting with heroes. Push on, my brethren. <laughs> my brethren. Okay, uh, so then I place the outsider there. Then it will do an attack against uh, one of your minions. Okay. It's a three plus. This minion here, I'm guessing. Yeah, sure. Four. Whee! Um, then target friendly hero takes a worship action. So I'm going to put another pillar. Uh... Man, you're close to being able to heal here mm -hmm. with that action. That'd be so cool. I mean, I technically could if I put the, because I could put the pillar here. It's within three. Um, but Thomas Foster on Facebook, I believe one of the writers for Sky Tear. Um, there's no solo mode yet. I'm sorry to say I'm mocking up something for that, but I can't confirm it will come into fruition yet. All right. So something may be in the works here. Woo. Mm, let's just put it there. Okay. Another totem. Do those block line aside or anything weird? Nope. You can move through them. Okay. Uh, and then I will instill energy to draw a power card. So placed it, did an attack. Actually, I won't do that because we draw two after this. Yeah. And I don't want to be at seven. Uh, attack the minion. Use the worship action of a hero and then mm -hmm. one action left. Link your app on YouTube. We probably won't su support versus. It's, it doesn't really fit the paradigm right now. Pretty good little game, though. Do you know the shockwave action deals zero plus a mm -hmm. card? Is there a range to that? Would it just Tar be? Target hero is always three. Okay. So three I'll, in line of sight. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll hit this one because I have to. Okay. So zero plus two. All right. So two damage here. Mm hmm. Mm, right here. One, two. And then I get to push you two. Oh, thanks. Just put you <laughs> a little further <laughs> out of here. Okay. And then that's it. All right, that's the end of the round. So, so ready. Then all of our cast spells go to the discard. We're going to draw two cards. We'll ready everything. And the round advances to three, where we get to play to the big old cards. Here's the big boys. Draw two cards. Oof. Okay, and so now we're playing the right way, which is the action cards don't take an action. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is amazing. Can I, does this occupy your space? So like, is this technically, could I put a thing there? Could I stand on that totem? Yeah, I think so. Does it occupy a slot or anything? Let me just read the little section. I, I don't think so. Sky Terry, if you're out there, um, does a totem, can I stand on a totem space? Does it technically, and can I place an illusion on a totem? Can they live in the same spot? The pillars? Yeah, the pillars. Yeah, you can stand on it. And I assume I can place an illusion? Okay. That settles it. And you can remove them by attacking them, by the way. Not that you would. But you could. Not that I would. Oh, man. This is big money moves right here. Making money moves. All right. Let's try this. Um, now, I guess... I'm very excited about what's going to happen here. There are worlds where you could cancel things. Mm, how about that? And so these still start a stack, though, right? The action cards, wouldn't you say? They have to, I right? don't know. That's a good question. Let's look. A hero plays a power card. A hero declares an action or hero skill triggers. I'll create a stack. OK. So I'm going to go first. And you might expect that I'm going to go with 
Habarat. Okay. Is he kind of Kakarot? Probably. Good morning, Morgan, from Australia. 6 a.m. Missed the first two hours. You'll be able to watch it back after we're done. We're also going to be getting into deck building shortly, which I'm really excited about. Okay. Now, this is interesting. Hold on. <laughs> I love watching you just, like, unfold this. This is insane, actually. Okay, I've got two. I've got two ways to do this. This is fascinating. Game is good. Okay, starting here, Habarat. We'll do a skirmish action. One, two, and we'll do an attack. Zero plus. Hold on, hold on. Oh, the skirmish. Yeah, skirmish. That's fine. <laughs> plus two. Take a damage and die or don't, depending on your cards. Yes. That is uh, Kotlik, out Kotlik for the round. Kotlik is gone. Okay, that was the first action. Second, we'll do a move. Okay. One, two, three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, let's do a hurricane strike for two, starting a stack. It's going to deal two damage to target adjacent enemy. I'm going to target here. And then if I move four more hexes, which I have, I can repeat it against a different adjacent target. OK. So it just deals two? Yep. And that's here. Does my armor count? It does, yeah. All right, so I'll take I one. I think it does. And then you would deal two to this guy? Yeah, to that minion, yeah. All right, he gone. I'm going to let him go. <laughs> no. Morgan, they don't. It's one of the best parts. The miniatures are pre-assembled. No building. You don't, you don't have to paint them. They come in the gray, but you can. I saw a lot of people online, they prime it one color, like a white or a gray or a black, and then they'll just literally take a spray paint and do a thin layer of paint across the whole thing. So like all the red models turn red or blue or green or whatever. And then we've got so skirmish, move, play a card. Hmm. Now this is a great question too. It's all great. Oh, I think I've got to just swing. I think I've got to swing here. As much as I want to get that projection out. Um, let's attack. I'm gonna favor the minion. I definitely remember the ability. I wanted that gone. Yeah, so you can take, basically, you can take damage to minions on you. Is that how that works? Any, any minions next to a uh, pillar, I can take the damage here on Thalakali. OK. Does that go through armor? I think the damage is calculated first. Yeah. And then I would take it so the armor wouldn't Let's apply. Let's just attack the minion, then. We'll attack this minion straight up. OK. It's four plus a two flip. It's a three and a zero. I'll take the three, so we'll do seven yeah, to your minion. Yeah, you got him. You got him. <laughs> All right, mine. That's it, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. All right, let's go with... Uh, yeah, these look great when they're painted. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I'm excited about that, too. Tlakali is going to go. Uh, so she's going to... Uh, first things first. Realist? I'm the realist. Uh, she's just going to... Attack uh, here. Okay. So it's a two. You got Akuti, any I've got zero on the armor, and I have no no reactions. Here comes top card. Plus one. So it's going to be three. Three damage. Zero armor. And then I'm going to skirmish. So it's a zero hitting the same model. Yep. You Am got I good? It. Mm hmm. Plus one. Taking one. And then I'm out of deck. Do I shuffle? I think so. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't run into that it. yet. To the rule book. Morgan, I'm on the same page. He says, cool, I don't mind painting, but Marvel Crisis Protocol has put me off building managers for a while. That's so true. Ooh, did you draw two from killing Ooh. my hero? No, I did not. Thank you. I'll do it now. Yep, just shuffle. Oh, cool. Great Thanks, card to draw, too. 
Yeah, MJ, still going. Check it out. Hope everyone is doing well. Upstate New York checking in. Ooh, Keith Bless McNeil you, says, MJ. good afternoon, gentlemen. Late to the stream. Just woke up from my post-Root Canal nap. Ugh. Never been into miniatures. Where can I get the base game? Looks great. Uh, PvP's website, so skyterror.com. They have everything you need. This is a great first game. It's more of a card game than it is a miniatures game. They're pre-assembled. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. Yeah, playskyterror.com is where you go for that. And so we've got, for the U.S. at least, we are the sole source, our subscription for future models. So instead of pre-ordering and all of that, just start a subscription if you want to get those releases uh, in the U.S. And then everything else you can buy on the SkyTerror site. They distribute to the U.S. They, so they can handle all of that. They're shipping from different centers, so you're fine. And they're still shipping. Yeah. So this is another great game. Uh, anything painting right now, I feel like people stuck at home, is a, it's a great time. You get this all painted up, oh, it's going to look good. Yep. Uh, so I skirmished, I attacked, and then I'm just going to move. And we're going to move. I can move on top of that? I think so. You can move on top of the control. I think so. I think so. Well, I mean, minions can be on it, so I assume anything can be on it. Yeah, surely. All bets are off. All right. You're up. Europe. Okay. This is America. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Sky Terror says yes. Daniel says no. I have a feeling Daniel's wrong. <laughs> I'm not on the tower, Daniel. I'm on the control point. This is going to be amazing. I can't wait to do what I'm going to do in a minute. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's go. Let's go, Akuti. It's time. It's time to make some magic happen here. What is Predict 2? Does that look at the top two? I have no idea. I think it is. It's not even on my card. Oh, there it is. Look at the top X cards of your deck and place any number of them on your discard pile or back on top of your deck in any order. It's pretty good. And she's got a bunch of... Uh, A9, what do you mean by strip dynamics? All right. Well. First action, let's worship with a cutie. All right. That's an action. It'll, it'll create a stack if you're interested. I'm not interested. I'm just going to put a... I'm going to put one of these sweet tokens down. They They're, have the, like, faded sides as well. Are they on the back? Yeah. Where's a cutie? This thing? No. Yeah, they're not they're not in the back of yeah, this. Here you can have these two. They got the cardboard. I'm yeah. just gonna they have the black and white versions on the there's color in black and mm -hmm. white to represent your illusions. I mean but you do you. This works for me. One illusion. I guess it might matter whose it is. Alright, here we go. It really doesn't, but we'll figure it out. Boom. Projected. Alright, second action. Do that. Maybe I should dump that on your tower. On your pillar. Pillar. One, two, three. I could still do that. Let's do that. I'll put the illusion there. Just really make a master stack. All right, then second action. Let's declare an attack. And I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to declare an attack on that minion. All right, I have a reaction. Go for it. Safeguard. Adjacent friendly minions can't be damaged. Hmm. Ching. Sort <laughs> <laughs> of picture that shield and sword doing, you know? Okay. Oh, apparently you can only place illusions in an empty hex. Oh, right. That makes sense. Don't mind the card I just played. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, what's the so illusion do? Here, it's a projected hero now. So anything that can see this of the desert people are considered projected heroes, and so they now have special abilities. Cool. So like, I have plus one armor to all projected heroes, and then when a projected hero damages an enemy minion with an attack action, you may move them one hex. Mm, I just shut that down. You might have potentially, unless you can cancel it. I can, but how? 
There's a couple of options. Yeah, I like this too much. So I'm going to try to dismiss that. Interesting, interesting. Well, I'm going to go ahead and play a safeguard on top of it. Hmm, okay. So a double safeguard. Yep. Well. This is cool. This stack's really cool. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, you're good. I think Titan Cliff, so people can see it. All right, so the first safeguard triggers. Adjacent friendly minions can't be damaged. I'm going to put it under Tlakali so that I remember it's there. Then you dismiss. Dismiss is going to dismiss my safeguard. Mm-hmm. So it's going to go away. And then minions can't be damaged. So let's see, declared an attack. You here. worshipped, right? I worshipped first. Then we declared the attack uh, here. Is that right? Either, either one. And safeguards. Yeah, a reaction. So I attack the minion here. I safeguarded it. Safeguard. So minions can't be damaged. And then. When she resolves an attack action, she may deal one plus damage to an enemy minion adjacent to her illusion. So that's going to go away. Do go ahead and probably flip for the attack action anyway, even though they can't be damaged. I probably, probably have to resolve yeah. it. So plus one resolved. And then third action. Let's go. Oof. Third action will go control. And that's it. Project, attack, control. What more do you need? Oh boy. Okay. Um, Let's get that safeguard out of here. <laughs> Garbage. Garbage. There's a, a structure to this that would be very good for me, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the right call. I'm going to go with Yami. Wah! Yeah. I love Yami. Just the, the texture of everything happening there. <laughs> Every time I see it sweeping. Yeah, it's like flame like. All right. So, first thing I'm going to do. Goody, we do not sell the core set on our website. We, we do all of the future expansions through our subscription. Uh, but the core set is available at playskytier.com. Ships worldwide. I'm going to link to it. $100 or more free shipping. I just linked to it. I realized I could have been doing that this whole time. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go with Yami. She's going to skirmish. So she's going to bounce here. I'm going to hit the bear. Bear on. Plus one. One armor. Nothing. Then she's going to move. I'm going to go one, two, three, and it's going to remove this minion. Yep. Because that's how she rolls. Then I'm going to play. It doesn't cost me an action. It does not cost you an action, no. So tell me the time of this. Look at Dragon Punch. Cost three. Uh, the caster's attack actions do not require a target and hit all enemies in the AoE instead. So it's psh, mm -hmm. flaming out. So it's two and three. So then you take an attack action. So I attack first and play this as the action? No, I think you just play this, and then for the rest of the turn, your attack actions do not okay, require cool. a target. So I'm going to play this. You can react to it, technically. Yeah. Um... Hopefully I drew out your cancel, cancel abilities. Mm, that's hilarious. Uh, you're good. Okay. No issue. So then, uh, oh, Yami's ability is one plus. So technically, it's the top card of my deck as well. Okay. It's the damage. It you does. got it. Yeah. So if you had a minus one, you wouldn't kill the minion. Yeah. That's something. Um, so then she's going to dragon punch. So it's going to be this space and this space, all enemies in it. Take the attack and take the damage. Nice. So it's a two plus the top card. You got any reactions? Mm, nope. All right. Flipping. So it's a three total. All right, so two to the bear, and then one here. Yep, and then one and to this one guy. There. Yep. Nice. She's the old minion controller. That is that her ultimate? Uh, nope. That's just a three cost Oof. fire card. Fire. The dragon punch. Uh, hey, Rex, glad to have you here. That's awesome. Uh, okay, uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Rex says, I was just watching your Netrunner videos, then saw this stream. Just fun to watch y'all play. 
Glad, glad you enjoy. Okay. Now what? I don't like all those minions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but do I have anything to do about it? It is the question. It is. It is indeed. I guess you, you may as well use, you know, use the cards you've got, right? <laughs> I've been living by that. Some people would say. So plus one skirmish. I can get the AoE, so that's not really enough to matter. How do I clear out these minions? They've got to go. Right? And predict two, do we have predict on here somewhere? Yeah, you look at the top two, and you can put them back in any order or discard any number of them. Okay. So you can stack the deck, so to speak. All right, well, let's start with presence. Presence says the caster contributes one extra to control this turn, and I get to predict two. Nice. You start a stack if you want to mess with it. I don't. Pass. Okay, so let's look at the top two, and I only have two left. So I can discard any ones that I want, and I can leave these on top. I'll discard this one. Okay. Put this one on top. Seems good. Yeah. All right, and then first action. Skirmish. So here, and then flip on the skirmish. It's going to be plus two. Nice. So two damage to you. I have one armor. Does it count? Yeah. So taking one. Taking one. Down to 11 on Yami. Oh, I need to put that in his. One presence attaches to the card. Ding. I love this mana system, ultimately. Yeah, it's very clean. Everything about this is... It basically feels as uh, minimal or like as streamlined as possible without taking away from the actual game itself. It's very cool. Okay, and then second action, let's go ahead and attack uh, Scythe Lady. Yami. Three plus one is minus one, so two. I have one armor, so I'll take one. Yeah. And then we've got decisions to make. Many, many decisions. <laughs> Nameless Space Trash. Uh, how difficult is this game to learn for someone who doesn't play many card or board games? would like to get this to play with my wife, but worried she would be overwhelmed. I think she can totally handle it. I, I obviously don't know your wife, but um, the characters have sides on them that don't have their abilities. I think that's a really good place to start. If, if you're interested in miniature games at all, this is going to be a really great start because it's just not... It's a grid-based system. There's no measuring. Everything moves three. Everything's range three. It's very streamlined. I think it's great for new people to the hobby. Okay. Well, I think um, I'm going to have to make some decisions. I love the art on this. Uh, yeah, presence. presence. Oh, that needs to go in the. That should be shuffled in the shuffle ruski. Miss. So you currently got four control after that fire breath. Just from the minions. It's my big move. Five with the thing. I'd be at two. You could just push that all the way in. Push um, one all the way in? That tower. I'm going to move here. One, two, three. Mm, here. Let's do that. One, two, three. Yeah. Nice. All right. And then it's over to you. Going outsider. Name of Space Trash, how difficult is this game to learn for someone who doesn't play many card or board games? Would like to get at my wife, but play with my wife, but worried she'd be overwhelmed. Were you, Honestly, I think it's on the easier spectrum. Were you were you so focused you didn't hear me answering that question? Oh, did you? That's amazing. <laughs> That's so good. So now you get it twice. What do you say? I, I said I thought it was great. They have the, the blank character sides. Yeah. Um, and then ultimately, like because it's a grid-based system, everything's range three. It's very streamlined. Um, so I think there's ways to play it, even if you reduce it down to like two characters at first, to just really make it simple. Yeah. Um, 
So now I have to choose. You gotta choose to choose, man. I will choose. I'm gonna <laughs> see if I can bury this bear. You know what I mean? Bear's got 12 health, one armor. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna skirmish. So he's gonna go one, and then flip the top card. Bring it on. Plus two. Take one. Because he got armor. And then I'll go ahead and move away so that you have to work to get to me. Uh, then I'm going to play some cards. <laughs> I should have done that first. Um, brutal pre Precision. This caster gets plus two attack. You got it. Uh, crippling Precision is a reaction to this. Target hero gets plus one attack when the damaged enemy hero with an attack or skirmish action applies slow to that enemy. Nice, okay. Um, so now I'm just at plus three. Plus three, yeah. And then I'll shoot you. Three plus three is six, but I get two cards. Six plus two cards. Choose one. Nine. I'll choose the three. Take so eight. nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I will commit a card under Sakoshi. This guy? Uh, I'm c uh, leading with a card under Sakoshi. I skirmish, attack, Kip. and then. And you're out of cards? Commit. And I'm out of cards. All right. Nice. So then we go to the control points. Let's hit it. I have two heroes in line of sight. You have one. Mm -hmm. I have one minion, you have two. So it looks like three to three. You have a card though, right? I do have a card. Gonna contribute three to it. Whoosh. So six to three. So let's first remove one, two minions, and mm -hmm. then a third damage would go to a tower in, within three, but I do not have that. Thank you. So now we'll move it three spaces. Recover. <laughs> Back to the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Then we'll go to number two. You have full reign here. Looks like you have four, five to my zero. Yep. So I have no minions to lose. And then you get to push the tower up to five. One, two, three, four. It's Boom. adjacent. Then all these snap. Yep. Two, snap, three, snap. Four. And then we each spawn two. Get my two wolves. Oh, here. we didn't spawn over here. Oh, yeah, we need to do that. Uh, one's got to go on, and then you've got a hero coming back in, so I'll put one here. I'll put her over here. All right. Then we get two over and here. Then we spawn over there. Let's get these. And I have to do champions. These two spots. One, and then one here. Yeah! And then we go to the middle. Um, I've got one for the bear, and then. I've got presence for plus one control, so I'm currently at two in the oh, middle. That needs to snap two as well. Whee! Uh, I committed a card, so I have a champion and a plus one, so I'm also at two. So we push, and I think he stays there, right? I think he just, yeah, stays there. Just hovers. Winner of the lead. Case of a tie, the second player places first. Prayers without a tower. Do not spawn minions, I've got a tower. And then let's see what happens. Yeah, if I don't know what happens if the outsider is tied. Probably nothing. I think it's just a push. Yeah. Let's just leave it there. Once it's over, leave the outsider where it is. So I assume that that, that would work. Yep. Okay. And uh, then we draw two cards. Yep. I'm going to get rid of all these cards. Wee wee. Hope they're good. Oof. And then, do we spawn our heroes when this moves up to four? Yeah, then we'll move it up to four, and then our heroes will come back in in a space that they can. And this is going to be 18 health. So in one of these original spaces. Mm-hmm. Four around the nexus, yeah. Let's go here. Okay. I think that's right, yeah? Did we spawn it all? I've made my choices. I think we have made our choices. We've made yeah. our choices. Okay. Oh my goodness, that's a card? All right, well, get ready to party. Aaron Clark saying, if I'm going to get an expansion, I'll need to do research on the play style of each color. Have you guys played enough to know how each play? Also, any restrictions on deck building, team building? Not quite yet, but I think over the next day or so, we will. We'll so, dive into that kind of right after this. So yeah. We'll look at so the next step, I think, is we're both going to grab an expansion and open it up and show what's in the expansion and then also deck build with it. So that'll be two of them immediately off the cuff that you get to kind of see. 
and then tomorrow we'll probably do the same thing. So you'll get to see all four, and then we'll probably hit Outsiders by the time we get to Wednesday. Okay, uh, you're first, right? I am first. You get the honor and the privilege. It is such a such an honor. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a good little scrum we got going on. I like mm. that we're playing without the alt wing conditions this round. Oh wow! How fascinating is that? Okay, I get this. I understand more than I ever have here. It's clicking, right? Yeah. You're going to be ferocious in a game with you. I'm a little terrified. Eventually, we'll get there. OK, so that's not relevant. This is not relevant. Ancient enemy adjacent. So I've really got, she may deal one damage. OK. Enemy adjacent. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting. I think we keep the pressure on there, honestly. Over here? Yeah. Yeah, it flipped, didn't it? Yeah. It's because you knocked out That's one of my guys That's how Dota goes, man. It's so yeah. good. It's so good. Uh, but you got pressure now over here, so I'm, I'm trying to catch up. Um, oh, apparently the bear should have slow, because I hit you with that attack. Right on, yeah. It gives a little true. bunny. I'm going to put it there so we remember. Or actually, it's the snail token. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> Nothing so slow like a rabbit. Yeah, very slow. <laughs> okay, so let's start with a worship action. Okay. We'll move here. I think I can spawn it on me and then move it three, or I can move it in place if I'm not mistaken. It's not going to matter either way. I'm going to go one, two, three. <laughs> okay, got it. Oh no, my minions. Then the second action, we're going to attack. One, two, three, attack this minion here. Yep. Raid number four. Yeah. Uh, any response there? Mm -mm. Make sure I don't have anything weird. Nope. So it's going to do plus one to that minion. Got him. Dead. And then uh, if I resolve an attack action, I can immediately deal one plus to an enemy minion adjacent to my illusion. So I'll try to hit the other one. One plus zero is one. You got it. Well, that seems good. And then last action. We'll go here. Nice. Get in the bubble. All right, let's do this. Hmm. Anyone in threat range? Not really. But I don't want Yami to get any closer. <laughs> yeah, Shiny D9. Nice minis indeed on Twitch. Yeah, they're really great, particularly because I don't have to assemble them. <laughs> that's that's the real magic. You wanna? We can hey, we can take five right now, and then yeah, because I, I was gonna wait to take five till after the game. And then we could come back and open expansions, but I feel like we can come back, finish the game, open an expansion immediately. Let's do that. We'll, Let's all right, take so, a quick break. Yeah, we're going to take a quick... I'm uh, too excited. I've got to go to the bathroom. Five-minute break. When we get back, it's going to be my turn. We're going to resolve this game. Then the next step for us is going to be opening up an expansion each, then actually each having a full core set, doing deck full building. deck building, and getting that game going. So stick with us. Uh, it's been great so far. I hope you guys are enjoying it, and we'll be back right after the break.
everyone, and welcome back. We just took a quick break. We're going to be finishing our first game here on the stream this week for Sky Tear, and then I'm super pumped because we're going to be each adding an expansion to our, our collections and building decks and stuff, and I can't wait to watch Steven go through that process <laughs> for the first time because that was the moment that really sealed it for me for this game. The thing that I love right now so far that we've, we've witnessed, I've, I've taken one action here so far this turn, is that... You push this tower in, I came over to defend it, and I'm starting to push that back in your direction. But meantime, this tower is now getting pushed in. It feels just, just like, like a MOBA. Dota. Just like it. All right. Let me think about what I was going to do. I missed my one, uh, they call it ganking in the business, opportunity over here with that minus one. And so like in a game of Dota, like if you miss on those, it, it has a tremendously bad effect on the momentum. So it makes a lot of sense that uh, that's how that went. Hmm. Dragon Soul 101. I've got a little half pint of Native Amber Coop. And I think Zach's on the blonde. I am on the blonde. I went on the lighter side. I usually get that territory reserve. It's basically like drinking syrup. Heavy. Yeah, a little too heavy for... Well, depends on who you are, I guess. Hmm. Okay, ready to dive in? Yeah. Guys, let's go. I gotta put this bear to rest. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go with Yami. Yami. She's going to move. Three. Then she's going to attack the bear. Okay. I think I have a reaction. Hit me with it. How much damage are you doing? Michael, that's awesome. He says, just popped in to say hi. His Marvel Cosmic Wars and tokens arrived today. They arrived quickly and are as awesome as he hoped. Really Very appreciate cool. that. So you currently have a two. Is there anything I'm missing over there that, that matters? Nope. Did you skirmish in there or did you just move? I haven't skirmished. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll do a thing, I think. You have two cards in hand? Yep. I think I can do this. Olderic, so, uh schedule Sky Terror Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then Epic Duel, Star Wars Epic Duels on Thursday, which I'm excited about, and Arkham on Friday. Madman. All right, so on the stack, Zach. Yep. Can I... The active player does a thing. So basically, can I, like, play a card here in reaction to your attack? It'd be her casting a spell. I think so. I think so, right? Is that how that works? As long as you can interact with whatever's being interacted with. Mm-hmm. Uh, heroes can play action cards only during their activation. The active player can play reaction power cards any time after an effect is generated or resolved. So it doesn't even have to be the adjacent yep. here. All right, so let's try it. I'm going to try to play uh, Akuti's ultimate here. Ooh. Word of Nupton. I'm not going to get a good part of the effect, unfortunately. Uh, but it's three mana, and it says heal each friendly hero in her line of sight three hit points. So that would be the bear. And then you have a chance to respond. Mm. Okay, I'll add to the stack. I'm going to play Lifesteal. When the caster damages an enemy within a... Nope, not doing it. Minor resolve first. I don't <laughs> want to... I, the chain is a good. Uh, I'll pass. Okay. So this successfully goes. We're going to heal Bear Man. How many? Three. Okay. So and then I guess she's six. also in her own line of sight. Heal each friendly hero in her line of sight. Usually in this game that means themselves as well. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. So we're up to six. All right. So now I'm attacking with a two. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Two plus two for four. Minus one is three. Clutch heal. Down to two. Hmm. Uh, down to three. I gained three and lost three. Got you. Um, then I'm going to skirmish. You get. So if it's a three, I'm just the luckiest boy in the yeah, universe. I mean, yeah, you deserve it. Oh, it's a three. That's <laughs> it's still minus one, so I'll take two. Okay, nice. I was going to say, both <laughs> both things that could go my way in terms of off the top of the deck did go my way. That's ridiculous. Uh, let's go two here. Okay. So it just barely made it out alive, huh? Is that a bear joke? <laughs> <laughs> I've got this slow. What a bummer. That's fine. You can come get Sakashi. 
I mean, at this point, I'm just kind of a sacrificial bear. I'm a sacrificial lamb, sacrificial bear. I mean, it's basically, I assume you don't want to miss this turn with the bear, though. Oh, this is cool. Okay. Yeah, let's go. So, bear, bear moments. Um, let's shape shift. You going with the bear? Yeah. I failed. <laughs> you have failed in the task that is given to you. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> then we'll do a skirmish. We'll mm. go one, two. And now I've got some cool stackies here. Plus one skirmish damage for each friendly shapeshifted hero within three, so one. And then Gorjoff, friendly shapeshifted heroes within three get plus one skirmish damage. Is he within three even though the bubble's there? Oh, no. Yeah, within. Within is good. It doesn't say target. I think, With, I, think, I think you're good. Within three hexes, yeah, not target hero. So that's plus one. So I've got plus two on my skirmish damage. So two plus zero. Take two. Miller Time says, I can't stand these bear jokes. <laughs> I can't bear them. Yeah, he said, I can't bear these jokes. That's what it was. That's right. Okay. Now do we go ahead and just... We just go for it, right? We just attack. Come and get it. And then we die in the process. Yep. How are you going to die? You're going to attack me. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that, but you're going to die. Mean, I thought you pro- meant you were going to die the eventual process. process. I was yeah, like, well, yeah, how does that process. work? And then I could also try to make it annoying for you, but you're at 11. I'm going to be doing three, so I'll probably do like one, three to four damage. It's possible we could take you out of the round. You're about to draw two. Ugh. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Do we just run away? He bravely ran away, away. <laughs> My Python. Good movie. Um, let's see, one, two, three, you do move, skirmish could potentially get it done, move, attack, but then you're, you're ready for action on me. Oh, what to do? You just got dunked on. There's decisions here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we're just going to attack. It's crazy how much is going on for such a simple game. It's awesome. Man, if you had heroes clumped together, I could really do some magic here. I have not made that mistake. I think you got me with that last time. I was displeased. Yeah. All right, let's just attack. With the bear? Yeah, bear on you. Da bears. Three plus a thing. Do you have any things? Nope. You skirmished. You're attacking. What do you got? I'm not flipping. You're flipping. Ooh, how about five? All right. No armor. Down to six health. That's right. Let's just get it. It goes faster than you want it to. So shape shift, so warship action, skirmish, and attack. So okay. gold yarn is gone. And does your slow go away? It does. All statuses go away at the end when you exhaust. All right, it's time to bury some bears. <laughs> to bury them. I would like to direct you to Militarium's comment. I cannot bear these jokes. You guys got any questions about the game? Any thoughts you'd like to share? I'll be happy to read them. Leaprock86, generally miss you live, but thanks for all the videos keeping us sane during these times. You guys are great, and your content is helping massively. Thank you very much. That means everything to us. Appreciate that. It's a big, big part of why we're doing this. That's awesome. Aaron Clark on Arkham. I think we're going to retry that last scenario from uh, Forgotten Age. See if we can do it better because we know we can. And apparently that's a big part of the game. We know the truth. Hmm. We really want to start start Carcosa, but it's a lot of products to buy. We should really do Circle Unknown because we've got the packs or Dream Eaters. We gotta we gotta figure out what we can actually get. Maybe that's what we'll do after we win that scenario. Maybe. Ugh. How do you want it to go down?
You've already gone with the bear. Gone so with the, the bear. only value in going after the bear first is that I get to draw cards. Yeah, that's true. Because he won't come in, and the fifth round will end, and we'll see where we are. Yeah, I'm going to go with Sakashi, my homeboy. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to play Lifesteal. When the caster damages an enemy with an attack or skirmish action, the caster heals for that amount of damage. Got any reactions? I might. And it says target uh, hero mm -hmm. gains life steal. Hmm. Look at that molten lava armor. When the caster damages an enemy with an attack or a skin reaction, the caster heals for the amount of damage dealt. Okay, give me just a second here. Huh. So, if I've got a card that says change the target of an effect to a new legal target, who would be a new legal target? Skychair, this one may be for you guys. I, I think if you can tell me. You could choose any of my casters. So this is the card we're looking at is Redirect. It says, target an effect on the stack played by target hero. Change a target of the effect with a new legal target. It oh. may be that there's no legal target. It also might be that that would have to be under the stack. Well, it's going to target the effect on the stack. So it's going to resolve and target this. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Because you're not targeting a hero, you're targeting the caster itself. They may not be a Scott new target. says there must be the word okay. target. Okay, cool, the cool, cool. That's what I need. It would be crazy. If you could move that to you. Oh, my goodness. So let's try a... Dismissed. Does anybody even have that symbol that I could use? Uh, played by target enemy hero. No. No, I'm already manned out. Oh, wait, I've got four. Doesn't count. All right, I can't do anything about that. Yes. It goes. All right, so now, it's... correct me if I'm wrong, though, you're only going to be able to do one. Well, you'll skirmish and then do the thing. Yeah, I got you. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right, so. Life steal ahoy. Let's skirmish here. Mm -hmm. The bear. Plus zero. Don't work. Nothing. <laughs> then I'll attack. Do you uh, want to move at all? Two moves? Um, oh, cool, Sterling. That makes sense. So I could change the target of the attack whenever you do go to attack, if I had the right. I can't play it anyway, but that's really cool. That's really nice. Target an effect on the stack. I guess attacking is an effect on the stack. Yeah. Whoa! My mind is going to keep getting blown. Mm. I'm going to shoot here. Oh, nice. You count all the damage done no matter the actual hit point that I lose. So if you do five to the bear, you would still heal five, even though I only take one. Nice. Well, that's good to know. That might yeah. change my decision. Yeah. Worthwhile. Now I'm still going to shoot here. So I have three plus two cards coming here. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Flipping two cards. Crippling precision is the best one, so it's plus two, going to be five damage. Five damage. And I heal one, five. Two, three, four, five. Little ten damage swing is my kind of Wish I had that plus one armor, but my projection is over here doing nothing. All right, so I skirmished, attacked, I played the card that doesn't cost me an action, and I get one more action. One more action. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Let's go one, two, three. Okay, I'm trying to get it done. I like winning. Uh, I might just have to to allow that one to happen. It's horrible. <laughs> okay, so you've gone here and here. So you're gonna go with this model. Both my, my greens. And yeah, this model. Okay. So, and you've got plenty of health over there. Yeah. Get a little, a little low in health over here. Mm hmm. Except for with Homeboy. 
Okay, let's look at it. Where do you go? What do you do? We can just keep attacking into the nothingness. Not exactly what I'm feeling is the most effective option there. No. I've got a lot of these, these cards that really don't help me. That sounds fun. Yeah, somebody needs to come in here and build the deck already. I know. Oh my gosh. You're going to love I'm telling you, we're going to get that deck built and you're going to love it. Within three hexes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. All right. So I've got... I'm in the tank. Hard. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'm like, I've got two, two heroes sitting there in the Roshan bubble. This is just a disaster. Uh-huh. I agree. I don't think you should do anything about it, though. I mean, i got to try to do something. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, I, do I have a way to move you? I feel like I had a way to move you. When my hero damage an enemy minion with an attack, I can move my hero one hex. That isn't going to do it. Um... One, two, three. You're not in the, yeah, so I could take an attack there. One, two, three. So I could stay put here and actually do some, do some magic. You've got the magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's try it. Let's do some damage control here. Um, let's go skirmish. Attack, control. Okay, so skirmish. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Let's not do that. Let's go attack, control, shape shift. Now we're talking. All right, so attack here. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. This guy. Any uh, stackable moments there? Nope. All right, one, two, three. Plus one. That's one dead minion. You got him. See ya. Then we'll go ahead and put one down for control. Nice. Little leadership. And then we will shape shift and exhaust to get him in bird mode for next turn. All right. That's a special shape shift roll. So on your la really on your last action, you can shape shift and it won't clear the shape shifting token, from what I understand. All right, mine. Yep. Let's go with Slock Holly. This feels exactly like when I'm I'm in my base and I'm losing. And then but you're here, like every you can pop out and just start doing things immediately, whereas your heroes have to spawn and get to the fight. We have to work work more. And I'm really excited to play the three like the other side mm. of the map. That's what I'm ready, ready for. It's so good. That's classic Dota, man. All right, Slock Holly. Let's go move. One, two, three. Oh, coming into the Thunderdome, huh? Uh yeah, for sure. Uh, going to attack here. So it's a two plus the top card. Two plus the top card. You've got an attack here. Hold on. Is it, you have ranged? Yep. I could. I guess I could redirect that to the bear. Oh, no, wait. I don't have any uh, any money. I'm all out of mana. Techn is that within? Well, I just don't have any money to cast that it. That has money. Oh. And you're technically within two of me. No, it's going to be target, uh, okay. played by target hero. So I can't target that hero. That's right. All right. Am I good? Yeah, bring it on. Give me that plus three, though. Oh, yeah. Seriously? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I'm gone. Uh, so it's five, yeah. And then I draw two off of that, right? Uh huh. Well, that's Let's good. see what we get. Wow. How many plus threes are in there? Apparently a lot. Are you like stacked? Well, I went through my deck. What so does that mean? there's two signature cards. <laughs> um, three, three of my signature cards are in my, my discard pile. Okay. That's, that's the only threes in here, so that I that are in my discard pile. Fortunate. Um, then I will skirmish. Punch the bear. Yeah. Looks good. You have one armor, right? Yeah. Plus two. Yeah. Draw two more. Bear gone. Where's bear mode? Yeah. 
Okay, I've got a yeah, lot of work so to do, I guess. It's one and eight is okay. the plus three. That's not terrible. Not terrible. Sky Terror. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Fortunate. But it was very, very fortunate. Let's see. One, two, three. So I can actually. So is that attack and then skirmish? And you got. What did I you move? Attacked, skirmish. And skirmish. Okay. Mm -hmm. So over to me. All right. So now it's all Haburat. And I've got so much catching up to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three. You got one on Roshan. You got nothing control here. And then Just, you got this one left to go? Yep. Okay, so you can step in if you want. That's not bad. Okay, how do we get through this? One, two, three, one, two, and then attack. I probably need to bet on this. If I'm a betting man, now's the time to bet. Uh, Tor asking, will the heroes come back? So they won't, they won't come back next round, technically. This would actually be one over. Mm -hmm. Because when a hero goes off the board, they have to miss an activation, basically. So... Steven already activated with both those characters, so they'll be pushed down to round six, technically. One, two, three. So, you know, worst case, I mean, you step in there, control card. You've got a bunch of cards now, so you can yeah. control that. One, two, three, one, two. You can also come control this a bunch. And then you do damage, and then you move, right? Yeah. So that'll buy me one turn. Mm. Is there any way I can prevent one, two, three, one, two, three, five, one, two? Yeah, yeah. Mark. Probably. And then does somebody? Oh yeah, I need to put him back on the board. So I'll have two heroes to your four. Mm-hmm. Unless I knock a bunch of things out. Can I do, what's he at? 11? That two, five heal was important. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, 11. So I could potentially do 10, 9, 8 if I was lucky. And then four plus three is seven. That's not enough. And I don't have the blue symbol, unfortunately. All right, so let's see. You can also come over here and just control and shore that up. Does she have armor? Yeah, one armor. Her. Mm hmm. Yep. See, that's a, that's a good move, too. One, two, three, attack, and then control. You gotta give it all up. It's awful. All right, let's go um, one, two, three. Let's go and attack four plus two cards. I'll take a plus zero, <laughs> take four. Armor doesn't count? Don't you? It does, yeah. Okay. So you take three. Armor okay. counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll do uh, control. Nice. Going to get that outsider. Well, so you can step in here and prevent that. But that means you don't come over here and stop this. So you kind of got to decide. Because over here, I'm dropping a three control. Blunts be that entirely. I lose a minion actually. But I'm so you have two minions over here, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm up two three. minions and a caster. So 
So I'm up three, four, because I have an extra caster. Mm -hmm. But you have a face down card. Mm -hmm. So I might only be up one. You might only be up one, yeah. But I could come over and make sure that I'm up yeah. by a whole lot. 100%. One hundo. Lapruck86, I'm loving the mobile to board game thing going on. The lane pushing feels really authentic in this one particularly. I completely agree. That's it's the one that actually it actually feels like the vibe. Like this feels like what I love about Dota and League of Legends and all of that. Uh, none none of the other ones have done that so far that I'm aware of. Let's do this. Move. Okay. Skirmish. Ah. Commit. All righty. Just make my bed. All right. So then we'll go over to the the stuff. The stuff. So I've got three to your zero. Yep. No control. So you have no minions to lose. We'll go one, two, three. And then we'll spawn two each. One has to go Deet. there. We'll put one in the corner. Deet. Deet. I guess I'll put one here. That's probably better. OK, there's that. And then we'll go over here. I've got one, two, three, four, five on control points. And I've got five minions, three heroes, and Eight, a plus three. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven <laughs> minus five is six. So we'll do six to minions. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So four towers and two minions gone. It can't push any further. And then we each get to spawn two more minions back. So one here. I'll go one here. One here. And I can't go in that spot. So I have to go one layer out now. So this will be my minion over here. OK. Makes sense to me. We'll put it on its little uh, upside downsies. <laughs> I like that. Zach That's minion. really funny. And then we go to the outsider. We each got one. I do have a card there. So I've got a plus two. You get it. So then we spawn the outsider in any conceivable way. Let's see what the outsider abilities are. Sky, Sky Terror says, one more damage, and it was a good game for sure. Yeah. OK. Target friendly hero takes a warship action. That's good. If I can target. OK. What? Deal zero plus piercing damage target hero and push them two hexes. Draw a power card. Target friendly healer takes a warship action, or I can just take an attack and a skirmish. Hmm. Where do I want you pushed, though, is the question. All right, where are we spawning? I feel like this is really important. Yeah, I tried to place my heroes where you couldn't get, like, in between. Well, there's no, there's no like, AoE or anything. So... Well, just for, like, line of, go, line of sight purposes. I can either go here, and in that case, I can hit any of these guys with within three. Technically, this isn't cover, right? He's got cover. Do I have a friendly next to him? No, I do not. OK, so I could do that. Does she, he's the one that doesn't have any armor, right? Yeah. Sakashi. Yeah, let's try that. So Aaron, to win without the win conditions, you have to knock down one of your opponent's towers, which is these five pillars standing here. And then once that's destroyed, you can move the, uh, what's this, the control point. Uh, once it moves next to their nexus, and you do, you'll do five damage to that as well, and then you win the game. But once their tower's down, they don't get to spawn in minions there anymore. Okay. So first, let's take an attack. First action on Sakashi there. It's going to be three plus a. He's not in. Yeah. Okay. Three plus three. Woo! Take six. Okay. Sakashi will be going first. <laughs> then. Worship action. That might be worth doing. You can move through my illusions, right? Yeah. They just ghosts. And I can't move through your things. My heroes? One, two, 
But I yeah. can't take a move action with the Outsider, which is nice. Really? I think so. Make sure. It, it can't move. That's it. Bottom. Cannot move. Yeah. All right, there you go. That would be crazy. That'd be cool. I'm sure there will be outsiders that move. Cannot move, and then skirmish says move, right? So that would be, that would be a no move to you. Okay, let's instill. Let's draw a power card. Mm-hmm. And then, and have we done the draw two yet? We haven't yet. No, it's still resolving the outsider. And then we'll do a uh, shockwave here. Zero plus piercing damage to uh, witch doctor. Zero damage, but we will push you two. One, two. Is that right? You just put me right out of the lane if you want. That work. That works for me. Okay, my menu's off the board. All right, outsider resolved, and then it stays in play. Yeah. Yep. We draw two cards, and then uh, we go up to the next round. Discard all power cards from their hero cards. See ya. Akuti. Everything readies. Bear is out. Then we go up to five on the round counter. Akuti is out. Ready, everything is exhausted, and go to five. Woo! Spawn any defeated heroes. Yeah, so Aaron Clark, we're going we're gonna to end it at... Uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> Colby. We're going to end it after this round five. I think you just yeah. kind of see, see where get the, the chips bubble. lay. Yeah. I don't like my odds, but I'm there. Okay. There's that. And then... I will go first. Crazy. <laughs> because I have two things. Yeah, knocking two of your dudes out <clears throat> is nuts. <laughs> Left right. I'm not sure I'd play without the wing conditions personally. That seems exhausting. Yeah, yeah we, just, like, we just wanted to have as much time to like explore the game as we could. Yeah, because one of our early stream games ended on like turn two before we even got to the big turn. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there are options here. Okay, I think that's right. And then we've got this guy too, so I need to keep that in mind. And does he have, no, see, yeah, the deck building is killing me. <laughs> I mean, I love it. I, You're I gonna love wait. it. I can't wait to get there. I cannot wait to get there. Okay. Apparently, on the three lane battlefield on the other side, mm -hmm. there are no alternate winning conditions. Whoa. Really? It's a classic Dodo. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go with uh, Korjoff. Kordoff is going to go when he activates, it gets fast because he's shifted. He's an eagle thing. So first action, let's move. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, Oh, four. actually, you know what? Your first action is a move, right? Yeah. I can react to that. To declare it. Uh, to La Kali. No. Kaltik. Kotlik. This guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, they could both do it, actually. I'm going to do it with Ta Kali. OK. Crawling Darkness. Uh, apply disarm and slow to the target enemy hero. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see if I can mess with you. <laughs> you can. One speed, half damage. Volantra, yeah, this is the first game. As Parker said, this is a. We're really diving deep. We also didn't play with the alternate wing conditions. So it's uh, slower, and we've been answering a ton of questions and kind of walking through everything for everyone watching that's new to the game. Okay. How much health do we have here? That's eleven. That's this guy. Oh, he got respawned. That's the new person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the eleven. Yeah. Okay. She's the one trying to crawl your darkness. <laughs> She's gonna get it. <laughs> I don't think I have anything there. All right. Yeah. You got it. So slow and disarm. Slow goes away. So the, I'm guessing that cancels. So You're I fast. go to normal mm -hmm. and then disarm. My sword is broken. I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't want to die. Just want to ride my motorcycle. One, two, three. 
All right, now what? I gotta take that move. No, I don't want it. <laughs> now it's reduced. <laughs> I'm trapped. I can't get where I want. I'm just gonna have to sit here and. How cool is that though? Wreck. Uh, That's good interactions. Wreck, homegirl. One, two, three. Ugly. All right. My move is going to be nowhere. Actually, you know what? Let's go. Oh. What's look, up? Look at that white line. Oh, uh, you can't do it? So I have to do it with this guy instead. Okay, that's fine. That's hilarious. <laughs> I would never have seen that white line. Yeah. Then I guess. Thanks for that, Sterling. Let's go. Let's see here. One, two, one, two, three. That still wouldn't count. Skirmish two. Ugh. That creeping darkness wrecks. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. I think I just go here. Can't really get anywhere that matters. Now, I don't really care, but technically, it, I don't think that's even a space. No. Oh. I think I may have trapped you. Is that true? You, yeah, you can walk around true. this way. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. One, two, three. <laughs> I guess that's interesting. So that isn't a. That's, that's your little spawn like the point. Nexus. That's, yeah. that's where your little things will go once I. Nice. Break through. Okay, then we'll do um, an attack. So four plus a card, and it's no armor. So six damage. Wow. You're almost on the turn I had earlier when I was able to knock a couple out in Close. the same time. Close. Close. All right. Then we'll do um, skirmish, which I think works. So move, attack, skirmish. Hit me and then bounce. So we'll do an attack for one because I'm shape shifted mm -hmm. plus zero. So one through the armor. Taking one. And then two. Or I guess I could, I probably should just jump back in here. One, two. So I can play my, my games. I agree with that move. And then, um, that is going to be it. So move, attack, and skirmish. Hmm. And then I'll exhaust, clear the shapeshift, and the disable. Oh, we didn't do the disable. So take three instead of six. That's handy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, damage should be halved. We got gotcha. you. So this is the only thing you have left. Yeah, that hasn't activated. That's correct. It's got 15 health. <laughs> hmm. All right, uh, let's go with um, Tlacali. Skirmish, move here, mm -hmm. and skirmish there. Okay. No reaction. Zero plus one. Take one. Yeah. Then I will fight. And this is going to be a two plus one. I've got a probably, no, I don't have a reaction. You're good. Plus two, so four. Taking four. And then I will worship at the altar of earth. Ding. There. OK. So you're saying, I have a chance of knocking that out. Not that it would really matter too much. This. One, two, three. Yeah, so I got four with two cards, and I need to do seven. So I'd, I need to do eight damage. Well, let's give it a shot. I feel like I just want to have my revenge. What's your action? 
So let's do um, attack here. You're going to love this. Bring it on. Crawling Darkness. Apply Disarmament Slow? Yep. Okay. Uh, you got it. Mm, apparently you can only have two totems at a time. What action you want to take and say? You want to control? Sure. Let's put one of these under. All right, I'll take Disarm in Slow. All right. Disarm and slow. Do -do -do -do. And then we'll do the attack four plus two. So we'll do three to so the disarm. Is that all damages have? Is that what that says? Apply disarm and slow, and then disarm says. Oh, attack and skirmish. Okay. Round it up. Mm. Oof. I can still play the totem, apparently. Oh, right so on. So I'll do it, okay. and then I just have to get put this back in my hand. Okay, so then I probably just have to bail on that. One, two, three, four, five. Nothing there. All right, well, I'll go uh, mess with your car here. <laughs> um, and I am slowed as well. Mm. <laughs> How I mean, annoying is that? That's great, isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, so I can move one? Yeah. Technically, your skirmish would still let you move two. Mm -hmm. Two. I can't get to that tower now, which is the problem. I can't get to the tower in control, is what I mean. So I could just put a body over there. I guess that's the best thing to do. Prevent the dog pile. Um, skirmish. Take one or zero plus one. So one. Still this one. Yeah. Because of the disarm. And then uh, move. And then take a move. One, two, three. I'm going to guess this illusion's gone whenever I die. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't think that illusion matters. And that'll be me. All right. Creeping darkness. No. I have too many minions. <laughs> yeah, it's a real, real problem. Mm -hmm. So you're done. Yeah. I get three free swings here. Just need to clear your minions out, essentially. Yeah, kind of. So it's not going to make a difference. You're going to do one damage max, and then you just need to move one, two, three. So I need to be ahead by four? Yeah, you're already well ahead by four. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six seven to two minions. on the minions. So I'm ahead by five without doing anything. Mm -hmm. Looks like you have five minions, six minions. Cool. Six minions to my two, so you're ahead by four without doing anything. All right. Well, let's uh, let's fix that. Fix it. Um, Sakashi. He's going to attack your furthest away minion. One, two, three here. Okay. So three plus two cards. You got it. Got him. And then I will skirmish. Psh, psh. Uh, eagle. Eagle eye. You attacked the minion already? Yeah. Okay. You're good. Plus one. Take one. Mm. All right. Then that was uh, Sakashi actually gets to go again. Um, I'll worship. So I'm going to mark your eagle. Marked. Consider it marked. So then I'll go with Yami. She'll take her worship action, and it's. I think I can do this. Place Yami adjacent to the to the marked hero and deal a. Oh, I would mark them, mm -hmm. and then do it. Hmm. Yeah, mark them and then place yourself adjacent. You're already marked. I'm already marked. You can mark me again, I think, with Yumi's. Double marked? I think it marks just once. You think so? You can probably remove this one and have the other one take place. 
I can look at it. Well, it's fine. I mean, it's good to know. Uh, she'll just move. And then attack you. You can target an already marked hero with your worship action in order to trigger the skill with a worship icon next to it. So you can just replace it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll worship, deal a damage to that hero and move next to it. Can you target it with the mark? I think you have to target. All right. To target enemy heroes, it's going to be within three and in line of sight. Okay, I'll just move and attack. All right. Let's react. Well, you got one action after this. Mm -hmm. And I've got 13 health. Yeah, you're fine. All right. Plus zero, so two. Take two. And then I'll use my worship action just to do one. Okay. To mark you and do one. Move attack, mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Taken. And then old bruiser. <laughs> is it one plus? Yep. One plus. Flip on. How good is that? Plus one. Whee. And then let's go. I know this is a mistake. <laughs> I'm ahead by five here, right? One, two, three. Yeah, you're ahead by five. Move. Attack. Do you move through your own dude? Can you do that? Oh, maybe not. I don't think you can move through heroes. I'll well, maybe you can move through your own stuff. I don't know. We'll check. Move action. Uh, heroes can move through minions, but not through actually containing blocking elements. Friendlier enemy heroes are blocking. Cool. Can move through heroes, towers, or outsiders. All right. Um, in that case. I'm surrounded. Yeah. It's horrible. Um, Reinforcements are coming, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no, you've got a minion here. You're up by an a additional lot. one. Yeah. Mm, let's go one, two, three. Then we'll skirmish for one, two. And then he will pillar. None of these are his. And you have to target with the pillars. Something tells me Which, you do. You have to you place it within three. Place within? Okay. Yeah. That's right here. Place a pillar and target hex within three. So So target hex means within three in line of sight. Yeah, that's fine. I just want it on the board. It's on. His are the white ones. Okay. Uh, and then that's me. All right. Easy peasy. Fresh and breezy. Okay, let's start by resolving numero one. One, two, three, four, five. Is this yours or mine? That's mine. One, okay. two. Two to five. So two and then three here. Uh, just one there. So I won by three. Let's see, I got five, six to your two. So I won by four. So take two minions and two towers. Okay. And those guys stay. Yeah, and they'll stay. And then I'll spawn two more here. Hey, watch that tower. Wee wee, and then I get spawn two, get wrecked. One and when you do and damage to a tower, you draw a card. And one there. Yeah, take that. Mm, nice. I love this card. That's good. Okay. Number two. Number two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to one is six. So, I will lose six minions if I can. So one minion one tower, and then four that doesn't matter, and then you'll move it six. <laughs> Wee! You're my base. And look at this, too. It's funny, because, like, my minions are now... You gotta put one here, technically. They're everywhere. And, and then least. we would spawn two. One's gotta go there. <laughs> look at that. And then one for me would go probably here. Oh, you don't spawn anymore over here. Oh, right, because the towers, yep. Towers are gone. So that gets in crazy. Yeah, right? Once you knock the towers out, that's how Dota works, too. Knock the towers out, it gets way harder. Also, you can only ever have two totems, according to chat. So, like, across all of your, your different stuff. Is that right? That can't be right. It can't be right? 
I would be surprised based on the cards in my deck that say per <laughs> per te, per pillar. Uh, remove up to one friendly pillar token and trigger the skill. Place a friendly on a target hex without miniatures. The maximum number of friendly pillar tokens in the battlefield is equal to the number of friendly Talat heroes drafted by the player. So two. Yeah, because two heroes, reason. you can only have two totems. Right. Yeah. We got it. So is there cards that are like, if you go all green, it gets better for you? Yeah. yeah. It's based on the number of totems you have. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, and then uh, Roshan, you, you get that a thousand ways. So you can uh, spawn the outsider and potentially do some bad business. Stuff. <laughs> uh, all right, outsider spawn. I think I'm here, right? Yeah, one, two, three. Uh, first thing, we'll go uh, three attack here. Bring it on. Three plus a card, plus two for five. And then we'll do the zero plus with piercing and push you. Zero, but I'll push you. Push me. And then I will draw a card. All right. I think that's the end. And it's official. <laughs> you have won this game. We made it. My goodness. Uh, but look at this. Hold on. Let's, let's look at the board here. This is MOBA. This is what it looks like. You pushed into my uh, side of the base, my right side of the base. I'm not spawning any minions over here. This is all but lost. I have no uh, things that really do a lot of control on the minion side. So... They're just going to be wrecking my base. I'm trying to make an anti-counter uh, push over here, but there's no way because you're going to slide into the back here and then just start wrecking that. That's exactly how a Dota game plays out. Yeah. In, in its best. Well, like, like it started its, here, right? Most classic. It's like I push here, so you have to come reinforce. Yeah. And then because I was able to get an advantage over here and you had to reinforce, this side just fell apart. Yeah. Missing, missing on that ranged attack was a huge turning point in the game. Um, dropping a plus oh, three. Oh, well, you didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I missed the hero, which is a two-card draw and a minus three, minus four control on that turn. So we would have been all up in your base. And then we've got your, you drew that plus three at one point. That was clutch. Yeah. That turned things around. Not didn't turn things around. That just sealed the game even harder. Yeah. I, I felt like I was a, a somewhat ahead. Yeah. You, you were ahead, but once I missed that, once I missed that attack. Yeah. That, I, was, I was like, oh, that was so devastatingly good. Once that attack was done. Yeah. So that's fascinating. Super good. Um, next up, so let's look at let's look at what we do now. Let's look at actually customizing these decks and taking a look at um, how that works. Do you want to zoom us in? Do you want to open an expansion? Do you want to just look at the cards currently I available? I feel like, well, I, I guess can also open my core set. That's what I was going to say is I think step one is you should get your core set. All right. So we each have a full, full boat of cards. Full boat. Um, and then beyond that, it's right here. Okay, you grabbed it. And I think it would be good for people just to see what's in that, right? So I can like, clear all this off. Yeah, Let me let's, put let's this in my box. There. And then I already pretty much know the expansion that I want. I'm going to let you guess which color it is. It's going to be the red, the red one? It's probably going to be the red one, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, be, anyways. Probably be the blue one as well. If you want to look at all the cards from an expansion before you dive in, I totally appreciate that and understand it. I, I'm not going to put it away. I think it's pretty easy to figure out where I'm going to go on this. I would guess blue, but You know, I've blue got some white. love for the desert people, but they kept dropping me those minus ones, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know that if makes, that's your jam. It makes me feel weird. I don't like having minus ones in my deck. But yeah, so the to me, it's like we open some expansions. I'll we, just put all these over there so you can your have wolf. your... Uh, I'll take these guys. Yeah, let's open it up. Let's take a look. And then uh, let's start deck building. I think, again, like I've been saying, deck building is where this comes alive. So we're going to start making some customized choices. And I think the goal here for us is to, by the end of this stream, we normally end around 5 or 5.30, um, essentially have two lists ready to go, and then that's the first thing we'll do tomorrow when we actually dive in. Actually play those lists? Mm -hmm. That's you, fun. It, I assume this board being here is fine. Yeah, that's fine. We'll make that work. Okay, so I'll keep these white. Uh... Civil Pain, welcome. No worries. He says, sorry for being late. Yeah. It's You're good. fine. Nobody's gonna, gonna hold you to it. So here's this, and you wanna hand me all the cards you were previously working with? Yeah, we'll just, just get adopt everything. That. This is all your core set, and then I'll open my core set. 
and then we'll all have what we need. Here's, here's some models that you'll probably never use. And then here we go. Perfecto. Just so people can see, I know a lot of people are asking questions about what all came in the core set, but this would be a great way just to see it. Here we go. I'm just going to slide these over here. Now you're in. Core set. We'll zoom it in here if you guys want to see it. Look at that. We got a beautiful core set. All right, so we got the rule book. Look, it's a classic unboxing video. We can. We're literally unboxing it. There's a sky tier. There's a rule book. It's got all sorts of great rules in there. Leprex says, I'm, I know you're going to open a core set, but do you think one core set is enough for two people to play casually? Yes. Absolutely. Especially if you're buying expansions. Board? It's a really nice board. It's like classic game board, but also very nice. It's like the, the right is the good version. It's the one you pay more to make. Yeah, you want to show off that triple side yeah, as well? Hold, that was the side back. we just played on. So we'll you flip guys it over. Can s oh, yeah. I was like, that this is the three similar. lane, so we'll probably play on this tomorrow with our list. Yeah, so we've got two outsider spots, so you could spawn an outsider here and here. Uh, and then we've got lane number one with towers, lane number two with towers, and lane number three with towers. And that's just amazing. Yeah, I mean, and you got these white lines that branch off. Super fun. I can't wait to play that one. So you get really two game modes on the map. Got to fold this like a, like a map there. Okay, then we got a lot of punch out, cardboard, etc. You know the drill. Yep. And then uh, here's the goods. So some things that are notable. Obviously, you get bags. That is. That's like a sign. It's step one that they care, right? And they gave you the slots to put the cards as well. So bags, bags of bags. So for the tokens and the minions and the cards and all that. It's really nice. For people like me, this is a big deal. You got the outsider, you got all of your different heroes and minions, and then we've got the cards, and like Zach said, you've got basically slots in here where cards can go really easily. And that's that. So I'm just gonna put all this away, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at these cards. The, all the cards in the expansion? Yeah. So I think that's what, before I even open, right, it's like going through the cards and heroes to kind of point out like things that you like is uh, notable. So Dragon Punch as an example, that was that card that let me clear out all your minions mm -hmm. that one turn. Big card. And it's not a signature card. Yeah. So it's both got three icons to contribute with a lead, and it clears clears out. So that's like, I'm just going to make a stack of like my favorite cards as I'm going. Yeah, the value there is potentially five minions, which is and I'm gonna stack this out of control. Here. I had this in my hand at the end, and I didn't get to play it. But I had all those minions over there. Mm-hmm. And the Lord of the Mini, it's a green card that says the caster gets plus one skirmish damage for each friendly minion in their line of sight. Lord of the Mini. So there was a point where I had wow. six minions in my line of sight. And if I had played this card, it's skirmish plus six damage. Goodness gracious. That's a, I'm going to put that on the medium tier of card that I really like. Uh, Rampant Hatred is also interesting. Caster gets plus one skirmish damage for each friendly hero in line of sight. Uh, then the caster may take a skirmish action. Dean asking, is this game for sale already? It is. Um, we don't have it in stock on our website, but you can get it from the Play Sky Terror website. Um, they have free shipping on orders over 100 bucks, and they have the core set plus the initial four. Is this for me? Yeah, this is for yours. me. Uh, four expansions, one for each of the factions in stock. What else you like? Uh, I'm just rolling through. Uh, feel free to do the same. Uh, I really, I really like. Um, are we just? Are you going to claim red and I'll claim blue? I just want to call that. I, day. I'm red and green are going to be the ones I lean towards. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that's cool is, is like, it. I expect our team of six ultimately will have at least one of each color. Mm -hmm. So I'm more than happy to also trade and mission mash on yeah, things cool. that make sense. But yes, I am planning on <laughs> taking red had quickly. An idea. Um, even just looking at like uh, heroes. So looking to me, if I look at Sakashi, um, he's got the three range attack with two cards, which is really good. But he has no armor and lower health. And ultimately, like if I compare him to Yami, um, Yami is the eighteen health and armor 
with less of attack, but she just gets rid of the minion when she walks through it. Yeah. So like I really like Yami. Like if I was picking, I would pick Yami first. So we know so these these symbols in the top left, like Yami, for instance, the top left of that card, those symbols, do they correspond to like the roles in the game? I, I feel like I feel like surely. that's relevant because so she's gonna be more of like a control kill the minions kind of person. And then you have some other people that are more like slayer type, um, kill the hero. Then you have support, disable, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, okay, so we've got it here. So we've got uh, that. So we've got warriors, mages, marksmen, tanks, support, assassin, and specialist. And what's the skull with the horns? The skull is a specialist. So Yami is considered a, a specialist. She's probably doing something very well. Well, she's really good at getting rid of minions. Yeah. Uh, she also has the placer next to a marked hero. So very fast movement. Uh, kneel before me. Deal four damage. This is her, her ultimate. Deal four damage and apply slow to target an enemy hero. Place the target adjacent to Yami and mark them. Okay. So she's she's doing, and this is, you'll see this in a lot of Dota. So she's doing a lot of uh, getting her next to heroes. So the Shroud of the Reaper ability, place her adjacent to the marked hero, and then she's also got this, which is place the target adjacent to Yami. So she would pair well with a lot of like big melee cards that you could use after you've you've pulled them close to you. Yeah. Or you've gone to them. She's like a Pudge kind of gal. Yeah, Yami's cool. That makes a lot of sense. I like Yami. Okay. I also like Dragon Punch. Also, I like Quick Shot. I didn't ever get to play it, but it's defeat target adjacent enemy minion. Oh, that's great. As a reaction. As a reaction. That's interesting. Okay. So, like, you go up, you like, attack a minion. Yeah, you get it. Check out this. Check out Ice Wall here. So, it's it's important to remember, too, that these three symbol cards are great at control as well, so you can control the, the battlefield. I mean, that's akin to having three minions on the board if you use that. But basically, somebody targets something, and then you Ice Wall it, and if you hit them with your Ice Wall, then whatever's hit with the Ice Wall can't be targeted. So you're basically putting a wall in front of whatever's trying to be targeted by that attack, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that That's would be really annoying. Cool. <clears throat> Setting it up, maybe a little difficult? I don't know. So how do you, how do you think through... I mean, this is the crazy thing about deck building. So <laughs> we've got the number of variables that we've got to consider are the actual mana cost of, of casting the card. So let's look at, let's look at Ice Wall. We'll, we'll keep sure. that up. So Ice Wall's got a mana cost of three here on the top left. We've got the boost symbol, which is a plus one on the top right. We've got whether it's a reaction or an action right in the middle of the card. And then we've got the actual effect. So high mana cards obviously are harder to cast, but they contribute more to your control. And then I'm guessing certain card effects are balanced by where they have a plus one, plus two, plus zero, minus one in the top right. So there's probably a world where you have all really like minus one and plus zero cards, but they're all really good effects. And that's probably a way to consider building the deck. Now, I would be the kind of person that would think, I wonder if I can make my deck only plus ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I always know exactly what I'm going to draw whenever it comes time to to flip a card. Well, I feel like if you are obviously very high level at this game, you would know based on the heroes you chose, because each hero you pair their ultimate plus seven other cards with. Yeah. And then you choose your four heroes out of six, your opponent bans one. That's 32 cards that go together. Mm -hmm. But you should know based on those 32 cards, right, your odds, like how many ones and twos you have and zeros you have in that deck. Yeah. And then if you're really good, really, really good, <laughs> And you've gone through 20 cards in your deck, and you only have 12 left. You should really know, like it's like you'll know if you haven't seen any of your ultimates that you have four left that are plus yeah. three. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it. building pools of cards that provide, like, I think there's a macro level strategy that is high plus cards because like if I'm looking at all my red cards here, right, um, that aren't ultimates, I have three cards that are plus two. Mm -hmm. It's quick shot, crippling precision, and clear mind. Yeah. A clear mind. I don't. I think that came in the. Maybe it didn't. Um, so if I ran all those cards right in my pod, they're all plus twos. But that's probably if you also look, all of those only have one commitment icon from the lead. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at my plus ones, life steal, blazing edge. Let's look at them. Then my plus ones here that are life steal and blazing edge are only plus one. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm immediately getting less good on the attack, but more good on the lead action. Mm -hmm. And if you look at your plus zero, which is Dragon Punch, not only is the ability awesome, but it's a three lead. Yeah. Um, so there, it's it's obvious what they're doing, which is th there's a sliding scale of the bigger the plus, the less commit icons, and vice versa. And probably there's a balance there too on what the actually abil ability is doing. Yeah, it's interesting too because if you look at my pool of blue cards, I basically got five cards across, so basically two different cards, five total, that give plus two, and both of them only have one icon on them. So that's basically akin to what you're working with. You've got a three, six, you've got seven cards at plus two, so I'm, I'm thinking, just understanding the lore of red too, they're probably going to be better off the top of the deck with higher numbers. Yeah, which you can look, look at how many twos and threes you have on the lead action. Like mm -hmm. you have a three here, a three, like I have one card. One three? That is a, you got this three too. That's the ultimate. The the ulti, yeah. The ultimates are all threes. Yeah. But like, the, so both of these are ulties. Oh, I didn't realize those ulti were ultimates. Three, I was ulti like, three. my goodness, you have so many threes. Yeah. So I actually have zero non-ultimate threes. Do you have any plus threes? Isn't that a three on your? Oh yeah, three icons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the plus three. No, I don't have any plus three on the attack that aren't ultimates. So I suppose, and you know, that's a fascinating card. You've got three for lead. You've got plus one, which is pretty good for the top flip, and the ability itself is not bad. And if you line up your heroes right, it's like you could ice me out literally yep. from an attack all around. Um, yeah, so like in just looking at what these cards do, like if you want to understand red, Brutal Precision as an example, the caster gets plus two attack. Got it. Crippling Precision, the target hero gets plus one attack. Clear Mind, the caster gets plus one attack. Uh, quick Shot, defeating a minion. Dragon Punch, minion. so it's like... Red, obviously, burning stuff down, right? Mm -hmm. It's like they are wanting to, to attack, and they're attacking minions, and they're attacking heroes. Yeah, it, and it follows the kind of standard, what you would expect that's kind of established with magic very early on, of what these colors are up to. So blue, for instance, we have a card like Through the Eyes, and it applies Disarm to the target. We have Grapple, which applies Slow, also moves you towards them. You've got Unfamiliar Terrain, which applies Fast to me, and then Slow to you within three. So there's a lot of disabling going on. So yep. blue is playing a more controlly style. You also have a draw two power cards card uh, for two. So you know draw and disable is what you would expect from uh, blue. Yeah, and the one kind of condition that red is doing that's not just damage is slow. Mm -hmm. So like Yami has this, the uh, her ultimate does slow. Crippling Precision also does slow, um, and that's really about it. Yeah. Unfamiliar Terrain on the blue side, applying fast. You've got one of the casters that applies fast. Check out um, Feral Vitality. This is the ultimate for Barn Bjorn? Yarn Bjorn? Gold Bjorn. Wild Sovereign. So you can remove any condition and heal to full hit points. Then if I'm shapeshifted, push each enemy adjacent to him two hexes. So basically, you heal everything, you drop your conditions, and you push everything two hexes out. Just this giant roar. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, Featherstorm, incredible for uh, Korjoff. Place me anywhere on the battlefield. Then if you're shapeshift to deal three plus damage and apply disarm to an adjacent enemy hero. And that's a reaction. So totally fascinating that Featherstorm... Featherstorm is like the best ultimate that I've seen so far in the game. Just looking at, like, looking around at all the what different they do. cards. Being able to move anywhere onto the board, do a free three plus attack, and then continue with whatever it is that you were doing. Super, super good. Damage, positional, and keep going. Everything. It's one of the ways that you can get to a lane that you need to help and immediately help it without yeah. even thinking about it. Very cool. Um, all right, let's look at what about green? What's green offering? So that's Surely what, green, just kind yeah. of looking at it. Um, let's move these red cards out of the way. And then I'm going to take a look at yellow slash gold because I think a lot of their they're going to have these minus ones that I was running into but they got to be doing like, something for they that got right? cancels that's what they were really into yes oh my goodness that was annoying in a good way word Sorry, no. <laughs> blades not knocking it oh interesting oh. twister of souls so I'm going to align mine by their like commitment value their lead value as it were oh and see yellow's bringing Gold's bringing some, some two icons now Look to the at party. this. This makes some, a lot more sense. So green has two cards that have three commitments on it. Two different That two are non-ultimates, yeah. yeah. So we have Rampant Hatred, 
which the caster gets plus one skirmish damage for each friendly hero in line of sight. Then the caster may take a skirmish action. So I, I assume that skirmish action is free. Uh, it gets plus one skirmish damage in each friendly. Then, yeah, it takes a, it's got to be free, yeah. Um, and it's plus one as well, so that's just a great card. Yeah. Anytime uh, you got three icons and a plus one on that card, also you, may, rampant, you might be thinking about it. Rampant Hatred reminds me for some reason. I mean, not for some reason, because it looks like it a little bit. Of uh, Queen. Mm -hmm. The like album cover where they're like all looking up in the dark. Yeah. Uh, then we have Mud Flood. Apply slow to each other hero on line of sight of the caster and push them one hex. Yeah, that's so good. My goodness. Love that it. is what is that, up. That has earned its three mana cost. That's really, yeah. really good. Uh, so, and that's like, what a great balance point, by the way. It's the cost of the card equals its ability to lead as well. I, I love that so much. But plus zero. So one thing green's doing is they're going to lead very well. Mm -hmm. Like they can go in, a single hero can probably drop it. If you think about my deck, I had four ultimates, right? And I had... Two red cards and four here. So I was at 10. It's a third of my deck almost mm -hmm. was three commitment cards. Yeah. Because early on I was committing threes basically the whole time. Uh, then you get down to the twos. They Again, they have the two commitment with the plus one, the Lord of the Mini. The caster gets plus one skirmish damage for each friendly minion in their line of sight. That's the card I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. uh, Crawling Darkness, apply disarm and slow to the target enemy. We saw that several times in the game. Very much. But... They have mostly good cards for leading, um, no, nothing bad on the attack stats, the disarm, the slow. They get a lot of skirmish damage. That seems like what they're doing is skirmish plus, like red is more of the actual attacks on the heroes. Green is leaning heavier on the skirmish. Um, I guess that is attacks. on. Red is doing direct attacks. Green, Green is doing a little skirmish more skirmish attacks. So yeah. no wonder it's super aggressive. Yeah. Uh, safeguard, I love that one. Adjacent friendly minions can't be damaged. Like Big, big money moves my, on that. And it only yeah. costs one. Get out of here. Yeah. Uh, and then sacrifice, heal another target hero for HP. This caster loses two HP. It's fine. So that, that's good. That, that has a moment. Yeah. That has a good moment. I think that's uh, solid. So like healing is what we're seeing, and then like disarming, slowing, and like skirmish damage. They definitely feel more lane control-y in what they're doing. Like they're basically, I think they're putting the the whatever the things out the pillars out and then they're basically controlling it's just it's gross it's like poison it's like ugh. it feels weird it's slow it's just it's very like it's very earthy right yeah it's like a rock because it's like they make it hard with things like uh, crawling darkness making you slow safeguard making it impossible to get rid of their minions and then safeguard's huge they have cards that benefit from the number of minions yeah lord of the mini and rampant hazard yeah and so, like, they go and they just control a point, and it's just hard to deal with them. And then they can disarm you with crawling darkness, so it makes it hard to even harder to like. It's just like they're they're, they're just a brick focused. wall. They're minion focused for sure. Meantime, I'm looking at this. There's only two minus ones in that entire deck. I'll have you know, and that's devastating to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're so, good at hitting them. Oh my gosh. Uh, so yellow is a little bit interesting. Gold here. I've got. Two copies of cards that have one lead icon is what we'll say, or mana cost. But they're doing plus two in the deck. So that, wow, that's awesome. That's pretty amazing. So you could lean like attack heavy with them. Absolutely. So time glitch applies fast to the caster, and then you can also remove the condition from them. So that's going to be great. And then Tetsudo is a really cool card. When the caster would lose hit points, a friendly adjacent minion may prevent the loss and lose that minion instead. So you do six or seven to me, you push it all to a minion, also gives the plus two there. Then we've got the classics, which I would consider um, redirect as an example of this. I feel like where's the other? There was that other cancel that I had that was really relevant. What was that called? Maybe it's in your stack. Maybe I because they were canceling like everything. Redirect and the other one. That's disarm. In, yeah, disarm. Thank you. Or dismiss. Dismiss. So Do you dis not have that in your stack? I don't. I don't. But I, I'll find it. I probably set it aside. So dismiss and redirect both are controlling cards. So those are interesting cards. Those are those are the kinds of cards in a game that are devastating, and I can't stand them. But I love them at the same time. But I don't actually. But I can't stand them. Uh, then we got Twister of Souls. I feel like the way they work in this game is way better. They do work better. With a stack, it gives you an opportunity. You don't feel like it's too like out of reach. Yeah. Uh, Twister of Souls is really great. So this is a three mana cost. It's got a four hex AoE. Place the AoE on a target hex and then deal three damage to each enemy hero hit and move them one hex. So this can be good if you're, their heroes are clumped up. 
similar to Hurricane Strike, deal two to an enemy, and then if you move forward, do two to a different adjacent target. So they seem to be doing pretty well against uh, enemies that are close to each other. Yeah. So they get in there, and they're kind of the whirling dervish moments so kind of things. So synergistically, you would be looking, f if you are going to play to that, it's like you would want to work with cards and heroes that would help push enemies around? Yeah, I would imagine. They also got the time warp where you can move the caster one hex, so you get a free one move whenever you do your stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got uh, the two ultimates, which are fantastic. So Blades of Always Lightning. Always good. When Hobart declares an attack action, four plus damage. So remember, this is, you play it, and then you declare that attack action, do four plus a card to all enemies adjacent to the illusion. Blades of Lightning are really good because it's not all enemy heroes. It's all enemies adjacent, so you could potentially knock out two to three minions and also hit a hero with that. Uh, and then Word of Neptune, we saw this in the game. That worked really well. Heal each friendly hero as a reaction, so you're attacking somebody who's about to die. I can heal and then disarm each enemy hero in my illusions line of sight. So that wasn't set up very well. I didn't do well with the illusions yeah. that last game. But if you hit, if you heal plus disarm someone, e that is devastating. Disarm each enemy hero. So there's a world where you disarm, you could disarm four heroes. Too much. With this ultimate. Too much. Which so would be incredible. It's cool. Like if, if a white gold is like air, wind vibes, right? Yeah. And, and heat. Like I'm thinking about desert, right? It's like that sort of air and wind. Um, the desire to like move people around mm -hmm. and get them where you want them um, seems really important. Yeah, and that they're doing a, a pretty good amount of that. You got move, you've got make a new target, and then you've got kind of these positioning based abilities. So that's pretty fascinating. So just based on that, what are the um, factions? I don't know what they're called. Uh, factions that you are most drawn to. Well, well here's the other thing. Really, at a certain point, it's a question of what heroes you're drawn to. That is the real question. Because, like, if you look at, uh, let's pull up old Golbjarn, which I think a lot of people will will move to. You mean an awesome bear? Giant, shape-shifting bear. The eagle bear. thing is awesome, though. Oh, he's great. But if I'm going to play Golbjarn, I, I need, red, I need uh, green in my deck. I mean, he can play green spells, yeah. so I may as well have some green there. <laughs> if I want Korjok, then exactly I get it. into the yellow cards, and I can only have three copies of any card across all of my stacks. Yeah. So it's so weird how you would have to, you can't really min max one hero. So you like, kind of spread them out, spread out the cards that you want to cross. We're, the we're getting into the deep layers of stuff here. Let's open an expansion. Uh, um, that, that's what I, that's what I'm trying to get to. So I want to open an expansion. Before we dive into that, real quick, I want to mention this. So like, what I ended up doing, and I, I feel like there'll be archetypes, but ultimately, Keep looking for my water. It's not here. Uh, do you need to grab it? I'll go grab it. Yeah. Um, the archetypes I was looking at, and I'll just wait to even say this because you're going to need to hear it. Um, let's see what Chats got to say. You guys, let's open an expansion. Let's see what's going on. Hi, Germany. Sorry, Larry. <laughs> uh, Tor saying, question for Sky Terror. With those target AoEs, do you have to be able to target all spaces in the AoE to place it or just one space? I think you have to target one of the spaces and yeah, then the AoE lays down on top of it. Sky Terror confirmed. Nurture. Right. Hi, greetings from Germany. Um, you got it. All right. So yeah. here was the thing I started realizing. So like as an example, I like Yami. Yami has she's fire and air. For I'm gonna use air because it's an element. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, fire and air. And then I'm looking at the blue characters, right? And like Korjov to me, I like him better than I like the bear, like yeah. the, the flying eagle thing. He's also water and air, right? Yeah. So you start seeing it, and you start, and it's like okay. Well, then I started looking at the air characters, and it was like, well, now I'm looking at well, what's air plus fire? What's, what do those characters look like? And you start going down the list, and what I think is going to happen a lot is that you're going to have, like, three characters from one color. Yeah. And then, because you, you need it to know two of those are coming with you. Yeah. And, and they're synergistic across their worship actions, too. Yes. So you want to bring two of one color, probably. There's probably a rainbow list, like a one of each. Well, so what I was going to say is, ridiculous. if you run, like, three that are one color, then you can run one of three other colors. Mm -hmm. And that way you can literally get the best cards from every color and whatever they splash into, you have another thing to get pull from, right? So like if I bring Korjoff, he's going to let me use the blue cards, but he's also let me splash into... Uh, yeah, you kind of want a defining color 
across everything. That's exactly what I'm saying. And you so, have extras. So like you have your core, which is like your like three, I, I think it's gonna be three heroes. And <laughs> I may be totally wrong, but I assume, because there's four, so if you're on one of each, you have two slots left. Yeah. And I think the recognition of like running three of one and then th three singles, and then like what you're splashing matters too, because if you only have one water, and there's really bad water cards for your opponent, they'll just ban your water. Right. And if literally none of the other ones have any water icons, they know you can't be playing blue cards. You can't be playing blue. Yeah. You kind of want to always keep them guessing. So I'm going to crack one. I know what I'm doing. I'm going fire. Let me see the, what the blue guys have to offer. And then I'll either do that or I might go gold. Here's blue. All right, what are we gaining here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Show me the screen. Okay. Let's look at here. Let's check this out. Let's zoom in here. Just read, read me the read me the tale. Leothan or Lyothan, Lord of Life. Let's see what this says. Okay, here we go. Look at this. We've got we've got lore everywhere. Uh, Lyothan bases its approach to creation on perfecting research and comparative study. Nothing is left uncontrolled. Each aspect is calculated and studied down to the smallest details. In the fragile natural balance of Olen Ta, efficiency must be kept at maximum to achieve goals and survive. Oh, heart be still. <laughs> Heroes of Leothan shapeshift themselves into animals, exploring natural features usually sentient beings lack, like wings, gills, or claws. They use natural features like forest cliffs and hollows, like wild animals hunting their prey. Ice ruins allow heroes to obtain a spiritual link to the whole aspect of nature from summoning favorable weather conditions to calling forth wild animals as support during hunting. So this is one of the cool things is like even though they're the same color as the core set, it's like a sub-faction, it's like a subset. This is the, the Leothan or the Lyothan uh, sub-faction of blue, and so they play a certain kind of blue. Yeah. And I'm guessing that if another blue expansion comes out, it would be a slightly different kind of Well, and the of cool blue. part you'll find out when you open one. So each of these expansions so far, they come with four heroes and four minions, um, and basically a full deck for that color. So like you could literally buy an expansion and play with just that expansion. I'm in. Um, Wait, I better read the gold as well before yeah. I go. Gold, by the way, that's my second second Is tier. Is that numeral? Yeah, but it's it's fine. By the time we're into Let the second expansions, <laughs> that's so funny. By the time we're into second expansions, uh, we're going to have so many extra cards each that like we'll be flipping and flopping and it'll be fine. Um, but it, you could technically play, and someone asked, does it contain only cards from that color? Uh, it doesn't. So when we open this up, you'll see it's mostly that color. But then the cool thing is there's four heroes, right? Yeah. And each of those heroes have a different secondary aspect. So there are cards included from each of the other aspects. Very cool. Um, all right, so I'm, go I'm going fire. I, I'm gonna, I can read the, f the flavor if we want. It's all online, though, so I'm, I'm going to skip it. Uh, it says, Martial Honor is the creed of Kuromo's warriors, a creed made tangible in their blades. See ya. <laughs> uh, you want to see the sky? Yeah, see that's it. green. See there. I want to see the greens, actually. Yeah. Because that's what I'm waiting on. Like, so what happens, you know, are the next, is the next blue expansion going to still be Lyothan, which is from the, the core set? So it's kind of like they're playing a certain way. Do you start getting into, like, you know, some weirder blue factions, some weirder red factions that are still in the color pie, but Look at those characters, by the way. Oh, this guy's, like, great. What color is this? Oh, this is, is this green or white? That's gold. It looks like gold models. Neptun? Neptun, yeah. It's yeah, gold. Yeah, Neptun, yeah, yeah. The illusions, yeah. Look at those models, though. Those look great. They do look great. They look fantastic. I mean, they're nice and painted and stuff. And then the green, the Talat, man, they look the, awesome. The first paragraph has everything you need to know. The heroes strike from the tunnels of their home their innate hive mind. God, Jonathan would be all over this faction. Uh, so the Neptun, ruler of mind, says, the laws that govern the world are broken by the minds of Neptun's devotees. Mm. Talad is probably the darkest and the most introverted god. For sure the most stubborn and grumpy. That's how it played, too. They're very reluctant to build relationships, so they're just uh, forest hermits, basically. They do unstable pillars that can unleash huge amount of sky tear when crumbling, allowing them to generate spells and effects beyond limits. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna crack that blue expansion, because of yeah, course I Yeah, I felt like that's where you were going. All right. Yeah, Stimmer on uh, Twitch. This game has great graphics. It's so true. Like everything about it is just, it's just really well done. We said it. I think we said it in the email that we sent out today that it's rare that you find this mix of passion and talent and willingness to risk your monetary reality on making a game and getting it done. All those things coming together. 
it's rare. It but is rare. When you find it, you have to you have to latch onto Can it. Can you table shot me real quick? Yeah. Uh, I just want to show this little insert in this expansion. This is the kind of thing. So like, ultimately, a lot of a lot of games will have oversized boxes with lots of air, which creates a ton of waste. And beyond the waste, it just creates uh, it's for like shelf presence. Which People makes think a the bigger sense. box can charge more money. Yeah, but I love how just compact this is. Yeah, the that's fact correct. that you're getting four new heroes and the minions and a full deck of cards all fit in this little box, and they're in this nice little uh, plastic holder. And it's so smart too because they're so much easier to ship. Also, I'm going to call the name out so we can see the art. Let me grab it. Yeah, and I don't even know if we'll have I don't know if we'll have them in the in the database, so we'll take a look at them. Mm. Try one and see. Yeah, so like here's the stack of cards I got, which is primarily red. Um, but then it comes with cool three of the same card for green and three that are white. So I didn't get any blue cards in my fire expansion. Which makes sense. I assume none of these are paired with blue. That's right. So when I look at all these heroes, none of them have blue paired. Do you think there's like a cross? So like blue and red are opposites and gold and green are opposites? Probably. Or something similar? Let's see if you get any reds. Yeah, Chris, you're totally right. Way easier to store, easier for everything. So no, I have no idea what any of this stuff does. That's what I want. I want to see the heroes I want to read in it. there. I want to start with the heroes. Look at these cats. You just gotta savor these moments. I this love is this like, like a... lamp with the smoke coming off of it. Mm. Good luck painting that. Have you seen? Okay, so let's look. So we've got Shilvani, which is kind of a S H Y L L A V I Shilavi. Look right? at that pelt. Swift Fang. So she looks like an assassin, and she has blue and gold. So. Four attack, two damage, 18 health. So she's just a tough one. When a friendly chaser to hero within three hexes loses HP, that hero may deal one plus damage to target adjacent enemy hero. That's fantastic. Revenge. It's fantastic. Retaliate. It's so good. Ah! I love it. That's really good. So stay shape shifted. Oh, she's then, got four plus two. Yeah, I know, yeah. So feline pounce when she defeats an enemy minion with an attack, she deals one plus damage to target enemy minion adjacent to her. That's what I've been waiting for. Two minions with one attack. Yeah, what's her ultimate do? That's necessary. Okay, let's take a look. Dance of the Predator, plus three and three icons. Move her three hexes, then deal two plus damage to an adjacent enemy. If you're shapeshifted, repeat both effects an additional time. Move three, two plus, move three, two plus. Wow. Like a cat. Moving quick. Destroying everyone. So my first hero here is Kichi. Reminds me of Uncle Uncle Iro. Iro? Uncle Iro. Iro, yeah. He's got a Z on the front of his hat, too. Oh, that's for you. Um, it's for Zach. Yeah. Uh, Inheritance Keeper. So he's got Wind plus Fire. He's got a three-ranged attack with one card, 14 health, so he's a little weaker. Rejuvenation, heal Kichi one hit point whenever he damages a marked enemy. Say that again. If he damages a marked enemy, he heals one. Every time? Every time. That's static ability? Just straight up. Oof. Then written in fire, predict X plus one, where X is the number of marked enemy heroes in his line of sight. Not bad. And his ultimate is Curse of Years, 3-3, three, three, of course. Deal damage to target enemy hero equal to half of their current HP. Oh, that's so good. If the target is marked, heal Ki Kichi for the amount of damage. Oh, my work. gosh. You're at half. I mean, best, you know, that, that can hit for nine and heal you for nine. It's insane. All right, so that's awesome. Um, let's see what else we've got. How about, so just to put it into perspective, so we've got an assassin, a healer, a tank, and a specialist in this box. No red alliance. So we've got two gold, two green. What's the flame mean on the icon there? Uh, that's a mage, okay, so cool. no armor. Nice. Yeah, armor, let's get it now. armor not not apply. Uh, so let's look at Freyhel, F R E Y H E L, the enduring oh God, queen. I love this model. She's got a beautiful uh, like covered in flowers flower dress. If you see the back of this box, it is horrendous for me to think about ever trying to paint this. Uh, it's basically, would you like to paint a lot of flowers as a dress? This is amazing. It, it reminds me of like Goldberry from uh, Lord of the Rings. And she's a proper healer here. So when a friendly hero within three hexes gains shapeshift, you can heal that hero one plus. 
create so ability. So when, when they shapeshift, they heal. <laughs> when they shapeshift, they heal, correct. And then you had the one earlier that every time they take damage, they do one back. Yes, correct. And then Mistress of Withering, so when she shapeshifts, she has piercing, and she would when she would heal an enemy, she may deal the same amount of damage instead. So when she would heal, she so can do it, cha change it to damage, basically. She can change it to damage, yeah. And her ultimate, let's take a look at that. Yeah, tell me more. Let's I love that model. Let's dive in. Oh, I got another ice wall, good. Ooh, I see my first neutral card. Okay. Okay, I understand how these are made. And then I have some yellow cards and some green cards. So this is totally playable right out of the box. Yeah. Very good. That's exactly how this should be. All right, let me find this ultimate. Okay. How about Glacial Rebirth? Heal each friendly hero on the battlefield three hit points. Then, if I'm shapeshifted, e heal each enemy hero in Freyhel's line of sight three hit points. Now, remember, if she's shapeshifted, she can change that into damage. So she can heal all your things three. On the board. And then she does three to everything in line of sight or on the board? Everything line of sight. Yep. So if she's within, like, even two enemies, she's healing potentially 12... And then doing six. Yep. Each friendly hero on the battlefield. That is amazing, including herself. My gosh. You love, you gotta love that. It's really good. That Plus ability. the art on that card. I play that bomb, every day of the bomb. week. Bomb. I love healing. My next is Miyaki. Uh, she is the Light Waker. She also has uh, Alliance to Wind. She has two range attack, standard 16 Zoom health, up. with one armor. Marked enemies within three hexes have minus one attack and do not flip cards during attack actions. What? Marked enemies within uh, three. Get minus one attack and don't flip attack so actions. So he's defensive. Mark. What's his type? So she's, she's a healer. Her. She's the uh, oh, she's a healer. light Very person. Cool. Spirits of Sorrow apply slow to the marked hero. Mm -hmm. So she literally, if you're Disabler. marked, she can just make you slow. What's her ultimate do, though? Oh, we don't need to see that. You know it's a healing thing. Uh, caged it? soul. Choose a friendly hero on the battlefield when the hero would be defeated. This hero phase. Heal them to full HP instead. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you imagine turn three, you get a hero down to one? I'm just like, if you knock them out, they're going to totally return. Yep. Woo! I can't imagine that. I, I would hate it. Let's look at, uh, let's just keep passing it, man. We, we got two left. Let's do Brilvar, Dauntless Defender. Now, this is a tank, according to the game, so according to the, the symbol there. Uh, friendly shapeshifted heroes within three hexes get plus one armor. So okay. it gives everyone around and plus one armor. And then Valiant Taunt. When an enemy hero activates adjacent, they must declare an attack action targeting him if possible. So the moment you activate, you have to immediately take an attack. Two armor. Natural. Wow. That is I really a tank. I love two armor. That is, that is how I would define tank. What's and the then, ultimate? Let's look at the ultimate. Mine were like stuck together. There it is. Yeah, I got mine there. So battle cry is the ultimate under three plus three. Uh, it's a reaction. Place each enemy hero in line of sight adjacent to him. Then if I'm shapeshifted, apply blow slow and disarm to all enemy heroes adjacent. Pull everything in within three, yep. and then disarm and slow everything. You also, need... he's got plus one armor when he's shapeshifted. Mm. So he's a three. Yep. Which is crazy town. Yep. So and he, turns, then into, he, pull he in. turns into a crazy ice snake lizard armadillo. I don't know. It's just fantasy. Yep. It's beautiful. We made it. <laughs> Uh, I love this. This is H Hogosai. He's like a fire and armor mm -hmm. character. Eternal Guardian. H-O-G-O-S-A-I? Yeah, Hogosai. S-A-I. Uh, Radiance, marked enemies in his line of sight have minus one armor. Pangolin. Yeah, it is a pangolin. Thank you, Skyter. Of course uh, you would know. Uh, yeah, they would. They should know. Uh, so, marked enemies in line of sight have minus one armor. Mm -hmm. Two attack, 17 health, two armor. Then purifying fire, he may uh, choose to lose one plus HP to deal the same amount of piercing damage to the marked hero. Very cool. And he's a tank, right? He is yeah, a tank, 17 yeah. health, two armor. What's the ulti? Supernova. Deal four damage to all enemies within two hexes. Deals pi piercing damage to marked enemies. All enemies. That means minions, too. Ugh. Mm. Hate that. Burn them down. <laughs> And then finally for uh, Blue here, we've got a specialist, Astrida, Voice <sighs> of the Deeps. I love this. Has Song of Lyothan. Uh, friendly shapeshifted heroes within three hexes apply disarm when damaging with attack actions. So everything shapeshifted within three of her is going to disarm when it attacks. Fantastic. 
And then Song of the Depths with Estrada. You're like, how does this work? How is that possibly true? Uh, when you defeat an enemy minion with an attack, you can lose two hit points to spawn a friendly minion. You need that. I'm playing this yeah, card. This card, this card. And then... Also, look at this model. Can you just look at that for a second? So good. This, this ultimate's amazing. What's it do? This reminds me of, there's the, uh, the one, the, the mirror image hero in Dota. You can make copies and then net an enemy. It was so cool. Uh, Song of the Siren. Exhaust target enemy hero. Boom. Wow. That's, that's annoying. That's what we've come that's, for. That's my kind of hero, this by is the way. It. This is specialist disabler to I'm the I'm going to have to order another one of those boxes to get us, <laughs> make it where I can get those cards. Get away from my heroes. All right. Uh, this is the the one that I assumed I would like the most. So he's like a half lava dude. Akimo, Blade of the Ever King. Mm, I know where this is going. Fire uh, and Earth. What kind of, what role? Uh, uh, assassin? Sword with a sword swirl? Sword with a swirl, yep. yep. He's four attack with plus two cards, so you get to choose. 18 health. Mm -hmm. Soul Thirst. Akimo has plus one attack while attacking a marked enemy, so he'd be a five. He also has Wrath of a Shiro. Move Akimo one hex towards the marked hero. Mm -hmm. So, like, you take a worship action, move one, then he can move, and it, because they're marked now, all of a sudden. Isn't it interesting how much one space is everything in this game? What, when you move, it I mean, it's thirty-three percent more move. The game is designed literally around. I swear, uh, there, there's math to this where you're basically four away from a tower when the control starts. You're four away from actually getting into this space. It's like at every turn, it's like four is the distance you want and three is the distance you can go. So you've yeah. got to waste the skirmish. Or you've just got to play a card that gives you one space, which makes all the difference. Yeah, well, and I think the making everything... It's like moving ac across here is, is five. <coughs> like, it's amazing. Making everything three both streamlines the game and also it streamlines it from a design perspective. Yeah. You know three is the magic number. Yeah. So you know the value of one movement space. Mm -hmm. Instead of like when you have characters that break that mold is when you every game gets into this problem Absolutely. if they don't design around like that kind of logic. And you've already got fast and slow, so you can just use it conditions instead of having to break the rules. Then yeah. his ultimate is Demonic Possession. Look at this art and tell me I would not love that art. Yeah, you, you got a, kind of a love affair with demons that we haven't well, talked about. Well, he's just got this like dark dragon flame. <laughs> apply... What did I say? Apply Frenzy and Fast to a chemo. What's Frenzy? Frenzy? Is that probably two attacks My or friends. If I was a guessing person. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know it is. Got too excited. Uh, Frenzy is not on this list, but it is two attacks. I'm about 99% sure. So he can attack twice, and he's fast, so now he can move five. And if he uses this thing, he gets a sixth space. Anyways, uh, also may immediately take an attack action against target adjacent marked enemy hero. So he gets two attacks, and it doesn't even cost him an extra action if he's already next to the So you could potentially hero. do three attacks? Is that true? Frenzy? Is that what frenzy means? Uh, you I can think... take the attack action twice if you have enough action points, is what frenzy is. And then this says... Does that give him three attacks? Uh, immediately take an attack action against target. Yeah. So you play Demonic Possession, you gain frenzy, you can take an immediate attack, and then you can take two more attack actions if you have the action points to do it. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Demonic possession. Chris says, after 17 different isolation streams, it's time to address his <laughs> interest in demons. That's why he does so well at Arkham. I mean, he hey, does nothing but... Hey, <laughs> I made a deal for that bag to pull zeros. <laughs> um, okay, so just like looking at these characters, having seen nothing else, Akimo is my favorite character. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just super aggressive, super punchy, and the others are just going to be utility slots for me. So you think we take three of one faction? Yeah, so here's, here's kind of what I'm eyeballing. I like Yami, I like Akimo as like my, my top two. Um, so I'm going to start there, just conceptually. And then I probably want let's, one let's more... Let's go to the board here. Let's I probably want actual... one more fire. Um, and this is, this is kind of what I was saying. Like once you get to this point, it's so fascinating. And also you can look at like, do you want to run healers and pushers? Do you want to run one assassin? To you know, to kind of try to seal the deal, go after their their best disabler, their best support piece. And you got to watch out for range versus not range, because not having mm -hmm. any range characters is a bummer. Let me tell you. Yeah, because range really signals that this is somebody good at controlling minions. Yeah. 
Uh, so for the sake of the stream, because we're, we're going to build list now and then we're going to play tomorrow first thing at one. I, I like Sakashi, I think, is kind of my next tier. But we saw Yami and Sakashi today, so I want to get a new hero on the board. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at these other three fire heroes, and I'm not going to make a choice yet. Because what I want to do first is, is build a little bit around these cats, which is Yami and Akimo. And if you look, Yami is aligned with air. Akimo is aligned with earth. So I already got a good thing going. <laughs> yeah. So now what I want to do is actually find one earth and one air mm -hmm. to, to go in these slots. But then, essentially, what I'm going to start looking for, based on what I do in my other spots, uh, which which of these secondary icons on these other three heroes that are new best maps with what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm in the same. I understand. <laughs> yeah, you start seeing the dots connect, and it's like, ah, yes, yes. So I understand entirely. Let's get some Earth in here. Man, it makes you want the other expansions so badly. You know it. This is now a problem. Well, so like, and we haven't even but looked at... we have at, them right there. Uh, we'll get there. It's a little bit steady. Maybe we should go ahead and open them. I'm just saying, so here, here's what I think. I think. I think you only run two colors, probably. Because the synergy between two models having shapeshift synergies, uh, illusion synergies, etc. I want two yellow and I want three blue. But I want all of them to you share six. enough icons to matter. Oh, I want three yellow and three blue then, I think. You can do that. You can absolutely do that. And then whichever one you ban, assuming we're playing the banning way, you take three of one color and then one of the off color, and it should go together with your, um, with your options. Your other color. Yeah. But you're <clears throat> literally leaving on the table, because like the, my thing is, as an example, <laughs> Yeah, countdown to open the other two expansions. It's, it's like one, <laughs> two. So like, I look insane right now, too. I can see myself on the monitor. This is like 2 a.m. deck building, Steven. By the way, you're going to show up tomorrow at 1. You're going to have built online all night. I'm going to have built online all night, so, and they're going to be awful decks. So like, Kotlik it has fire. So like, Does. he he outside of the like marked or unmarked thing, he may as well be red. Right? He may as well be red. But like I'm literally gaining access. When you start actually looking at the cards, the the ability to have a whole lot more of the three commits or the plus two attacks if you want it yeah. is worth a lot to Because you can always dump them. You can always dump them under a card. You can always, yeah, they're so always plus three on the top of the deck. That's where to me it's like, I think at worst, there's like the mega extreme version that you're talking about, which is like three and three. I also think there's an archetype that's two, two, one, one, mm -hmm. where you, you, whatever they ban, you go the other color, which is two, and then you do the two other models that are sent. But like, you start, once we get to the, you pick an eight cards in a stack, by the way, you're going to start realizing it's going to get crazy. Is the banning also, where does that come from? Did you make where that Where does up? it go? It's not in the rule book, is it? Yeah, it's in the, like, uh, tournament rule thing. Because the competitive format, you don't ban anything. Each team chooses six different heroes if playing with four heroes. Then each team prepares a pile of eight cards. You must include each hero's ultimate. You cannot have more than three copies. Then you go to steps D and E of the setup with a step below. Each team drafts heroes from their pool following the same order used. As you draft the heroes, you prepare them as outlined. As you shuffle together their related piles of power cards. So basically, you pick one, I pick two, you pick two, I pick two, and then you pick one. So there's no banning at all. But I know that I've seen that somewhere. Yeah, me too. Sky Terror says it's not there. They decided against it. So no banning. Oh, good. I wonder if that was maybe in an early video I watched or something. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't. So forget the banning. So this, this revolutionizes deck building. Yep. So you're always going to get four. So basically, you need models that can react. You have to either play offense or both here. You either have a team that your opponent has to react to by choosing other models. or you And you got to have two slots that can fill a niche. If you bring a bunch of assassins, does that mean I have healers in the roster that I can bring in? Like, I lean towards being able to run the best cards from every color. Yeah. There's a synergy component. But, like, when you look at it, and it's like when you can have your deck loaded with as many threes as literally possible, it's like there's value to that. Because then you could just go two, two, two. You, then, know you, you know you can go two colors. You can go two, two, two if you want. Yeah, so, like, as an example, if your two water were Frey, Freyhel and... Brilvar? Brilvar. And then you had two Earthers, mm -hmm. right? Anyways. Earth blue. 
Well, how do we not open those expansions up? The deck building seems to get so much better. It's because it gets crazy. And it's exciting. I'm not scared of crazy. Yeah, Daniel, I also thought there was a band and I'm a veteran, sort of. Found out today that isn't right. <laughs> so here's a, here's a totally... You can always ban them. Here's a totally new option. If you want me to throw a curveball at you. Yeah, Now that I love we're at 540. Balls. There's a lot to consider for deck building. Yeah. Like a ton. We can't get them. I, I'm going to have to look at that tonight. So what... Can, pull up the deck builder, would you? Let's what, just look at what's possible here. What I was going to say is that if you want, we can both deck build tonight. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We can come tomorrow with a list. We can open the other expansions, go through the characters if we want, but then literally construct the list that we've constructed Yeah. with the but, intent of just physically building it. Let's do it. I'm going to take I'm gonna take this into uh, the sky. Look at that beautiful website. This you guys a website? did a great job. Yeah. You guys should be very proud of this. It's very good. It does a great job of showing off your game. And then in the menu, you got the little deck builder. Aaron Clark, how often are we expecting future expansions? Um, really two to three months, every two to three months, probably, one expansion. Also, I totally forgot my username and password. Oh, no. Do you have to log in? Yep. Hold on, I'll, I'll go away from your computer in case you're about to do something embarrassing. Thank you. I've been live streaming long enough to know that little trick. Uh, yeah, Aaron, I, I was surprised that I was like as excited as I was as well. It like hit me, it hit all of us. There's, a, there's an energy, that's what we said in the news there. There's like an energy going on here. There's something really special happening. Yeah, it looks like once every two to three months probably, once every three or so. Uh, Skyter saying the main issue with the banning, you'd have to bring more than six heroes to have interesting choices. And that increases the deck building time and we didn't want to scare people away. Makes total sense. So Are like, you in? what do you say? Can I go to the deck builder? Yeah, you can go to the deck builder. All right. Now, I believe I have a deck that I built back in the day. Look at this, though. How do you... Look at this beautiful deck builder. These are all the expansions. And then now I go to my decks. Here's my test deck. I don't want you uh, to see my no, choices. I'm going to see all of your secret tech. But I have it built. I need Give to look me, at it just, again tonight. Uh, you want to do a new deck? New just make a Let's new just... one. I want to see what, the, what it's like to... Oh, see, now they get some they get some UI uh, feedback here. You guys get to watch as a user actually navigates your website. Let's go to Deck Builder. All right, here <laughs> we go. Create a new deck. Thing. Let's go Steven's deck. Is not. That's fine. Create it. All right, so how do they... Okay, so the first thing you do is you add a champion. Wow, this is good. Ah, at every turn. It's, it's done well. Oh, I have to edit it. I got it. All right, so I add a champion. Oh, you just pick it. Okay. So what's your... Uh, Go with Freyhel first. F-R-E-Y-H-E-L. So I'm going to filter by water here. Yeah, of course you are. And then Freyhel. So I'm going to click it. And see, now this is great. And it so loads it up here. I get to look at all of the... Oh, and, and she, then it opens she comes up with her, the... her auto. Yeah. And then, so she is what? Water and earth? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to turn off fire. No, I'm gonna, no, that's the opposite. So I'm going to click water and earth. So literally, it's showing all the water earth cards. Yeah, that's so good. And you can filter it by the stats here or the commit commit levels. That's so good. Um, I mean, yeah, come on. I got to spend 16 hours on this thing. Yeah, but what what happens, because like where I started is I added one, right? And then I was like, I'm going to put the eight best. It was literally a chemo. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to put the eight best. I want I, He can frenzy. I'm going to give him plus attacks. Hold on, I got to get him on Zach here. Zach getting excited. Because he has all the like plus attack. You have the red plus attack cards, you know? Are you min-maxing? So, well, it's a story. So I started, I was like, oh, let's do all the things. And then all of a sudden I realized it was like, wait a second. Like, you just run into problems because it's like yeah, you, need, you, you need to have your, your characters balanced. Again, that actually sounds like MOBA to me because so you run a five assassin list, you're going to get wrecked. I mean, or you're maybe just not. Get you just have time. a gambit, right? Most of the time, you are going to get wrecked. You need people who can take care of lanes. You need people who can attack other heroes. You need disablers. You need disablers all the time. You need disablers. So here's what I'm thinking: we do. Yeah. We end the stream. Okay. Then I we hate that. we deck build tonight. Okay. We On come the clock, back, right? Come, I'm getting paid for this. That's yes, right. Come back tomorrow, <laughs> and we open the other expansions oh, minus, no my, minus the outsiders okay but you you've already built the deck yeah i've already I've, from and then all the options available what, yeah, we have all the cards right yeah so what i want to do is then based on all the options that we chose literally just put our decks together yeah. but then explain why like i want to know why you built the deck the way you built it yeah i'm i'm going to hopefully have answers for that and what you're excited about and then we're going to try those decks and be wrong about everything we thought and then we're going to back off we're going to make adjustments we'll probably add the outsiders at that point 
and then we'll be off to the races. So it looks like uh, people doing the math here, this is good math. You buy everything, it looks like it's going to be about $140 a year, which is insanely good. You, ever, you guys ever played a trading card game? My gosh, $140 yeah, so won't even get you a card. If there were four expansions like this every year, it would be... It's like two board games these four, days. Eight, Maybe three board games. 16 heroes, 16 minions, mm -hmm. and four decks of cards. So like uh, the and decks see, of cards... Clever. Go ahead. They're clever because they have three colors in each of those boxes. Yeah. So no matter how your deck is constructed, you're going to want those additional cards. Well, and like, even if your primary is red, right? It's like, if there's you a blue hero that comes second. out, because like in my l l example list, uh, wherever it even was. Even if you play all red, you need at least a second color. So totally. it's going to be in those boxes. But like, so I have three fire, one earth, one wind, and one water mm -hmm. is what I did. And like, yeah. yeah, that that, makes that sense. would necessitate me getting the, all the experience. You gotta get them all. But I mean, I, I get it. It's like subscribe. Let's go. <laughs> let's do it. I, I feel like the thing about it let's is make like this a thing. <laughs> Sky Terror. Yeah. I, I feel like the recognition for me is like I don't think you have to have everything. No, you don't. But I think that there every purchase is valid no matter how you're deciding to play. And look at how beautifully small and compact and storable it is. These models are better looking than you expect them to be. This I will tell you. I haven't painted them. Obviously, I don't paint anything, so I have nothing to say about that. But Goody says that. By the way, that was three out of seventy <laughs> cards that we went through. Um, sorry, Jonathan H. But you, yeah, I know. I don't. But you know, you gotta you gotta do it. Uh, Volantru, explain the Outsiders expansion. So there's currently one Outsider. This is the base game Outsider, and he has a card. He or she, I guess, has a card, or it has a card uh, that that has certain abilities on it. And the Outsiders expansion brings in, I believe, four new Outsiders. Is that right? There's a giant, and they all yeah, it's literally, so they all correspond to the factions. There's, it's a, let me read this to you. Let yeah, me read please, this to yeah, you. Bring me. Outsiders, Sky Terror, the Elementals. Okay. Each Outsider in this expansion was a hero, now consumed by the power of Sky Terror. Gulb Yarn, Terror of the Endless Night, stalks the wilds, crippling his foes with fears. So it's just a giant polar bear. The giant bear. Yeah. Uh, Haberat, the Dark Vigilante, deals a deadly series of strikes, never ceasing his pursuit. Kotlik, who I was using, Lord of the Ancestors, will stop at nothing to conquer the lane for his glory. Akimo, infamous Scourge, that's the guy I'm, I'm super excited about, possesses a hero, d driving them to violence at the cost of their own life. And he's look at them, he's like the fully molten lava version. So here's the question, that looks so cool. So here's the question. Um, how... You might have to start putting it in my car. Just take the step. Just see what happens when you get there. Just take the step there. So how are the outsiders selected? That's the question. Do each of us bring no an idea. outsider and we randomly select it? Well, on the next, on the flip side map, you can have two outsiders. You can have two. Hold on. Let me see if there's I think when you, when you win a zone, you pick an outsider. Like from the, the world? From the depths. Whew. Can you pick one that's a hero that's currently in play? You probably can't. Not in my house. Not in yeah, my house. If the on the board, you can't get outside our chemo in there. There's no way. I refuse. Refuse to do that. Uh, mm. Sky Terror. Each player brings one. The first time a player wins the control of a dome, they pick one that will be used for the rest of the game. Cool. So the first win of control is a big deal if you get your outsider in. Yeah. So that means the middle gets fought over super hard first turn, which is exactly how it's supposed to be. Ah! All right. That's what we're going to do. Because there's, we didn't even look, look. This is the the stack of cards in the box that I didn't even read yet. I'm sorry. And this I'm is sorry one box. That this is so good. But I will say this this is worth saying because I know this to be true. Uh, the box itself, like if you look in this the red box, it comes with two clear mines. The core set only came with one. So what that means is that this expansion gives you the full play set. Yep, I got that too. Uh, in the same the way that like wall. I only had one Dragon Punch in the core set, and now I've got three. Yeah. Check out this. Ooh, the first I've seen of this. Biding Time is a neutral card, has no mana cost. Predict two. That's the kind of card that I love. And it's got plus two on the flip. So you can just look at the top two cards anytime you want, and then know how much damage you're about to do. Can I read this card? Yeah, now? please do. You it. know, you're gonna, it's gonna light. You'll know how much I like this. I bring it on. It's called Strength Over Pain. Is it it's an deal earth card? direct damage mm -hmm. with no mm -hmm. way to prevent it? Okay, that's how in you a certain way. Like. It's a minus one, but it says apply frenzy to the caster. Mm -hmm. They lose two HP. Mm -hmm. 
So good. Attack, yeah. so, so good. So good. Just... But that's what I'm saying is like, so this is a card, right? Look, it's Earth. Look. <laughs> it's like, you, you can't run this card if you're not running green. Yeah. That's and, too good. And do you want it in red? But if you run it in red, you got minus ones on your attacks. Uh, that's the balance. That's it's saying. so good. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll catch up with everybody here and then get out of here. Chris Ainsworth, thanks for the daily streams, guys. Make me smile each day. Lots of fun. Great. I'm glad we can uh, we can offer that to you. Uh, Parker Fredersen, this is too fun. Man. Yeah, sorry. I felt the same way. We, we, we played this two months ago, and after the stream, we were like, hold on to your pants. This is about to happen. Um, Skyter saying the Outsider box also has many new cards. Player cards? Yeah. Are sure we going to have to open that, too? The, I, I right, think we're gonna open everything. I think let's open everything. I think we save this for after we play tomorrow. Oh my gosh! I gotta have a little Where excitement. Is this, guy? this is a marshmallow test over here. Uh, Daniel says uh, Daniel Edelson on YouTube. For those who are like me, loving this game but don't want to get into another game, just quit one of your current games. <laughs> That's, <good laughs> That's advice. Funny. Goody says awesome stream. If you guys ever get the core boxes, I'll surely pick it up. So we are not going to be selling the core boxes online. The only way to get that online is going to be through the SkyTear website. We will have subscriptions, so you can sign up to automatically receive all new releases moving forward. Uh, we will also plan to have these in store whenever we, our store is able to be open again. Uh, but in terms of actually buying anything previously released online, that's going to be all through their website. Yeah. So just to simplify this. All new products, pre-orders, etc., they all flow through the subscription in the States. And then anything you want previously is going to flow through the PvP Geeks website, their own web store. And, and that'll keep happening. So like when, forever. when Outsiders comes out May 8th, it'll go from available through a subscription to available on their website. Yeah. We just got a nice little partnership going on. It's, it's working wonders for both of us. We can do so much more with that kind of arrangement than we can when we're also trying to deal with general online distribution and deep discount and all of that. Also, local stores don't have to worry about competing with like a 50% off product online. So everything is static across. It's great. It's great for everybody. Yeah, because that's not the intent, right? Even with the subscriptions, we're not trying to snipe local customers as much as, particularly for customers that don't have stores to get this at or stores that are supporting their game. Um, a really easy way just to get it and support the game and make sure Sky Terror gets to keep getting made and, and that PvP geeks can, geeks can survive um, and that we can keep creating content for the game. And then if you, you know, if you have an awesome story, that's great. But at the same time, a lot of people don't, especially, especially we talked about last like week on the podcast extensively, but for a game like this, a lot of retail stores aren't going to give it a second look. So uh, we're hoping we can get players interested in it enough that, that we can kind of create some momentum around it and help this game have some long legs. Retro Daniel still wish I had players locally, but Woo Tabletop, Tabletop Simulator, they, they put in a ton of good work on SkyTear. You can play, play the game. There's online tournaments going on for this on Tabletop Simulator. They're doing a great job with all of that. So even if you don't have people to play with often in person, uh, you can play on tabletop sim. You can also buy the products, enjoy that, paint them up, and then play once a month, once every couple of months, whatever it is. We might try to put something together. I don't know. It's the kind of game where it's like, I don't know, we'll have like a, uh, an event at the store or something like we did for Destiny. Oh, yeah, like. that'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Um, Volantri, thanks for showing this off, guys. I'll see if I can mess with it on tabletop sim later soon. Yeah, please do, Volantri. That's great. Benjamin Carter just joining in. Have to catch up, but glad to see this reappearing on the show. It absolutely is, and it has earned its spot. Uh, B2 the Willy on Twitch. You guys are the best. Hope you and your families are doing well. We are. Zach and I have been isolated together from the very beginning of this thing. Uh, we've been coming into the office since it all started and actually went to Gamma together, so we were exposed to everything that, that was to Together be and exposed. To. Uh, and then we've only seen we, our wives. So it's kind of a fun little mix. So we feel pretty safe uh, doing what we're doing. Uh, Sterling Allen Johnson, looking forward to much more content. Thanks, guys. Great, Sterling. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, for anyone who wants to try it out, there is a print and play version. Thank you, Ryan Rourke, on YouTube for saying that. That's awesome. There's also, again, that TTS mod is supposed to be great. Alessandro Brogi says, I can tell you your hype is well-deserved. The game is simply awesome. The more you play it, the more you want to play. I believe that with all of my heart. And then finally, Daniel Edvilson, thanks a ton for the stream. Can't wait for tomorrow. You guys rock. I love watching your stuff. Thank you, Daniel. It's great to see you. We're happy to be able to do this while the uh, COVID is raging around the world. Hiji Okomo says, also retailers can order from PhD, and that is true. If you're a local retailer or if you know a local retailer and you want them to get into this, you think it would go well for your local scene, then that is available at distribution. So please yeah. and obviously, make that happen. Now is a tough time. 
because a lot of retail stores are closed. Um, and that's part of why you know we're happy to be featuring this game now is that if you don't ha have a store or if you have a store that's just not available right now and you're still wanting to support SkyTear and get into this game, uh, check out the subscriptions and sign up for that. We'll get you the product in the meantime. Uh, but ultimately, this is going to be uh, a trying time, I think, for a lot of people in the industry. So uh, who you choose to uh, be around and support is actually really important. And we're excited to be working with PvP to help them make this game successful. All right. Zach, let's get out of here. Thank you, guys. Indeed. We'll be back tomorrow, 1 p.m. CST, Central Standard Time. Uh, that's tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be doing Sky Terror. We're going to come back tomorrow with fully constructed lists that we're excited to play. <laughs> And then after that, we're going to bust into the Outsiders expansion, a little early look before it comes out March 8th. Thank you all so much. Be safe, stay healthy, and we can't wait to see you guys tomorrow.